Yeah, welcome everybody. Pulp and Mech Show presented by Motorsport.com. Fly Racing and Decal Works coming at you. It's Monday, May 8th, 5 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for watching. Thank you for listening. We've got a great show lined up tonight. Some real star power. Lots to talk about too, man. Holy shit. Like just a, a massive blow to the industry with Tomac's injury. Some exciting news for Sexton and the Lawrence brothers. We had an LCQ race on Friday. Man, we got a lot to talk about live show on Friday night, too. If you were there, thank you. Thank you to Phil, Dino, Cartwright for coming up as live guests as well. 702-586-7857. If you want to talk Denver or some Supercross or whatever else, go ahead. Got a great show lined up for you. Ken Roxon will be calling in. King Kenny, three-year World Supercross deal announced this morning. And also, two four podiums in a row in uh, 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 Supercross. That's really great. He came from dead last to second this week. Yeah, I know. There's a few guys missing. I get it. But second, last to second is still last to second, man. So good job for uh, Kenny. He'll be calling in. Adam Seen Cirillo as well. His first podium since Houston 2021 in 450 Supercross. So AC will be calling in to talk about that and, uh, and his feelings and, and everything else. Pretty emotional after the race for good reasons. My co-host here knows the man well, so we'll probably talk get into that as well. Uh, Verb Moto's Wes Williams will call in. Our buddy Dub Dub, he, uh, he and his crew put on a great uh, LCQ live stream this weekend. I really want to thank him and everybody at Verb for doing that. And we'll have uh, Wes on the phone to talk about that and the challenges with that, how it went. Uh, we'll talk some Red Bull, uh, Supercross spy stuff and more. Uh, so looking forward to Wes Williams calling in. And we added in Joey Savacci as well. Joe, Joe Dog's on the couch in Florida getting ready for World Supercross, probably bored as shit. So we asked him to come in and uh, call in and talk about uh, whatever else has uh, been going on with him and maybe get some random thoughts uh, from him on Supercross, right? Because, uh, yeah, he's a good guy and he's, he's super smart. So we're going to do the Yamaha LCQ raffle tonight, 20 prizes tonight on the show live. Uh, my co-host will uh, determine when the randomizer stops working and when it comes up for the YZ450. And all the other prizes, we're going to give that away as well. Uh, heads up, it's 5.03 p.m. Pacific. We are cutting the raffle off, stopping the raffle at 6 p.m. Pacific. That's right, 6 p.m. Pacific. So that'll be it. And uh, thank you, everybody. It's over $100,000 and climbing. And uh, all that money goes to the 22 privateers. That re Actually, not all the money. I'll explain. Uh, later on the show, but a bunch of privateers are getting all the money, which is really, really cool. Thank you to Yamaha and all of that. Uh, really appreciate the help they do for that, for us and all the other companies that give away uh, the prizes. Uh, lots to get into tonight with the drawing and Tomac and Sexton and Lawrence Brothers and Denver. We're going to give some stuff away as well. We have some Renthal uh, hard anodized sprockets to give away from our buddy Paul P. We have some Acherby's plastic right off Enzo Lopes' uh, heat-winning race bike. A Cherubis is doing 50 years in the industry, and uh, they got some gold plastic to give away as well. So thanks to the Club of Mex guys and Lopes and Phil for that. We're going to uh, give that away. Hey, uh, motorsport.com, guys, they're fantastic. They, they do great work. they got big things coming. they got an announcement coming this week. I think that's pretty cool. And go through the banner on publicmex.com to help us out. It takes you to motorsport.com, and you'll see their prices. You'll see their customer service. You'll see everything they have for OEM and aftermarket parts, whether it's guts, whether it's FMF, whether it's Works Connection, W, whatever it is. They'll have it. They'll have great prices, and we get a small slice of that, and I can uh, afford to bring people like my co-host in studio. Uh, he is fresh off a second career top 10 450 super cost ride. He's a uh, top 20 in the points and gunning for it, and uh, he's been in a few times before, and we're always stoked. To welcome in Justin Starling. What's up, man? How are you? Ah, stoked to be here. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Thanks for coming the in. field was stacked this weekend. Tons of factory <laughs> guys. So uh, listen, man. <laughs> I, I think what well, I think the proper thing to do, as in the media or as a rider, is just you just do what AC did or me or whatever. You say, "Look, I know tons of guys are out," and then you right. just talk about your race. And, and yeah. I, you know, we have don't go around Starling saying like, "Oh, I'm a top 10. No, no, no. You know what I mean? No. I, but, but on the other hand. Embrace it and love it and good job. Right. I'm a realistic guy. Yeah, uh, you are. <laughs> I was a 12th place guy last night or Saturday night. Um, two people went out that were in front of me. So, yeah, yeah. that's just what it is. But 12th but is great. You still have to finish. Yeah. That's the way I look Absolutely. at it. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of riders out. But 
I'll take him when I can get him. The points are good for me right now. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it was, nice it was little, good. So, we'll talk about your season later on the show, but there was a point where your knee was jacked. You weren't yeah. really riding. Still not. Okay, still not. Yeah, no. <laughs> and, and, and so, like, yeah, you're getting better near here, near the end, but, again, injuries have stricken. Yeah. So, if Chase and Kenny finish Salt Lake, which I assume they will, but yeah. God knows at this point, but if they do, two out of the 15 factory riders that line up at Anaheim yep. 1 – uh, are going to make it through the whole season. Yeah, it's Isn't that nuts? It's pretty wild. Yeah. It's unexpected. I don't really know why it's like that this year. Pete Fox put out an Instagram about it. Yeah, today. I didn't I didn't read it. I did see that he said oh, okay. something, but and I haven't so, read it. Uh, I want to talk to you and JT about it. Yeah. 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 I'll look at it then. Yeah. Um, I, I, there's a few reasons, but yeah. we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, man, listen, you got to get – well, the getting's good, yep. and it is for you guys right now. Yep. And, you know, you beat a lot of other privateers to get that 10th. Yeah. The, um, I mean, the, the field's still – I wouldn't say it's stacked, but they're still really good riders, you know. Absolutely. like they're, It's still a full gate, and you still have to yeah. beat those guys. And, yeah, I came from Can, 16th to 10th, so I, and, I was happy and, with and it. And the so. guy that beat you with 9th, I mean, we're not sure, but we think he had <laughs> – Did you see my tweet after the race? Yeah. We, In quotations, hurt? <laughs> yeah, no, we, he's either faking it or he needs to be drug tested. <laughs> For HGH and yeah. for steroids and whatever else, because <laughs> somehow Grant Hall only got a knife. I'll, I'll be honest. Going into the day, I was like, okay, Grant's here, but like, yeah. he's not a threat he's not to me a because threat. he's hurt. No, and no. after the final practice, I looked at the times. I'm like, man, he's not far off. He's like right but there with me. But even when I me. saw that, I'm like, ah, he laid it down once. And but I will say, after the heat race, when he was right there with me yeah. the whole time, I was like, hey, I know he's not pushing it because yeah. I wasn't either. I'm like, let's just get to the final. Yeah. You know, like that's the important part. Right. But I was like. He's going to be good this entire race. And I remember walking up past him before the main event. I said, this is going to be a battle. And he just put his shoulders up like he was ready to go. So uh, I, I got full props to Hawaii's own Grant Harlan. Yeah. I uh, I didn't think his shoulder would last 20 minutes. I, and, yeah. I'll be honest. I said yeah. the same thing to uh, Justin Lamb over here. I said the same thing. I, I really didn't think his shoulder would last. I, I figured fitness-wise, he's going to be fine. Okay. He can do it. But I figured once it starts getting weak, that's yeah. when I'll be yeah. able to strike. Yeah. And it was like oh, five, man. six seconds the entire main. and. Yeah, I couldn't do anything with great, it. And great work to Harlan. Uh, great work to you to get 10th. Uh, yep. You're in the top 20 now. Yep. You have another good race this weekend at Salt Lake at the finale. Mm -hmm. You're going to move up on that. You're going to yep. collect some of that Feld money. Yeah, um, well, let's collect some money right now. Uh, Lawrence Torpedo in my wife's rusty box. Thank you guys for the 150 oh, oh uh, from Snowboard. Bullshit. So I'll take that now. Bullshit. Um, yeah, since I didn't get to race the pole race, I have to make my side bet oh, somewhere oh, okay. else because right, I've okay. already lost 50 in another bet today. Okay, all right. But, uh, yeah, okay. just there's that one. I don't really but, know about my wife's rusty box. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not married yet, so it's not mine. So, okay. 702-586-POLP um, uh, uh, if, uh, if you have a question about the Denver. Uh, working the cameras over there, holding things down, working on the Pulp Mix app, probably dropping anytime soon. The king of snowboard. Travis Marks, what's up, Marks? Well, now that uh, J Star completely blew what I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, hi, that's all I got. Hi, I was gonna say something about a rusty box and, okay. and, and right. Lawrence Torpedo, and I had to keep it up because I didn't remember what, what the whole thing was. Yeah, he blew it. Dude. <laughs> blew it. <laughs> Taking your phone calls over there, uh, holding things down. The Wolf, Talon Taylor, what's up, Talon? How are you, man? Oh, he's on the phone. Sorry, uh, Talon Taylor, what's up, buddy? What's up? Everything good? Yeah, just uh, in the middle of a phone call. Yeah, you seem rattled. I just wasn't expecting you right now, but we're good. Okay. I'm here. All right. Hi, Talon. See you. Uh, again, uh, the raffle, LCQ raffle. I hope to God that nobody buying in the last hour wins just because that's what's going to happen now. Everyone's going to wait. That's about an hour and 10 but, minutes. But, so. Marks, you have your randomizer ready machine. Your machine is already. Yep. Yeah, that one. And uh, so we're going to do that. And I'm going to give away a 2023 YZ450F and a bunch of other prizes. I want to talk to Starling about the LCQ race. He has some feelings on it, and we'll get into that. Um, he also did the uh, good job on the color commentary. Uh, this I almost weekend. didn't make it. I know, I know. It was. Uh -huh. You didn't tell me what room it was. You never texted it to me. Yes, Are I we did. Were, no, you yes, did not. Yes, I did. No, Absolutely, did not. I did. Not a number. Uh, uh, yes, nope. I did. I, I uh, check your. Our, me, you, and Cade's text. It's in there. I'll look right I'll now. Check I'm it right there. You, it was not. Uh, Rotosport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, X Brand Goggles, Race Tech Suspension and Engines. Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires, a Cherbies, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima USA Pro Filter, Renegade Racing Fuels, ORW, OGO Power Sports, Atlas Neck Brace, Guts Racing, FMF, Works Connection, Get Data, WUSA, Ride Engineering, Intense Cycles, Weissco's, Pistons, and EVS all on board with us uh, uh, for this show, and we appreciate that. Also, um, we launched it last week. We told you guys about it. The code PULPMX at motorsport.com. Saves you 15% on any Michelin motorcycle tire, whether it's the uh, Starcross 6, whether it's the Cruiser tire, whether it's a sport bike tire, whatever it is. When it comes to motorcycle, you know Michelin makes you a great tire. Yeah. 
You did. I'm sorry. Thank you. It was way up high. No, just say the other part again. You were right. No, and then the, the, the part louder. No. The I'm, I'm. No, it's fine. It's no, all good. No, Anyways, I'm, where are you going I'm, with I'm, this? I'm sorry. That you, you just mumbled that. You didn't really say it much. I'm not sure what you're talking okay. about. Right. No. So, Pulp and Mexico at motorsport.com saves you 15% on um, any tire at the at Michelin Makes. And it's um, for the month of May only. So, you only have, uh, I don't know if there's 30 or 31 days. I think you have 23 days left. Uh, so, yeah, put, check it out. Use the code Michelin. Uh, great guys and uh, great tires. And then they have the mountain bike tires as well. So, please th- use the code to save at motorsport.com on Michelin tires. Really thankful for that. And Justin Starley and I brought you by Decal Works. Uh, Pulp of Max 23 is the code to save with Decal Works. From the wild to the mild, uh, Decal Works will design your graphics for you. They'll make you custom number plates. They'll do all of that stuff, whatever logos you want, whatever sponsors you want. Heck, you can even put a snowboard carrot on there if you want. Uh, Decal we Works. We did at SKDA. We did that. Yeah, moving on. Uh, bringing you Justin Starling today uh, on uh, on the show. Thank you to the folks at Decal Works. Of course, Red Bull KTM, Husqvarna Off-Road, all using Decal Works. And they're bringing you Justin Starling today on the show. Um, you want to start with ET or you want to start with Sexton? Go ET first because I think so, that's the biggest one. Okay, Achilles tendon tear mm-hmm. while leading the heat. Main, main. Sorry, pulls it off, pulls off. Uh, you know, look, you don't need it as much in moto as you do in basketball and football and esports. Usually, we see athletes come back a year later. Mm-hmm. That's generally speaking. Moto and Eli maybe a little sooner, but to me, he was on the fence about coming back next year. Anyways, I think he was going to. I think he was. Too. I think he was, but it, yeah. you know, it wasn't a hundred percent either way. At the most, he was going to do one more year. Yep. Uh, let's say he can come back, you know, a year from now, or let's let's give him eight months, and he's trying to get ready for Supercross twenty twenty four. I don't I don't think we see him again, man. I, I mean, maybe I, I hope I'm wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. I hope I'm wrong, but I think that's the last time. If yeah. I had to bet money, that's the last time we see Eli Tomac on a motorcycle track. I mean, I'm interested to know how bad it was. Um, I, I don't know surgery. I yeah. don't know anything about yeah. that tendon. Um, I know where it is, and that's pretty much my knowledge with it and i know what it you need it for and all that but yeah um i i still think you'll see him back but i don't know in what way um you think racing yes i could see a a super cross world super cross thing maybe to go for full season in that or something like that okay. but i i personally do because i think he's gonna go at this as like a that's a sting that hurts. Yeah, and I'm, would, this is unfinished. I mean, business. you're a racer. It would be terrible to be, you know. To, I can only to imagine your last race. I like, can only yeah. imagine, like, not even just that, but even this the way that he just lost that championship. Why all he had to do was just basically finish these races, and he had it, and now he lost it, and especially in front of his hometown. And I don't think he wants to end that way. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. Um, well. I don't know. I don't. I don't think you're right in the fact that we'll see him race again. Uh, but I hope so. I, I, I do. Just, yeah. I really hope I right. see him back. I, yeah. I hope so too. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, like, with his legacy and his his um, his his wins and everything yeah. else. Um, but dude, just and I've been on race teams, and you're a racer. I was on KTM when Langston's wheel exploded in 01, mm-hmm. and I was on a championship Supercross winning team with Reed. And um, I, I, you know, I did it for a long time. I immediately when that happened, I thought it was a bike at first, and, it, and then right. I kind of thought it was his foot or ankle. You know, obviously, immediately when that happened, though, my thought just went to from from Coker to Lars to the to Jelly, the mechanic, to Zimmerman, Chase's mechanic, to the family. Yeah, the swing of emotions, John, right. Kathy, Tomac. It, it's 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 unbelievable. Yeah, you know, um, it's millions of dollars that swung oh, the other way. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was weird. Like when we came up by him, um, I saw him on the side of the track right there trying to cross before yep. that double. Yep. And I remember the first thing I thought of was, like, something must be wrong because he's not even trying to get out on the track. Like, yeah, he yeah. had plenty of room to just turn and go. Yep. I'm like, something, he, he something's just, going yeah. on. And I remember telling myself after I jumped the double, after I got around him, I was like, okay, that's not a, that's not a spot. We're not counting it because he's coming back. You yeah, know, yeah. like, he's going to come back and pass <laughs> me. Kind of like what, you know, when I saw Roxy yeah. on the first turn, I'm like, yeah, yeah it's not a right. spot. It's whatever. Right. Um, yeah. That was strange, and I didn't think anything of it, to be honest with you. After the after the race, I, I went back to the van, and oh, I you, went looked at points. And I kind of forget that he didn't pass me, <laughs> and I looked at points to see where I was at, and I looked, and I'm like, oh, my God, Chase is winning. Yeah. Oh, my God, Tomac never went back out. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I just started hearing this, this, and this. And right, right. It sucks. Dude, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you know, on Thursday's show, Moto 60 show, JT and I are like, ah, shit, like the podium's going to be Chase. Chase Tomac Roxon yeah. and, and this thing's boring and yep. 
Jets going to walk away with it. You know, all the things, yeah. right? And then it's just – a big you just swing. Never I'm a, know, man. I'm a sexting guy. I mean, I get to ride yeah. with them quite a bit, so I, I can't like say that I, I believed him to win it the whole time because yeah. it, it. No, I he wasn't. He wasn't. It, he wasn't going to gonna no. be able to get it done no. with how easy it was going to be for Tomac to just yep. get second place. Yep. yep. Um. So I'm I'm happy for Chase in that sense, but it's hard to be really excited for someone when it goes out like that. Yeah. I I said this on the review show. Look, there's a difference between the best racer and the fastest racer. Yeah. The best racer this year is Eli Tomac, yep. right? He 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 avoided the qu- he avoided the falls. He won the most races. Uh, he deserved to be in the points lead, and he was a, deserved to be the champion. Yep. But the fastest racer all year has been Chase Sexton, without a doubt. He's been able to reel Cooper and Eli in at times, yep. pass them and drop them, fall, get up, yard them again. Yep. Qualified fastest qualifier, first fourteen times yeah, so far. Right. Yeah, it's insane. It, he's been the fastest rider all year. Yep. That doesn't always get you a championship. But I don't think anyone can sit there and start being like, oh, Asterix and this and that. Look, he's going to win Salt Lake, and that'll yep. be six races yep. to Eli seven. And he's been the fastest guy, yep. and congratulations to him. It's unbelievable, the turn of events. Yep. Um, but, like, I don't think you can just be like, you know, ah, like, okay, like, Dungy's title in 17. Like, he won two races. Tomac won six. Right. Tomac had some weirdo. Ah, uh, uh, if you want to start saying that Dungy backed into that one, okay, right. I'll, I'll listen to that. I'll give you, an, I'll give you a, a table for that because that's a clear difference. Yep. But this one? For Sexton, it's well deserved, well earned, and all of that. In my opinion, it's, it's the same thing like we just talked about at the beginning. You have to line up at every race. Yeah, that's just that's why we race seventeen times. And you know, I, at one point I was like twenty six in the points. You know, yeah. like because I was just crashing and getting one point around, yeah. and now I'm in the twentieth. You know, yeah. and you got to show up. That's just yeah. the way no, it is. And for guys like you and Harlan and Cade and, and these other – I mean, you guys are crushing it. And yep. Lane, Lane Shaw making his first man. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, Carnell's been better. Yep. Carnell right? wearing his hoodie too. <laughs> these things are great, by the way. Wha- <laughs> Wear it all the time. Com- wearing big. your competitor's hoodie. I'm a big fan of Carnell. He's got great right. product. Wear it all the time. Yeah. It's good stuff. Oh, man. But, no, that. it's good for yeah. those guys. Like, it's good for all these guys. Like, Tristan's been getting good results. Tristan Lane. Simonton's been in the last, I think, three main events or something like yep. that. Like, yep. it's, it's good for us guys that – can get to each round and even if we're a little banged up like we need the money yep. we got to show up you yep. know and yep. we have heart that's just what it is uh before we get too far into this so we had we had my buddy uh charles castle in here a few weeks ago and we did a stay sick drive and then marks forgot to tell me about it last week so we forgot to uh do the draw mm-hmm. and uh and so we, we we're making up this week uh our buddy castle at stay sick the winner is hannah thompson from center point indiana she chose the 12 e drive which from my understanding, is the lowest end, mo- cheapest bike. So really good job for Stasic. But that's the bike she chose. And uh, they're, her and her husband are expecting their first child in September. So really super cool that Stasic and Chuck can do this. And congratulations to Hannah Thompson from Center Point, Indiana. She wins the 12 E-Drive Stasic. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get Chuck back in here because uh, the guys at Stasic were super stoked on the uh, return that they, uh, that they got from, from trying to win at Stasic. So, uh, all right. Justin Starling's in here, brought to you by Decal Works. Let's get to some uh, some phone calls because the lines are full. Uh, what's up, Mitch? You got a you got a question about Tomac? Yeah, how you doing, guys? Good. Hey, uh, I know uh, everybody's got their you know, opinions of you know what was going on, what happened with Eli. I was just wondering though. I saw a picture uh, of his a close up of his boot, and it looked to me like the bottom uh, the bottom strap wasn't really tight. It had a lot of, a lot of play in it. You think? That would have had anything to do with like giving him extra extra motion on the jump. I don't think so. Uh, I saw I got the same photo in a group text today about that. But Starling, you do have a thought about the boots. Yeah, I mean, I love Alpine Star boots. They're they're great yeah. boots. But they, I mean, all these guys, they all have custom boots. Even Garnet guys, they all they all have their own custom boot, and they want as much range of motion as possible. And it's possible that maybe there was just a little bit too much for him. Um, I mean, uh, granted, when He's not having a situation like that. It probably feels great to yeah. be able to move your foot yeah, like you want to. Yeah, there's a pro and, and con to both. To both. Right, yeah. right. Um, do I think that his boot was built wrong or something like that? No. I yeah. think it was built exactly how I wanted it. But stuff like that can happen, you know, like yeah. the G-Force. When you landed off that jump and landed long. It, it went was, a little long. It was tough. Yeah. Like it was. I mean, yeah. I wear Garnets. Those things are beyond stiff. Yeah. And it was tough on my ankles, well, you know. Like it's not easy. I wear the Tech 7s and the 10s, and I can tell you the 10s are so much stiffer. Yeah. So much more hold up with the 10s right. than a 7. 
but the sevens feel comfortable. Right. Right. And so, I, that's the, yeah. that's what they're going for, right? right? They're trying to get as much movement. They're trying so to they get a seven feet, and, a seven feel with the ten. Yeah. Look. And, of, yeah. of course. Yeah. I, so I understand it 100, percent you know. But you know, for me, I I like a stiffer boot just because I don't want my, I yeah. don't want that to happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I mean. Again, not saying the boot caused it, no, not no, saying not anything like any that, means. but the boots that these guys wear are more like tennis shoes than, yeah. than the, the boot they sell. Yeah. So, uh, Thanks, Mitch. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, Alex is on, too. What's up, Alex? You got a, you got a rant? Yeah, I just I thought it was kind of uncalled for that they were comparing Sexton's uh, 250, his first 250 championship, to this one because that year Austin Forkner was consistently faster than Chase. This year, yeah. Chase has been consistently faster than Tomac. Yeah, so I just it, didn't. It's, I, I, I don't I know. think that, that was cool. <laughs> I know, right? Like sometimes these the, the broadcast just tries anything they can to wedge in some sort of stat they get that they want, whether it's this one, which absolutely has nothing to do with each other. I'm with you, or whether it's comparing Jet and Hunter since 2022 or whatever. Like I, you look, there's stats all the time. I, I I follow mainstream sports. They'll say like, hey. um, I don't want to use a Leaf player right now because I'm really angry at them. But they'll say, hey, Connor McDavid has the most goals in the league over the last 42 games. And they'll just happen to pick 42 games because that's what suits the narrative they want to talk about. But, like, what is 42 games? What is one year? What, like, they try so hard to fit it in, right? I, I'm with you. It doesn't always make sense. So, um, yeah. I, you know, Alex, did you hear me talking about Sexton earlier? About being the fastest rider? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you agree, right? I, I mean, this yep. is – he's been the fastest rider in 2023 Supercross, and he's going to get himself a title out of it, and I got no problems with that. So, uh, yeah. thanks, man. Thanks he for made the call. some mistakes yeah. along the way, but he definitely deserved it. Yeah, oh, thanks wait, for taking wait, my call. Do you, uh, do you have a bike, Alex? Oh, yes, I do. Thinking about Sexton makes me think about Works Connection because they use this Pro Launch Start Device, and we're giving one of those away. Do you want a Works Connection Pro Launch Start Device? I'd love to. I already have one on my other bike. So all right, well then, you, then you get another one. All right, stay on hold. All right, okay. We'll uh, we'll get awesome. you. The, we'll get to the information. Uh, Works Connection starting device talent for uh, caller two, and uh, Pulpum X twenty is the code to save with WorksConnection dot um, Please check them out. Thank you to those guys. Uh, Michael's on three. What's up, Michael? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. Um, just a quick question on looking at the outdoor season. We got some of those factory guys that aren't going to be um, lining up. Do you think or know if any of the teams are going to be um, signing on some of the uh, more like privateer guys as filling riders, or what do we see there? Well, I heard that Benny was trying to get a Rockstar Husky outdoor, and they basically showed no interest. And then I heard of somebody that they did offer it to that isn't taking it. Um, really? And so I don't really know. Yeah, I, Starling, do you know anything that anybody that's filling in? Or? Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Right. I've kind of been told that it's not – really going to get filled yeah so so is, is ktm just going with ap then that's 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 the plan and husky's not going to go with anybody my or? my you would have to put someone on the bike it, you have to in my opinion um there's plenty of riders available to do it um but from what i've heard and seen yeah i don't think anyone's in the line to do it right uh thanks michael appreciate it man i'm with you yeah i wonder, thanks, wonder why too uh sam's on four what's up sam hey what's up thanks for taking my call yeah uh just a question about just to tell guy was saying on his, he's been saying consistently on his podcast that he feels like there's kind of a switch in the way racers are going to are built now, kind of saying Sexton, Lord, the Jet Lawrence. I kind of, I don't know if I agree with him, but it is a little bit true that, you know, Sexton is a bigger dude, uh, a little bit more, more muscular. If you look at Jet, I mean, his neck looks like, he looks like an F1 driver. It's pretty insane. Just wanted to, Get you guys' thoughts on that. Do you think like there's a switch and maybe how races are going to be built, or is it mainly just like genetics? I mean, mm. kind yeah, of I think I think what 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 they're talking about there in the uh, in the press conference was, generally speaking, Alden Baker's guys are pretty skinny. They're bicycling. They're not eating much, right? And then you look at Eli. You look at Sexton. They're bigger guys. Um, I'm with, I'm with you on Jet. He's filled out. Um, and Sexton's strong. Yeah, Sexton's he's really strong. strong. Uh, yeah. Her Herlings is built like Tomac. Mm -hmm. Also, I think he's a bigger guy. He gets it done. Um, you know, so I think that I don't know. I took that as a I took that as a little bit of a slam at Baker's guys. You know, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. but I think like, that, that's what I love about motocross. Like, you can be Ricky Carmichael, who before he met Alden was pretty chunky and about five foot nothing, and won tons of titles. 
And Damon Huffman was 140 pounds soaking wet and was a great rider and a two-time Supercross champion. And Mike Bell was 6'4". Like, I love our sport because any type of body can win. There's no, there's no body type in our sport that I believe, outside of being, like, just morbidly obese like myself, where you, can, you, where you can't win. On our, no, on, you I, know, agree, there's, I agree with that. There's 100 ways to skin a cat and be a great champion in our sport. So I like that. He'll definitely take the part in that. I'll also, I believe in yeah. talent. So. All right. Thanks, man. I had a quick oh. other question. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I've kind of been thinking, so Cooper Webb and Ken Roxton, they don't have similar careers, but they have the same amount of Supercross wins. Cooper Webb's obviously a two-time Supercross champion. Ken Roxton, two-time outdoor champion. Who do you think had a best, better career? I mean, outdoors is super gnarly, as yeah, you know. Yeah, Ken's and a world outdoors. champion, too. Kenny won a world title. Uh, and Cooper has one outdoor win, and Kenny's got a ton. Even Kenny didn't win 250 outdoors, but he won a bunch of races, right? Um, I don't know, man. I think I think I got to go Cooper Webb for the Supercross title. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's damn close. I, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, call it a tie. I, Starling, you ever thought on that? I mean, Supercross is more prestigious than motocross. Yeah, motocross is tougher. Yeah, I, Supercross is kind of our main thing now. So I think anything in Supercross is going to trump anything in outdoors at this point. Right. So Cooper, or Kenny's got two outdoor titles and a world title, three. Yeah. And then Coop's got well, Coop's got an outdoor title too. Two fifty. Uh, two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, good question, man. Maybe I'll maybe I'll write a column about that. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Ken Roxon coming up here on the uh, Pulp of Mech show as well. I want to thank the folks at Firepower, firepowerparts.com. You use any Firepower? Uh, battery right now. Battery, yep. yeah. Okay, firepowerparts.com, the official battery of Justin Starling, who is uh, uh, going to try to get another top 10 this weekend in Salt yep. Lake City on the JSR Motorsports, which is actually John Sebastian Wall is the main sponsor. That is where it started. Yes. That is exactly where it started. I know, right? Yep. Uh, uh, firepowerparts.com, go to your local dealer, go to motorsport.com, whether it's batteries, whether it's chains, uh, they've got it all there, at folks at uh, motorsport.com, or at Firepower Parts, I should say, at motorsport.com. Uh, love the Firepower guys. And, of course, Firepower Honda. Dino with a, with a sixth-place career yeah. be- or season-best finish for Dino this weekend, and Max Anstey also crushing it on the uh, firepowerparts.com. So thank you to Firepower guys. Check out their website, and uh, you will uh, definitely be able to see all the parts that they have. Let's go to Joey. What's up, Joey? Uh, yeah, just a, uh, a little comment on Eli to start. Kind of, uh, I don't know if you guys seen his Instagram post. But I did. Kind yep. of, uh, kind of sounded like a little memory lane action going on before he uh, it did. It ended did. that one, which yep. is kind of a bummer to hear. But um, no, my question is uh, a little bit about the SMX stuff. So you know, with like Starling just said, with you know SX becoming kind of the premier, you know, place to be at. Do you think guys like Cooper and Kenny? could possibly kind of put the pro motocross series in the future to the away side, you know, being said that some of them are getting paid like close to half of what, you know, they're making for outdoors from what I heard. Um, and, you know, yeah. you're paying, you're, I mean, you know, you're in a third of the round. So I don't know. Kind of seems like a little risk to reward for, you know, our sport is, you know, risk to reward and kind of seems like a uh, better reward to do the SMX stuff. What do you think? Charlie? Well, I don't know what the SMX payout is, so I'm not really sure how all that works. Um, I know the outdoor pay for me is not enough to go try to do it. Um, I don't know what it is for this year. I'm sure it's more, but I can't it imagine. More, yeah. Yeah. Can't imagine it's, well, it's see, a drastic why, that, change, though. That's why I look at. I think it could be even more than you know just talking the top guys because even these guys that are privateers that are getting offered, you know these rides are you know like starling just said it's way better to you know do this smx stuff than to go put yourself through 11 rounds of outdoors yep yep uh well, you, you have if, to do well, smx you, you have to do outdoors no you don't have to but you need if you get a win well, if you did good enough S- if SMX. you get a win in supercross you're in smx no matter right. what yep. okay so kenny is for example not doing motocross he's in for smx um but he's gonna have to skip an smx i don't think they line i, th- I think one they, world's are you sure? Lines, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I need to check that. Marks, can you check that? If the pro motocross schedule, I think one of or them. the SMX schedule lines up with the worlds, because I th- I was told I thought they did, and I was told today they don't, and so I'm yeah, I was confused I, too. I, I honestly don't right. look in the SMX because I know I'm not going to be in it, right, so I haven't right. looked much. Um, I just heard that. Yeah, uh, good question though, man. I think I think we will see guys uh, if they get the one win, it'll it'll determine what they do yep. for for that. And I then agree. just just a quick quick question on the way out. Any any uh, any news on Marv? 
Anything. No, I talked to him. I, t- I texted with him last week. He said he still hasn't figured out his his his, uh, his wrist. He doesn't know what he's going to do with his wrist. It didn't sound like it was anywhere didn't near. Didn't fixed any, properly? What, no, it didn't sound like it was getting. It, he had either gotten it fixed, or I don't think he knew what the problem was. So there was no fix oh, wow. on, on his surgery on his wrist. So or there was no surgery on his wrist. I think he was either trying to oh. let it let it heal naturally or what. I don't know. Wow, that seems kind of crazy. I would, ha- I would hope on that caliber uh, in our sport. Well, hasn't. yeah, I would just hope Marv knows what he's doing, and, and at some point he can race again. I would hate to see him go out like that. You know, uh, Marv's been yeah. had a great career, so I hope we see him back. Uh, yeah, very shitty. Thanks, man. Well, you guys have a rest of the good rest of the show. Thank you. Uh, Travis said no overlap between World and SMX, okay. so Kenny yep. can do the three SMX Got races. Okay. And, and the good the the, the uh, good thing is is we can ask him ourselves because he is on line four. Uh, Ken Roxon brought to you by the folks at Renthal, Renthal.com. What's up, Kenny? How are you, man? What's happening, guys? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Hey, congrats on the announcement today. Uh, a three-year commitment to World Supercross. That's awesome. That's, I didn't really see that coming because you had told us you were doing motocross. But um, mm-hmm. that's awesome for you. What what made you uh, decide to go this route and and focus on Supi? Well, I had I had to have a rough outline of what I wanted to do right early in the season. So at my and at that point, my plan was really to ride Supercross and Motocross. Um, but as I got a little bit further into the Supercross season, and um, you know, I had a lot to figure out, and, mm-hmm. and it, it kind of got forgotten about in a way. And then um, just had a lot of work and started doing better and better and better. And I really, um, you know, I, I started just questioning the whole outdoor thing because I had something good going. And uh, I just feel like in the last couple of years, that's really what's brought me down. And it was just tough, right? And and I felt like, man, if I would have had the opportunity to do the WSX thing again, like I would be really into that. Do Supercross, WSX, do the SMX rounds, and, uh, you know, see if there's some other even overseas races mm-hmm. going on. And with that, it's still quite a bit. I think it's like 26 races, plus, like, if you if you pick a couple of other races that you want to do, like Paris or whatever, then yep. I can do that, you know? And I don't know. It just started looking more and more appealing. But, of course, just because I think about it, I don't act on everything right away, and I let it marinate a little bit. And But when the media asked me, of course, like, what am I going to tell them, you know? Like, yeah. at that point, I was kind of, like, still like, yeah, I kind of, like, still think I'm going to race outdoors, <laughs> but I'm not sure, you know? I don't know. Yeah. No, listen, so. I, I – uh, you know, my and things, people change their minds, very, you know, very recently, all this stuff came about very recently, like the final, like, let's commit to this because mm-hmm. it makes sense. And it's what my heart wants to like, I I really just want to be happy because that's what I am right now. And that's when I, when I do my best, and I feel like I just have a good thing going and why not do that all year? I'm still going to ride plenty of motocross. I feel like that helps me and out uh, in supercross anyways, mm-hmm. but just like, I don't know. I just feel like pounding myself into the ground again over the supercross, uh, over the motocross season. It's just not really ideal no I also listen, want to at some point it. reach another level yeah, I, I told you this on a text you got two 450 outdoor titles you are a bad dude outdoors you always said it comes easier to you than supercross um go enjoy it go enjoy indoors go go travel the world fans will be so stoked to see you uh you make a bunch of money um uh, yeah i don't blame and, you man and my situation is also a little bit unique right because i do have that background of coming from europe i mean it's been mm-hmm. a long time and people probably forget and to be quite honest i feel more american than i do anything because <laughs> i had my entire adult life here yeah but there was still something to that this entire last off season like that kind of like sh- shed some light on my career and i don't know there was something so rad about it and then um you know it kind of went the other way at first it, potentially riding outdoors, but now this came back around, and, and I don't know, I felt super comfortable about it. I really want to race in Germany again and mm-hmm. go to some of these other countries and kind of, yeah, and also I really needed to uh, preserve myself a little bit because I wouldn't be around much longer if I had to do moto again, to be honest. <laughs> I just did not enjoy myself the last couple of years. I have too many health issues. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. but now I'm going to be around longer, but I'm going to be splitting my time between that, you know, so I thought that was the better uh the better option. And yeah, choice. yeah, I get it. It makes sense. It seems like those guys are stoked to have you and, and all of that. And and your team right now does World Supercross, so that's super easy. Uh, it's it's natural. But I'm curious, you're just doing the, the deal with the HEP guys this year, but does this mean that you may re-sign with them? Or uh, do we have any kind of update on that? Like, I know it's been going pretty well. you got four straight podiums, third in the points, got a win. Um, do, are you open to going back with those guys for the next couple of years? Yeah, I mean, obviously, as of right now, I have been nothing but stoked with the team, mm-hmm. you know. That's, uh, 
that's the bottom line. I, I have enjoyed and I've grown over this entire season so much more than I feel like I'm such a better racer than what I used to be in a way, you know, like even when I don't have it certain weekends, I've kind of learned to just like take it for what it is and, and weasel my way through and just kind of like don't just completely, you know, annihilate yourself mentally <laughs> or like try and, yeah. you know, what the hell and, and, and just pound your head into the sand so i've kind of learned to deal with with certain situations just better and um and uh, i let it come to me the race sometimes and that's when i have my best races and uh yeah i don't know i just learned a lot this year from testing with yeah. the bike and new people and like because i haven't changed teams that often you know what i mean so yeah. it's always something new and it's exciting and it really i don't know yeah it changed something i was going to ask you about your health a little bit uh did you figure anything out because you know you you are going to be one of only two factory riders that get to do all 17 rounds, knock on wood, if you make it mm -hmm. to Salt Lake. Um, mm -hmm. did, you, did you figure anything out differently? Did you change things? Do you feel healthier and stronger? Because we were making the ironic uh, joke on our podcast earlier that, you know, hey, look at Kenny. Like, the guy that has, has been beaten down by viruses and things going on in his body is going to make it to the end when no one else other than, say, Sexton can. So did you change anything? Uh, yeah, I actually, I started eating, um, I mean, it's a lot of little things, you know, um, I started eating a little bit more carnivore style, so I was actually consuming organs a lot and liver and stuff like that, and if I don't have the real deal, then I, I take uh, that as a supplement, just like a liver supplement or beef heart and stuff like that. Um, and then in the end, with a bunch of little things, it was more like a snowball, I think, kind of like traveling the world, right? And then even the thing with Yareev and going to these Essex rounds, it made me uh, it made me look at life a little bit a different way as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just, one thing led to another. Before you know it, I had fun. I was around new people. I was actually, I could ride my bike a lot better and go and race. And I just felt a little bit like a fish out of water just sure. because I haven't traveled the world or done any overseas Supercross races at all. So it was new, you know, like Australia, for example. I went there completely by myself. I mean, Asifin was there. But, like, I had my own gear. I had to prep my own goggles. I normally don't do that shit, <laughs> yeah. you know. Everybody yeah. does that stuff for me. So when you go, and I normally always have my wife around or just to help with stuff. But when you're completely on your on your own, it was really cool because it, it makes you grow, really, as a person. And uh, so I just think I got happier. And, like I said, one thing led to another. And, uh, yeah, I just started getting better. And I feel like you're, you're mentally at everything – affects your immune system and i think just a combination of a bunch of stuff so i have been feeling pretty good and nothing's ever perfect right, right? but I, I mean i felt really strong this weekend too and um i yeah like i said i just kind of pick my battles from weekend to weekend whether i have it in me or yeah. not uh starling can you imagine the world supercross round in germany that's what i was just about to oh, ask okay. it's like have you ever done the the adac series i don't remember if you've um, ever done it no i i mean yes yes so not the whole series but i did Either once or twice, I think I raced Dortmund. Okay. It was the year right before I turned pro when I was super little. Yeah. And I think the following year possibly, but I didn't really have, before I came over here, I didn't really have Supercross experience at all. Right. Besides having my own little practice track. Yeah, and I've, I've actually been able to ride your, your track there, which was, which was pretty cool back in the day, but... Uh... No, that's going to be pretty cool, exciting. It's cool, right, because it's, so, it's self-built, right? <laughs> yeah. It's nobody, you know, it's, it's just, and I think it's a lot different now. It goes the other way, because actually Dominic Theory, he was the yep. one taking care when he was racing all that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I, I always liked it. it. It was cool because you just pull around um, water, uh, fire hoses, and yep. you do the stuff yourself. It's fun. It's just different. It was fun. It, it really was good for the ADAC series. Like, it was kind of, like, almost identical yeah, to that. Yep. It's kind of tight, but it had the, the yes. same types of jumps and everything. But, no, I got to imagine track, you're... Yeah. You're pretty excited yeah, sure. to uh, to race in Germany this year. I mean, that's something that, you know, I always wonder, like, you, you've been over here for a long time. You've gone to Paris and all that, but racing in front of your home country is a big deal. Like, racing Tunchental for you has got to be huge, you know, and then now being able to race a Supercross there has, you know, had to be a big part of uh, wanting to do Worlds as well. Yeah, absolutely, and it's been so long since I've been there, and um I don't know if how the Germans, how much attention they still pay, you know, if it's only the diehards or if it's a bunch of them, but I would imagine that in general that my fan base would have hopefully grown and then 
of course, having a Supercross race too, then in a big soccer stadium, that never happens over there. Oh, no. Honestly, yeah. you know, besides, like, a long, long time ago. But this is going to be new, and it'll be cool for us to see as well. I, I Actually, I've never even been in a soccer stadium. It's pathetic. <laughs> I've been in football and baseball and everything, but not a soccer stadium. So yeah. um, I think there's some really cool stadiums around. And just I think a lot of people, it'll attract a lot of people, hopefully, uh, probably also from closer countries, right? But yep. Yep. it'll be interesting. I, I'm curious to see how all that goes. And I'm sure – we're going to plan something ahead of time just to kind of spend some, you know, if, I would love to come in a couple of days early and yeah. do some kind of activation, but I think I'm pretty sure we have something up our sleeve. 702-586-PULP. you got a question for uh, Kenny Roxon from HEP Suzuki, uh, brought to you by the folks at Renthal, renthal.com. Uh, please check them out. Great great website as well. Uh, really informative. All right, so I had a, a one more question. So this weekend, obviously, we, we saw you go down in the first turn. And, you know, in my mind, I'm not thinking that's a position because I'm like, well, I'm going to see you in about a lap. Um, <laughs> when when you're coming up through us, you know, and, and I don't I didn't try to race you too hard because I, I un- obviously understand that that's not real. Um, There's only one guy that I understand. Most most of these guys like Kenny <laughs> get a little upset at You're You sometimes make the list, darling. But everyone says Morantz. Okay, well that's <laughs> that deal. But okay. my, my question is, is like when you're coming up through the pack, because obviously you went all the way to second. Is it was it as hard to go through the pack as it is when you're coming around to lap us, or was it about the same? <laughs> that's a good um, question. Sure. Yeah, it's a really good question. Honestly, um, I, I think it really depends from track to track, and for right. whatever reason, like last weekend, I I, um, I felt pretty decent on the track, and. Um, Right as I took off after I crashed, I've noticed I'm like, okay, I actually feel really calm with the situation. I let everything come to me. And once I did about a lap, I was smashing the whoops and everything. And then, oh, yeah. uh, so it, I guess this time it felt easier for me than, than other rounds when I struggle more or the track gets gnarly because then I'm all over the place too, you know? Right. And I was just really <laughs> precise. So um, I think the most important is just, you know how it is when, you, when you're in the pack right there, it, it you know, every once in a while, even myself, you make a little mistake, you ping from left to right, but there is somebody, the whoops are sketchy. Like, it's really just picking your battles in certain areas. But this weekend, I um, I was lucky enough to have a big advantage somehow in the whoops. I don't know. I felt really comfortable in them, and I think that's where I made up most of my time. That's where you passed um, me, and you were going very fast. I jumped the double. I looked back. I saw it was you, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to go left because I know he's going to kill these things. And it was like you went by me like I was sitting <laughs> still. And I was like, well, I got some work to do. And, and I, can, I don't even have an explanation for it why. I just, for whatever reason, I've been starting to come around. And actually, I haven't really messed around with my bike too much uh, when it comes to clickers. So I just think I know it at the moment very well. And I'm not saying it's perfect, but I, I just I think I just know the bike at the moment well and I'm um, starting to get comfortable. And, and I think that just in the end shows. Yep. Uh, yeah, Chiz Fork settings, dude. Chiz Fork settings. He's trying, to, he's trying to take all the credit here. So. Yeah, we've been tinkering. I guess that's yeah. been the fun part this week, uh, this year actually. Chiz is really good at testing and, and can feel stuff really well. So we've always like he'll come up with something, and then I'll I'll write it and be like, oh yeah, that's better. I'll click around until yeah. I like it, and then down the road we'll just try a little change to fix something, and then I find something better, and then he tries it, and he's like, oh yeah, that's better. And then so we kind of always go back and forth, and yeah. that's been really fun teammate wise this year. We've had so much fun all riding together, and. Chiz and I are pretty much together almost every day, and we, we mess with the bike and our suspension guys at the track every day. And I don't know, we just had something supernatural going in a way, you know. Um, it wasn't forced, and we could kind of just try whenever we want to try stuff. And if not, we would just ride. So I just think we, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun this year, and that's why we got the bike where it's at right now. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty good. And also, too, like you and Chiz in the heat and Chain in the main, it was arm army everywhere up in De- up in Denver. So. Uh, and, and actually, I give a lot of stuff a chance to this year um, rather than the last year. In last year, I was a little bit not uncomfortable, but I just I always struggled no matter what I did to the bike. So I've learned this year to be more open to it because I feel like Suzuki has maybe a little bit of a bigger window. Mm-hmm. So even this weekend, we did a bunch of messing around with the with the motor stuff um, and some settings in the motor because in the first qualifying session, I was actually hitting everything, but I kind of had a hard time out there. I was just notchy and. Um, I was a second off the front guys. And before that, I felt pretty solid. I just felt like my overall speed was lower. So every time we went out for practice, we, we changed something. But it was good because it gave me a lot uh, more and more knowledge. So I picked what was the best out of the three. Mm-hmm. And then by the time the night show came around, we had made a little tweak to the mapping going into the heat race. And then that was the best my bike's been all day. So we just kind of give things a shot. And I'm really open to try things. And that's most of the time when I find something that I, uh, uh, that I like better. 
you uh, you've won a lot of races, so you know you've had some epic rides. I get it, and we have a very uh, depleted field, but still, twenty second to second. I mean, you had to feel pretty good after that. Like no matter who's racing, I mean that's impressive. Yeah, a lot of of course a lot of guys are out. I totally understand that, but nonetheless, uh, because I'm the one under the helmet, I still felt like I rode really well, mm -hmm. and those guys are not gonna let get past itself you know what i mean yeah. like i still have to pass them and there's everybody is still going fast enough you know what i mean it's not like it's not as easy as it looks sometimes so then of course of course a combination of me going well and with a little bit of a depleted field i was able to work my way up there but they were still quite a quite a ways away and i could pick my way through because when you're in traffic as well like i can't always pick and choose the lines that i want to you know um so it was very just a refreshing uh, feeling. I, I really enjoyed it, like internally for myself, and was pleased with the ride. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty pretty happy right now. Yeah, it, um, it it was it was great. It was nice to see um, and, and all of that. I think everyone was pretty pretty excited for you to get on the box and watching you uh, was pretty exciting. Oh, and I used to suck at altitude too. Like you yeah. know, of course, with my health issues, the altitude would always just make it worse. And I think altitude is tough for anybody, but. And the main is the best I felt all day, and I felt pretty strong. So I was also happy on top of that. Um, um, yeah. What Eli Tomac? Uh, you and him have battled approximately, you know, nine thousand times uh, throughout the, your careers. You guys have absolutely had some amazing battles. I mean, but for you as a competitor, yeah, it's got to bum you out a little bit to see what happened to him. And, and you know, and Chase is going to win this title. He's a friend of yours too, so I get it. But holy shit, Kenny, uh, a guy that you know, uh, you, he may never race again. We don't know. But wow. Oh, man, I, I couldn't believe it. I texted him. Yeah, I texted him yesterday. I said, dude, um, I don't even know what to say, but yeah. I feel super bad for you. Um, I hope you heal up quick and keep your head up. I said, man, I mean, he just, you know, he deserved, he's just been an absolute animal over these last few years. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, I'm super bummed for him. Of course, Chase is my, uh, one of my best friends. And um, I mean, that, that's all rad, but he just, yeah, he's just been insanely good. And then to see that happen, and you know what, that's not just a, I don't know, like a broken wrist or, or what, or broken finger yeah, or whatever, like yeah. Achilles. I, I don't really know what the recovery thing is, and I feel like sometimes it doesn't even recover to 100%, so I can just hope that yeah. um, he'll get that figured out, hopefully, and has a good recovery and hopefully come back, you know? Yeah, like Justin said, nobody nobody wants that to be your last race, no. being, being injured. You don't you know want to end like that. Yeah, no. And I think it can go either way. Like, I really think he can come back and, and be right back where uh, he's been – winning for so long so consistently and this is the first time he'll have a long break like that in a long time so it can work against him but it can also work to him you know because he's always just had the last couple of years it was like super close only super close only and then he extended but um so i feel like he's been tinkering with retirement in the last couple of years just to feel it out but obviously always committed for another year so maybe even these nine months who knows man the guy might come back for another two three years and do a super girls only deal who knows yeah. i wouldn't doubt it yeah maybe maybe I, I mean yeah I, I don't think that was the last we'll see of him yeah yeah i, I yeah. don't know i i kind of think and so if, but yeah who knows and i also totally understand the hey if this achilles becomes a bitch and it doesn't heal properly and all that i mean He's like one of the greatest, you know. Look at the titles, all the wins, and all of that stuff. So if if it ends up being that way, I think you shouldn't get hung up on the negative, but more so be like, hey, holy shit, you know what I mean? He he, he had the unfortunate leap, but he was on the top of his game, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Of course, that's not what I want for him, but um, he's done some amazing things. Yeah, uh, absolutely, I agree. Uh, Adam Cincerillo is coming up next after you here on the show. Um, you passed him, obviously. You knew where you were. Uh, he ended up on his first podium since 2021. Was a little bit of you like, oh, this is cool. Adam's up there. Oh, 100%. And we were talking about when the last time was that we were on the podium, never mind together, you know. Uh, and that was actually Colorado in 2021. Oh, yeah, yeah. In Lakewood. Yeah. So, and then on top with Chase, too, like, those are probably two of my closest friends in the class, you know, right now. And, and, and to share a podium with all of them is, uh, never mind, it doesn't matter the circumstances, you know. It's still yeah. podium's podium, no matter how many guys are there. So, what? A, and I also know how, how tough of a time Adam's been having. Mm -hmm. And just to come back and, and continuously put in the work and, and good things happen, you see that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I was thinking that, too, when I saw the podium. I was like, you guys are, when you're standing and staging and stuff, it's always them together. Like, you always right. see Sexton one <laughs> talking to the other. They're, it's not like they're ever split up. It's kind of those three, and I think they use the same, like, agency as well. So it's, like, all like a big, I mean, honestly, I think it's called the family. Yeah. It's like a family yeah. there. Yeah. So to see you yeah. guys on the and podium was cool. 
Well, and Chase and I, especially lately, like he's almost all we train together, do gym yep. together. We use my gym and all that stuff. And we don't talk about dirt bikes most of the time. Like I've really, I enjoy our friendship more. And then on top of that, we can actually have fun with each other because I have accepted that. Look, Chase is, he's better than me. Like his, have you seen the guy ride? It's, I mean, it makes you feel so even, bad. <laughs> it's, it's not even like I, I watch him and I'm like, holy shit. Like it's just so smooth and perfect and there's no nothing, you know, standing up everywhere. And I've accepted that and, and um, we joke about it now because during the week and stuff, he's just, he's fast at all freaking times. And sometimes during the week, I just kind of want to ride and do my thing. But then, you know, you're, you're, he goes quite a bit faster. But overall, we laugh about it. And then at the race, too, this weekend, he said, dude, you were hauling ass. You were coming. I'm like, oh, dude, I was licking my chops. What he was saying. And I'm like, yeah, I was freaking coming. I was feeling it, I said. Yeah, it, uh, so, yeah, it's something else. I was talking to Chiz about practicing with you guys. And he goes, he goes, oh, dude, Sexton during the week. He goes, Kenny brings it on the weekends because he's older and he knows, you know, that to step his game up. And on a Wednesday afternoon, Kenny's not trying to prove anything anymore to anybody. So Chiz is like, dude, on a Wednesday, Chase is just gone. Just gone. <laughs> you know, so. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I don't, I really right. don't understand. I mean, I think I used to be that guy at yes. that age. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it's just funny how roles reverse. Now, I think about that stuff all the time because I don't know how it all happened, but I feel like I've. I've almost entered a different chapter in my life a little bit just over these last few months. Like everything has changed in a way. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I appreciate that because I feel like that's what I needed in a way. But even the way I think of the sport is completely different. And I've actually felt so much more engaged because like I said, I put ego down, everything down. And I, 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 I just, I don't know. I focused on, on everything, every single training session and actually was pushing myself. And I think I was just overall happier and felt like I was absorbing everything and, one thing led to another. I made I made all this my hobby again, and when it's your hobby, you you're with it uh, better every single day. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're just more relaxed. You know, I think Eli made that turn too. Uh, yeah. I think Eli got mm-hmm. a little more relaxed, a little more comfortable in his own skin uh, the last couple of years, and was you know still grinding and still working and trying his hardest, but not so. Not so hung up on the results every single weekend of of your self worth. Yeah, it's a you job, know? but yeah. you also have to have fun with it too. You know, because it yeah. isn't forever. Right. You don't. You're not going to do this until exactly. you're super old. So you got to enjoy the times that you have now because any time, like look yep. at Tomac right now, we don't know if he's going to come back. Yep. It can be taken from you any time. So enjoy it while you have it. Uh, well, yeah. so, something we're going to talk about. Last thing for you, Kenny, here on the show, brought to you by Renthal. Uh, Pete Fox posted something today on Instagram about the safety of the sport, and like I said off the top. You are one of only two factory riders if you finish Salt Lake, which I think you will. Two out of 15 factory riders to start. Uh, I'm of the belief that injuries sort of happen year to year. I remember in the two-stroke days when I was a mechanic, there was only – I remember some factory teams weren't even coming to the races. There were so many injuries. But I do think there are some things we could do uh, to to kind of help the injury thing. But where are you at? Is it just a dangerous sport and that's what it is? Man, the sport is a bitch sometimes, not going to lie. Um, yeah, totally. Having said that, the tracks are just absolutely insanely gnarly sometimes. Like, I'm always wondering if it's just me, but this I feel like first of the shit used to be a lot easier than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just get so chewed up. Like, I just ha- I found certain weekends and circumstances and tracks where I'm just so sketchy, where I'm a little bit scared out there, and that's when I – and it could be some flashbacks of 2017, I think, mm-hmm. like when it gets really, you know, when it rains and the bottoms get super notchy, ruddy, and like just sketchy as hell, I kind of freeze up a little bit. There's just something that's embedded in my brain where it won't, I just won't risk it anymore to just go for a fast lap, you know, and, and send it without thinking twice about it. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's a tough sport, and um, the whoops are absolutely insane sometimes. Like when I think back, for example, Oakland track or even Anaheim 1 and – um, so crazy, and then lately the tracks have actually been more mellow. I feel like yep, in certain. I agree areas. with that. Right? Yeah. Like the whoops, and I actually enjoy it when the whoops are a little bit more manageable because then it actually allows us to race instead of having to pray to go through the whoops every single. Like they actually have a little bit of room for air. <laughs> yeah, I I enjoyed the whoops this week, and they weren't big. But the thing that was cool about it is I'm usually a guy that starts jumping because when they get chewed up and squirrely, I'm like, yeah, I'm good, you know. Yeah, and this I weekend, with that too. this weekend it was like. Man, everyone skimmed every lap, and no one had any bad moments. Like, if you could just build them like that yeah. every weekend, it'd be awesome because it made hey, for a whoop section. And you could still make up time. I mean, you Absolutely. can see if you were really comfortable, you can send it in there. And if not, so in the end, it's a win-win almost. Yeah, that I was like. that was a great riders. set, in my opinion, this weekend. Yeah. 
But it was the dirt that made them good because you're not going to get that dirt everywhere. It was the concrete. Should have it this weekend. Hard pack. Yeah, this weekend. This weekend should have too. it. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's just a brutal sport sometimes, and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I do think front and back chest protection should be mandatory. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of guys are wearing. One I now. ride with it anyway. Yeah, you yeah. do anyways, and I think a lot of guys are now. You know those those A star A one stuff and that Fox. Stuff, they're, they're, That's what they're, I wear. The A star. They don't. One. They so don't good. interfere with. You know they're a little hot, sure, but they don't really interfere with what you want to do on a bike. You know, so. No, I agree. I've never felt comfortable. I have never ridden without a chest protector. I just I don't. If I feel naked and and vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I think they should do that. But other than that, I think, yeah, you know, I was one of the guys screaming for longer mains than twenty laps mm-hmm. because there were races mm-hmm. where we were seeing Villo and Dunge for fourteen minutes, and I was like, that's not enough. I remember that. I just talked about that the other day. Yeah, so I was one of the ones saying, man, we got to make these things longer because if I pay to see Ken Roxon and I see him fourteen minutes out of three hours, mm-hmm. I'm going to be WTF. But I think yeah. I'm coming around now. We did twenty. I did twenty-seven. They did twenty-eight. Yeah, I'm coming back around now to. Hey, let's make these things, you oh, know, uh, a t- 18 plus one. Sure, sure, something. Because now they're throwing futures out there for a lot of these things. We have them this weekend. Yeah. The, the crew can't handle it. They don't have enough time. The, yeah. There's not enough dirt. And, it, and it's, yeah. a, it's a treacherous track. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm starting to think that we need to go back. Hey, so. seriously, think about it. On a triple crown night, we do almost three full main events. Mm-hmm. I think, we're, what are we on short track? 17 laps? Or- yeah, yep. Something like that. That yep. is almost in a three main events. And yep. we used to bitch about 20 laps back in the day, how gnarly it was, and oh, my God. Yeah. And, and now we, we ride way more yep. throughout the day than that. No, no, I think we need to look at that. I think the guys at Feld need to think about that a yep. little bit because that's that's going to cut back on some injuries, too. Because if- Even, like, I think there's a lot of riders on board with that, too, because Chase and I, I mean, we talk about all kinds of stuff, but 20 minutes, is, is, Dude, that's, a, that's a long time. Yeah. Go, <laughs> go walk a track at the end of the main event, which I have and all you have. It's it's fucking insane. It's chewed up. It's nuts. <laughs> just yeah. nuts what you guys have to do. The amount of plywood hit. that you're down to by and just, and just think about 25. A face of a quad in a rhythm. You're like, oh, well, I guess I'll go this rut. Yep. Oh, God. You know, it's just insane. So, uh, yeah. All right, Kenny. Well, hey, thanks for the uh, time tonight. Good job this weekend. Congrats on the three-year deal with World Supercross. That's going to be exciting. I'm going to try to make some of those if I can. Uh, yeah, c- thanks for calling in, buddy. Thank you. No, no worries. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. All right, see you. That's, uh, that's Ken Rocks, everybody. Brought to you by folks at Renthal, Renthal.com. Always a good interview. Uh, three minutes until the raffle is closed, everybody. Three minutes until your chance to win a 2023 YZ450 or one of uh, 19 other prizes uh, is over. So thank you to the folks at Yamaha and everybody else for doing that. We got 1999 from Feedub on YouTube. Hashtag Feed Marks. So, okay. Uh, we are starving, gonna, Steve. We are going to feed Marks here shortly. So yeah, We'll see. We'll um, report back. Let's do... Uh, Thanks, B-Dub. My okay. food hasn't been picked up yet. Let's Thanks. do the Acherbys giveaway. Uh, I'm going to do... The easiest way to do that is an email. Um, uh, we got the signed by Enzo and Phil, Club MX, gold, Acherbys plastic. The bikes look really cool. We're going to give that away. Uh, contest at pulpamexshow.com. Contest at pulpamexshow.com. Um... You want to do the 56th email in honor of Enzo, or do you, should we do the 69th email in honor of Phil? 69th. 69th? Yeah. Okay. 69th email in honor of Phil Nicoletti. Gets the plastic from Acherbys. Thank you, Acherbys.com, at Acherbys USA on social media as well. Uh, so thank you to God the folks at, at Acherbys USA, whether it's Barsha, Anderson, Cooper Webb, AC, industry leader in aftermarket dirt bike plastics and accessories with over 40 years of experience and input from curled riders. They use their stuff now, and it works great. Bring your bike back to life uh, with the full line of replacement replica plastic kits, hand guards, disc guards, frame guards, and more. Add a Cherubis USA. And the four cloak protectors. Where do you stand on those four I cloak? have them. I don't use them, but I do have a set at the house. No way. I swear to God. They're in my garage. And do you like them? Uh, yeah, I, I like them for like when I'm just riding in the summer and I want to keep my stuff s- still nice oh, and we're just riding okay. outdoors yeah, and stuff yeah. or it's a rocky track. Yeah, I yeah, put, them, put on. them on. I put them on. Huh. I want to call Kiefer so I bad right now. I love saving my product. I, I want to call Kiefer right now. private so I got to have my stuff last as long as I can Fuck and you. a has great stuff. Fuck you, Kiefer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's bagging on fork lug protectors, dude. I mean, you can get fucked. They're they're four clip. They're good. I have them. I do have. I have photos of my bike with them on. Can you send me a photo of that, I can. please? And I and I will attach a friend. I can. Uh, let's get AC on the line if we can. There, Wolfie, please. I'll send it out uh, to AC. We're gonna do the draw around seven thirty. By the way, for the bike, uh, seven thirty Pacific time for the bike. Yeah, one and minute. All the prizes. You got one minute now to do it. Um, and we're not what's opening, wrong? It, we're Wolfie, not opening it back up, so don't try. Wolfie, what's wrong? Uh, he didn't answer the first time, so I'm just trying to. Oh, make it. okay. You keep trying. All right. 
Maybe he. Oh, wait, I got a text here. Oh no, it's not him. Okay. All right. All right. It's great radio. Okay. Ah, uh, Justin Starling, brought to you by Decal Works, Pulp Max Twenty Three. Uh, that's when I get stranded. I just start using, just start reading the plugs. Um. Oh, Seth's on three. What's up, Seth? Seth. Hey, what's going on, Steve? What up? Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, how big you think Tomac's balls are? Massive. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Good, good like, talk. How the okay. fuck did he ride off the track Sounds like gay. that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, because you, I don't know if you've seen these dudes in, uh, in professional sports that get Achilles tear, but they, um, I'm trying to send it to myself here. Oh, there we go. Uh, I have, I have more photos of that too. That's just my photo shoot oh, from okay. last year. All right. All right. He's oh, call again. Try again, Talon. All right, we're doing this. Starling, Achilles tendon tears. You've seen athletes in other sports do it. They act, they go down like they've been shot. Yeah. Like they literally look like they've been shot, right? And it looks like it hurts like hell. And Tomac just put his foot out, landed, put his foot out, landed another jump, yeah. and rode off to the track. And was just sitting there like you could tell he was in pain, but like yeah. God, he handled it so well. Dude, I- I'm with you, Seth. It was pretty gnarly, man. Um, that was something else. Yeah, so. I just couldn't believe he just rode off the track. No, like me neither. Football players, they no. they are on the ground or something. No, I'm probably I'm probably in tears mm-hmm. if it's me. Oh, I am for yeah. sure, so, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that's Seth. Um, Renegade Fuels. We uh, we had Tony from Renegade on last week. We're give, the top three. Starling, just to rub it in even more, the top three finishers in the LCQ challenge all get a free five gallon pail of Renegade's latest racing fuel. Sweet. So that's awesome for you. Yeah, to announce everyone getting that. So and cool. uh, Will Hahn, Justin Brayton winning championships with Renegade, and uh, Dean Wilson, Max Ensi now currently pour it in. Uh, RenegadeRacingFuels.com, RenegadeRaceFuel.com. Please uh, check them out. They're looking for dealers and distributors. Tony was on the uh, on the show last week. Thank you to the folks at Renegade. Uh, they're pleased and proud to bring you our next guest of the show. Uh, he is a third place rider from this week in the first podium in a couple of years in 450 Supercross. It's everybody's favorite uh, factory rider, Adam C. Cirillo. What's up, AC? Hey guys, how you doing, dude? A lot of people were really happy for you this weekend. I don't know, like Stoked. I know we're supposed to be, we in the media are supposed to be like impartial dudes, right? We're supposed to just be like, right. oh, I'm just, I'm just reporting on the race, and I don't really care. And I, I don't know, it's just hard to do it with you with a guy like you. I think Anton was probably in tears, I'm sure, but we we all kind of cheer for you, man, because I think you give us good interviews. You're honest. You're open. You're you know you kind of articulate what you want. Uh, if you do a dumb move on the track, you'll say it or whatever, and you're fine with us writing about it. I think you've got a lot of fans in the pits, man, and people were stoked. Yeah, it's been – I mean, even all year, it, it – you know, obviously not really being – I really haven't been news all year. I've kind of just been riding back there doing my own thing and um, <clears throat> definitely haven't been, you know, the the focus of attention. And But still, the, the respect that I get from, from guys like you, guys in the media – other riders, team personnel, everybody around the pits, it it makes me feel really good, man. Like, it makes me feel good. I mean, things haven't always been, you know, up and down sport, of course, and um, to, to have everybody, you know, have most people's respect and, um, you know, it, it means a lot to me, for sure. I, I, I do my best, obviously, just to be myself and uh, try to translate that into to being good on a dirt bike, but it, it means probably more to me than – than actual results, having that respect and, and having people, you know, cheer for me like that. Mm-hmm. I, um, I take that to heart. Yeah. It had to have been pretty cool to do it. Um, I talked to you after the race a little bit, so I, I might ask you some of the same questions here, but you, you had to have been thinking about it a little bit out there uh, a little bit like, Hey, I'm going to be on the box. Yeah. I, you know, obviously look, I know that, you know, the field is thin at the end of the season. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this the last couple of races. And I think a lot of guys are thinking, you know, this is my opportunity to get up there a bit. Um, and, you know, th- there's some of that for me. But, you know, typically, you know, I'm, I've been the guy yeah. that's at home and, and not able to, to take advantage of it. So, um, you know, it's for me, it's business as usual. Uh, I, I didn't want to get to a spot either where you see some guys out and you see your opportunity and you get overly excited and, um, you know, start doing something stupid. So I, I just wanted to put myself in good position. My starts haven't been great the last, maybe like the last four races. I haven't really been up there towards the front at all. So I just wanted to put myself in a good position and, and you know, just see what happens. And yeah. uh, obviously Chase had some pace on me. Kenny was ripping. But, um, yeah, I was able to get up there. And, of course, 
yeah, once Kenny got by me, I, I felt really good. Chase didn't really just absolutely gap me right away. I was pretty um, mm-hmm. close with him. And uh, once Kenny got around me, I definitely had a thought of like, okay, man, like a pony would be, pony would be great. Um, and on, on tracks like that where it's a little bit loose, especially coming to the corners on lean angle, it, sometimes it's like 50-50 whether you're going to, you know, kind of wash the front end out or not. So I kind of started hitting things a bit straighter, getting a little <laughs> bit, you know, up on the knobbies. And, um, yeah, but generally it wasn't, it wasn't too stressful. It was, it was a good one for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Starling here got uh, 10th, and we talked about the beginning of the show. And it's like, you know what? Like, yeah. Like Starling, like I said, like I said to Starling, he shouldn't walk around being like, "Hey, I'm the tenth best rider," no. blah blah blah. Mm-mm. But at the same time, be very stoked and be very proud that someone had to go race and you guys made it to the end here. Yep. Knock on wood, you made it to the end. One more to go, and that's a that is a skill and something to be applauded. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah, you still got to line up, in my opinion. So right. Yeah, yeah. I know that the field's depleted for my tenth, but you know, it's still no, I still got to be and, there. And us in the media, like. You know, acknowledge the guys that are hurt that aren't there, but at the same time, praise the guys that that do it that are still racing because yeah. it's a hard ass sport as we've seen. So yeah. yeah, and we we yeah we know that I know that I've said it in the press conference. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not I'm not oblivious to it, but more you know more. Look, I wear my heart on my sleeve. It, it's just how I am. It's just you know I'm gonna be me, um, no matter what, no matter how it's perceived. Really, I'm I'm just myself. And look, it's been a long been a long road and regardless of the situation it's it's super cool for me to even be to be racing um and to be out there is um is a win in itself so to to be on the podium again yeah unreal man did you know it was houston 2021 were you like think- oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay oh, all right yeah. okay <laughs> yeah. you're asking ac I mean, if he remembers a race like that do you remember that's a good everything. point that's a, that's a great that's a great <laughs> he knows point. every race yeah that's a great point <laughs> Uh, and I was, hey, I was by the Cowie truck after, and they looked like, you know, they gave you a round of applause in the truck, and everybody, it seemed like everyone was pretty happy for you, man. Leo, Theo, and everybody that I was talking to, Shanty, yeah. So, yeah, I, I said a few words in the truck, and yep. you guys had some words to say in there, too. And like this whole, this whole deal, you know, with my hand, everything, these last, you know, this last little while, I, I couldn't ask for, and, and really, I mean, shoot, I'd probably say it regardless, but really I, I actually mean it they have been so um patient and supportive and in the right ways and and not um you know not pushing me i think you know they see i i'm doing everything i can and um you know they appreciate that for me and i i know they do the same so it's it's nice man mm-hmm. it's nice to have just a good weekend where i'll feel good about it and um yeah just just really just this year kind of I you know obviously I missed a few races it wasn't great that wasn't great but um just to be going to work every week and you know back in the grind and and making progress and going to the race and figuring things out like it means a lot to me to just be back doing that and um yeah the team and I work great together and hopefully you know we got a little momentum going into outdoors yeah renegade racing fuels bringing you adam scene cirillo on the show uh renegade racefuel.com for more information we had tony last week they're looking for dealers they're looking for distributors also too um kawasaki you know with jason and yourself like hasn't been as many podiums hasn't been as many wins as they wanted i've been there on a race team like you 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 you, you're week to week these guys are working so hard and, and the podiums and wins are what these guys at that level want and you were the only rider there and you delivered for them you know that's awesome so yeah of course of course we all want you know there's three spots in the podium but Mm -hmm. we all you know a lot of us expect to be there and and jason's great he had a fantastic year last year and um you know he has a lot of speed and yeah he's always like this off season man he was unbelievable i was like i wasn't sure i was going to make a main event like this guy was putting <laughs> 30 seconds on me in a 20 i'm like oh my god what really? happened when really I was done? Huh? yeah yeah it, no i'm wow. serious man yeah i'm not really much of a i used to be kind of a practice guy like i could throw it down but i don't sure. i don't really because my that hasn't been my emphasis the past four years you know it's not you know kind of since i got off of um since I got off a of PC, you know, I think over there it was a bit more focused on speed, shorter mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and since I left there, it's been kind of just trying to be more consistent and more consistent with my technique and, and stuff like that. So I'm not like crazy fast in practice by any means. I mean, I'm, I'm very intentional. Um, but yeah, he was ripping. And, yeah. you know, it's one of those deals, I think, to be perfectly honest, you, you hope 
that the guy, you know, Jason being a championship contender, you know, one of the best in the world, you hope that he has a great season, um, wins a lot, gets on the podium a lot, kind of takes the pressure off me in terms of, you know, building back. You sure. know, everybody's stoked yep. and um, it, it makes it, it makes it easier in that way. But, um, you know, it's been, it's been a challenging year for all of us, but uh, that's the way it goes, man. I had to laugh when you said you don't work on speed, but two years ago, AC, like the first nine practices of the year, you were the quickest guy. And then I wasn't working on it though. I know, I know, true. And then, and then the one man who took you down, and I and I interviewed you, and you were like, "It's no better man to take me down than Marty." I was say it was Marty. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? yeah. You, were, and, you, you yeah. were happier for Marty. <laughs> yeah, was that? Gosh, what was, was that? It was Anaheim. That that I think was it was one with the dragons back and the yeah. steep whoops, whoops everywhere. Yeah, and yeah, you but, and you were like, if anybody's gonna do it, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Marty took me down. Yeah, he sent <laughs> it, man. He he's he's a no clutch, no finger on the clutch in the whoop whoops guy yeah i remember remember it was that whoop section that that jet yep. um yep broke his collarbone in and i do i watched marty hit those like no clutch and skip like three of them and i was like oh, yeah i don't have it man i think it's, i think it's p2 for me today <laughs> tip of the visor to marty yep exactly yeah. Yeah, what uh, a legend, man. Yeah. yeah, so you know that I've always brought up the the no crossbar AC is the best AC. Um, oh, I still yeah. fully yeah, believe yeah, you that. You still believe that? Oh, I mean, okay. Look at it. He's back on the no oh, crossbar, and it's, it's coming around. And then we jump to the tall seat. And I know you've been oh, lining yeah. up next to you this weekend, and I, I just remember looking at your bike and just being like, dang, that thing is tall. You know, like I know I've talked to you about it, but I was like, that is, that's up there. Have you done any other big changes to your bike um, this season? kind of like the the tall seat um yeah i mean the the tall seat was all my crew chief oscar he was he was like you know watching some tape and one day came in the track and was with him and he's like i think we should try this and man it was so much easier for me out of the turns like to 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 kind of stand up i mean mm -hmm. think about you know doing a squat from from 110 degrees to, to 90 degrees or 80 degrees, it makes yep. a big difference. It's like 500 squats to a 20 lap moto. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, that's cool for me. It's, it makes me feel a little bit like I'm like a, a, a 10 year old on the 85 when I, when I stop um, and I don't have my whole shot device in, like I'm kind of leaned over to one yeah. side like that. <laughs> but um, any other changes? I think, I think I'm quite a bit softer um, I've normally been kind of a guy that comes into the turns really fast, breaks really hard, and I've been trying to be a bit more roll speed, not so much on the gas, and, and just to get a little bit more comfort like yep. um, into my hands, you know, just try to make the bike a little bit plusher. And yeah. obviously I've been riding the bike differently as well. So I think that's probably the biggest change is just basically I've had to learn how to ride the bike differently out of necessity. Right. Um, and yeah, we've had, we've kind of worked around that a bit. It's no. been kind of, you know, one of those things, trial and error. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The no crossbar. That's a weird look, but we're all used hand to it right now. Coming back for oh, sure. hand guards too. Yeah. Hey, I've yeah. been hand guards wait, all year. Man. Yeah. You hand, are a hand I'm guard. a hand guard you guy. Hand guard guy. I ran like, I think Atlanta without them. And I was like, no, no, no. These I, things got to go back on. I just think of Pastrana and hand guards. It's yeah. Just Pastrana hand guards. That's it. Yep. Paddle tire too. I can't wait for a paddle. <laughs> Uh, Adam Cincerello here, brought to you by RenegadeRaceFuel.com. Uh, we got a call for you from uh, Sean here. Sean, welcome to the show. What's your question for Adam Cincerello? Yo, AC, uh, huge fan. So I'm just a dumbass on a couch, but uh, when watching you go through the whoops, it looks like your head's tilted to the left. Am I crazy seeing that, or is there any reason, or, you know, what do you think? No, you're totally right, man. I, I've noticed that for, I mean, not just the whoops, kind of in a lot of different areas. It's It's been that way since I was a kid. I, I have no idea why that is. I, I wish I had a better answer for you, but <laughs> my my head tilt, you can, you know, if I had all black gear on, I think you'd still know it's me because I, I always do that. Uh, I don't know if it's like a vision thing that I'm unaware of or, or what, but um, yeah, maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's a cool. it's a good, it's a good, uh, good uh, observation there, Sean. Thanks for calling, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Justin Starling. Uh, you've known Adam forever. Uh, a you, long, a time. long time. Okay, long time. You probably rode with Adam when he was a can't miss. Uh, you know the next massive thing on an eighty. You know, oh, back to like little CM fifties. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, so, uh. Kind of, if you can, you know, with Adam on the line a little bit, maybe makes it weird. But can you articulate sort of 
from the outside, a kid that you know well, grow up to be a man, uh, uh, have some injuries, have some ups, have some downs, throw away a Supercross title, win a national title, you know, show blazing speed. Like all the, the, the range of Adam Cena Cirillo that you've seen, Justin Sarling. Right. I mean, from, <laughs> from a 65, you knew he was going to go somewhere. And at the time, I didn't really know where I was even yeah. going to go. I mean, we didn't really know. But it was like, man, this kid's really good. And then he gets on an 80, and you're like, wow, he's really good. Right. We didn't really ever race each other until pro because of the age difference. Yeah. Um, but when he got on the 250 and, and was was winning Supercross right away, I, I wasn't surprised. Like, it was like this mm-hmm. was coming the whole time. Like, yep. you always kind of knew that this was going to happen. And, yeah, then you see him. You know, I remember when he lost the championship in Vegas, like, I was still racing out there, and I was bummed. Like, I remember seeing the mechanics are just being bummed. Yeah. And then when he won, I remember doing a huge Facebook post. just like, this, finally. You know, yeah. like, this is so cool. So to, like, grow up around him my whole life, um to see what he's gone through and then like even the podium this weekend i came across finish line in 10th and i'm like stoked i'm like cool finally back in the top 10 and i see him with his head down and i'm like no like i knew he was third but i was like oh, don't oh, tell me something was, happened oh shit okay and yeah, yeah. uh yeah. then i and then i looked up i'm like oh no okay he's just stoked okay, okay. i was like thank god you know but i was like my first thought I went for like right. so so many emotions in that little bit because yeah. i was like don't yeah. tell me something happened yeah um but no it's it's cool to see, and it's nice to see him with emotion that he still loves what he's doing. Right. After all the right. adversity he's been yeah. through, to see him get a third and have the emotion, like, that to me was one of the coolest things, right. like, that he was just that stoked to be back there. Because, you know, Adam, when you when you talk to – Thanks, Justin. I appreciate it, man. When you talk to Millsaps, and he's been in here a few times, you know, uh, he was much like you, right, uh, a prodigy from 60s. And yep. I don't know if he always really enjoyed – and not saying you did, but I don't know if Davey always enjoyed what he went through and had to do to to be who he was. And, you know, you haven't mm-hmm. either because uh, of injuries and ups and downs and all that. Yeah. But, but you have at least, I think, and, and again, maybe it's just bullshit fronting, but I think you've always sort of appreciated that you race motorcycles for uh, for money, that for a living, you know? Uh, I think you've always, yeah. you've always been like, dude, I got a pretty good job. <laughs> you yeah, know? Th- it's appreciative. I think – yeah, I mean, I think it's even when I don't, I don't always feel that way. It's not like I'm this saint, you know, I'm yeah. I'm human. And I, I, I think, of, you know, I have those thoughts. I have those days where I hate it. And I have the, you know, I've had plenty of times with injuries, adversity, and all this stuff. And, and really kind of my, my childhood, my amateur career um, from a public standpoint was much, much different from a private standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a lot of challenges there as well. And, I've had to kind of relearn how to, you know, a few times really, um, kind of how to fall back in love with the sport. And I think I've just genuinely, you know, it was an organic passion of mine. It wasn't passed down or anything. It's, you know, I, I've told the story a million times, but like just watching it on yeah. TV and then being good at something like that, it's just, it doesn't happen often. And it's always carried me through, you know, I've, even at times where I feel like I hate it or, or whatever, it's um, I always find a little bit more, you know, I always, um, you know, I always find more in the tank to, to come back. And there's always a point where I'm like, fuck, yeah, I, I yeah. thank God I'm still doing this, <laughs> you know, and um, even even even, you know, the times that the times where these days, the times where I feel um, I mean, even there's sometimes in the beginning of this season where I'm not stoked on things and I'm mm-hmm. like, what am I doing out here? You know, just circulating and you're, you know, <clears throat> coming from where I've come from and, and the, doing the, you know, the accomplishments I've had and you're just out there and you're not even close. And, um, you know, those are the times now where I've grown enough to be like, this is a temporary emotion. Mm-hmm. Like this is, you yep. love this. <laughs> um, this sucks right now, but yep. you got to stick with it and, you know, that's where it all comes from, like where I just lose it um, like the other night. It's just, I mean, even days in the beginning of this season, um, there was some really tough days for me, man. And, you know, to, to just to stick with it and to still be there, it means, you know, means everything to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you're still dealing with a bit of an arm issue, right? It's, it comes and goes. It affects you. Uh, it's safe to say you're not 100 percent physically. Well, I'm in uh, currently in a Kansas hotel room right now, and I just got done um, with this stem cell treatment. Where I'll show you the video next weekend, but okay. they basically take this needle and they they pull stem cells mm-hmm. like 
kind of like out of your back, like near the top yep. of your ass area. It wasn't wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world. And yeah, I got it. I got stem cells injected into my my shoulder, my elbow, and my wrist. It was a full day. I'm not a big needle guy. It was a full <laughs> day of just getting absolutely destroyed by massive Noodle, needles. Uh, massive Jeez. needles. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those things. I've talked about it so much. I've talked about it so much the past few years that. Um, you know, I remember even sitting with Jason Thomas at um, the media day before uh, before the season started, and I'm like, hey, I'm not going to – I would rather you guys not talk about this. Like, right. I'm not going to talk about this all year. Yep. Um, and I think – yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of – Yeah. you guys we, know. We, I mean, we've... everybody kind of knows. Everybody kind of knows, like, Ryers media, and nobody's really been, been talking about it, which I appreciate. Because I, I just don't – like, I'm just not – you know, I want to focus on the positives and, and do what yeah. I can and control what I can control. But yeah, it's been, um, it's been difficult. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't allow me to ride to the best of my ability. Um, most of the time, especially mm-hmm. if I have to skim whoops the whole time, it's like you saw me in the beginning of the year, I was basically jumping anything I could. I even yep. I forget the race that I was jumping them where it was like, well, there was no way you should be able to I, do that. But I sent you, I don't know if you remember this, but I was like, Hey man, were the whoops really tough? At the race, I don't know what race it was because I noticed this, and you were like, "No, man, but I just, I just have to jump right now or something." Yeah. <laughs> you texted back. Yeah, I was, at, I was. We were at Tampa this year. Kind of funny story. Yeah. Um, you know, my my crew chief Oscar was was Chad Reed's mechanic for a long time. They had a lot of success, um, and I was I was standing in the whoops, walking the track, was standing right next to Oscar, and and Chad goes over. You know, Chad is kind of right on the next lane, and he he. Um, and he looks at Oscar and he's like, uh, you should be thinking about like how to get your guy to double these the fastest, the fastest he can or something like that. Like, yeah. Um, and and I'm just, like, well, you know, yeah. just got to bite my tongue and be like, yeah, man, you're right. You're right. I got to be better. But, um, ah, oh, imagine yeah, that been, chat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah it, I know. It, it, it's been a challenging, but, um, it's part of it. Everybody's yep. dealing with something. So I'm, I'm doing everything I can. And I, I really think that I can, uh, figure it out and, and get back to, um, you know, I think I've shown flashes. I think I can get back to, mm-hmm. to where I was. Yeah, no, I think you're getting closer. It's a it's a slow ascent to where you were. It's not happening quick for us people that have watched you all the time, but it seems like it seems like there's been progress, you know? so uh, Yeah, it has, to be, yeah. it has to be slow. I mean, we can't yep. just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a few phone calls for you. Are you good still or you got to go? You got to catch a plane? No, nah, man, okay? I'm good. All right. Uh, Aiden's on one. Aiden, uh, what's your question for Adam Cincerillo? Hey, Adam. Uh, I wanted to get your take on this because I know you're aficionado of the sport. Um, and when I think of when I was younger, um, watching I, uh, the wheel tap over a three five three always sticks in my head. I felt like it was a staple of our sport for you know five years or so. Um, I wanted to get your take on where that went. Why why that's not what? done that much anymore? Wait, what? What? Uh, what are you referencing exactly? I'm a bit confused. Like a three, um, a three footer, a five footer, and a three footer, like a triple wheel tap, a wheel tapping to get over it. I I mean I think it all I think it just depends on how it's built. Yeah. You know I um gosh, I don't know if we have we Justin have we had a wheel tapper this year? Not that I've wheel tapped. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't. I, I. It just. I agree with Adam. It's just how it's built, in my opinion. Well, I'm thinking more two-stroke really? days too. Like no, you, we've you, had some. You've had, we've had some. quite yeah. a few. It just depends on the build. Right. We we do have a at one of our test tracks, actually the old Suzuki track. We call it K4 now. That one's early. In Corona. Yeah. We have a. We have a little. It's like a three-five-three three onto a tabletop. So it's like a wheel tap onto a tabletop oh, off. Jeez, that one's. It looks yeah. cool. It looks gnarly. Oh, I've never seen that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty brutal. I think we took. I haven't been up there in a few weeks, but I think they took it out. Uh, but that, I do love so, a good wheel tap. I'm not sure why. I think. I think um, so like, track builders have tendencies, you know, where some years they do more things than others. I'm, I'm sure it'll come back eventually. You could see one yeah. this weekend. There's a. Three oh, five yeah. three and then a triple, so okay. there is a chance of having one this right. weekend. So Alex from Dirtworks said that I can design a track for next year. Oh boy! Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> oh, awesome. No. It's gonna be incredible. Can't wait. I'm gonna put dragons, max whoops dra- everywhere. Dragons, dragons, all to, over. Dragons to dragons. Reverse. <laughs> How about the up dragon and back? To we had one. Uh, Monster what the Cup. Fuck? Yeah, I know. There was a 
the dragons back up, a single, and then a dragons back down, and yeah. we were dragons back jumping yeah. all the way to the next. We're gonna one. bring it ba that back. Oh god, that was terrible. Dragon to dragon. Fantastic. AC won that race, so he was probably good at it. Yeah, exactly right. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks, man. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Craig Martin's on three. What's up, Craig? You've known Adam for a long time. Oh yeah, and um, I'm not sure he remembers me, but uh, oh, I, I know, I know, Craig. The... Come on, come on, Craig. <laughs> Team Green, baby. <laughs> So, so when Justin made the statement a little bit ago about how fast I was on a 50, back in the day when I was the team green manager and I was the guy that was out scouting all the kids, and else, I saw him on a uh, 50 and said, we got to have this guy. On a Cobra. And yeah, we went yeah. ahead and, yeah. yeah. We went ahead and signed the contract. I was like, well, you know, that you really can't run 65 yet. He's not really there yet. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> we we need to have this contract signed. We need to have him on our team. We need to have him a part of our team. So, so the first year, it was kind of hit and miss. He, he, he did ride some 65s and stuff. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it, was, it was an awesome, awesome uh, experience to get to be the guy that actually kind of got you into the Kawasaki fold for sure. And then, Craig, were you responsible yeah. for the 100-year for the Kawasaki deal he signed when he was eight? Or, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, no, that, that was that, day that, that was that was good times. I remember actually. So I I rode a little, a little fifty, um, in two thousand and three. So it was like my last year in four to six. And then when I when I signed that that Cowie deal with Craig, I actually didn't ride fifties when I was seven years old. Like we just went full, I, and I ended up going back to fifties when I was eight years old and riding fifties and sixty fives. But my seven year old year, I just rode sixties to try to like get shifting and the clutch and everything down. And um, yeah, it was just crash or win for sure. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. <laughs> Do you remember the sixty five that we built at Team Green with the upside down forks and everything that we gave you? Oh yeah, oh, I remember that <laughs> thing. That was, in, it was one of the sickest. I probably the sickest KX sixty five of all time. Yeah, you know, the Japanese wanted us to build the ultimate 65 because we were complaining about our bike not being good enough. And so they tasked with the job. And I had a whole bunch of people from the industry and bud racing and everyone all donate pieces and buy bought pieces and everything else. Jeez. And then the Japanese said, yeah, we've done that. Uh, and I went ahead and said, okay, I'm done. Craig, uh, thanks That's for the call, man. Your phone is kind of robotic. But thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, yeah. Craig. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. Adam seems hey, to roll hey, on the story. line. Huh? It's stories like that that make me realize why there's people out there that can't stand me. You know, <laughs> you like, up like have this upside down sixty-five <laughs> of all time. You know, yeah, at like yeah. seven no. years old, you just assume I came out of the womb with that thing in my garage. No, you worked hard and deserved everything you had. That, people didn't see the behind the scenes that I was able to see a lot in Florida and in all that. And then you, yeah, you had all these great bikes and everything, and but it wasn't because you were just handed. Like you deserved all of it because you worked for all of it. Uh, yeah, I, I Timmy, you. Timmy was working with you at some point, right? Your dad was bringing him to Red Dog's place at some point, right? AC? Oh yeah, it was like oh uh, wait, I think he told me because I didn't know anything about it, and I just I don't really like amateurs, and I, you know I'm always I'm always complaining yeah, about no, it. You don't. And he and Timmy's like, dude, no, this kid's for real. Yeah. Like he's got everything, but he works really hard. He does all yeah. the motos. He does like he t Red Dog was like, no, this is not your typical like amateur spoiled kid he he works his ass off and i'm like okay he cool. did the laps yeah yeah you know i was like okay. no i was yeah. i was all in i that's why i think it's crazy that i still love it like it's, it's right like not right in the head because i was the level of all in and, and i'm not like trying to trying to pump myself up here but it's just facts like that i was all in at like six and seven like it was i can vouch it, it. was everything yeah. it was everything you know and yeah. we went full on and um yeah i think most people you know with just a normal like something that you like i think most people would have quit i mean there was times like i i thought i was going to quit when i'm like 16 7 you know like yeah. 14 15 16 you're like dude i don't know if i can do this but um yeah it's been a lifetime of work that's for sure but worth I it i love it I don't know how much you have to do with McGrath there, or how much he comes around. But do you have a good relationship with him. Are you are you good with him? Are you are you? I know you're a student of the sport, so I don't know how that works, and and who knows how people are, you know, on, on the professional yeah. level. But are you like, 
you know, cool with him and you, you enjoy talking <clears throat> yeah, to him? MC, yeah, MC, MC's the man. He's He's been around. He's been a Cali ambassador for yep. a while, and we always do. You know, he's always out for the photo shoots, and um, he's around a lot these days doing the science of Supercross stuff. So um, yeah, I think he, he was just in the rig. He was just in the rig um, at – Nashville and we were talking about some lines and stuff but yeah I've had a good relationship with MC we did some I was sponsored by DC shoes for a long time oh yeah um, that's right. my, the, kind of my later amateur years and we did a couple videos together I went out to his house and or his ranch and road and um, yeah kind of he, one of those things that you take for granted now you know it's just like yeah oh that's Jeremy you know he's, he's awesome. I know. He's a cool dude but you know, I was watching the guy on ESPN when we didn't even know what, um, you know, what a dirt bike was. So I think pretty, the, the reason cool. I asked that is I was talking to Nick outside the rig about, and he was saying, Shmoda was saying watching McGrath in the whoops and was like, oh, like he's still really good in the whoops. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, with outdoor suspension <laughs> <laughs> at, at 50 years old, dude. Yeah. And, he, we have a blind. There's a blind triple on that uh, the track that we did our team photo shoot. Blind. Yeah. I mean, in this landing, if you come up short, man, there's not enough stem cells in the world that are going to save you. It's, <laughs> it's over. And he, um, yeah, he like rolled it one time. He he did the, yep. the typical roll double, mm-hmm. and then next time just brought with a little whip, mm-hmm. and you're like, dude, <laughs> still got it. Yeah. <laughs> To, to do that at, at 50 with outdoor suspension, I'm out, dude. I with, am out. With new knees, an artificial knee. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I know, right? No, you know what? That'll be you. You're going to be around. You'll be around. Yeah, I'll be ar- I definitely will be around. I'm not sure in yeah. what capacity, but yeah. I will be around. You, you're going to be around hanging out, doing something for somebody, I think, in, enjoying the races and bullshitting with people. You know what I mean? So um, I think all of that. You'll, you'll be there. So. Yeah, I, I definitely – you know, this is my. I think sometimes when you're when you're younger in in the sport, you kind of feel like, ah, oh, you're gonna get done and you're gonna have all this money and you're just gonna go. I don't know. Just you just kind of think you're just gonna be done with everything, and then, and then you grow up a little bit and you're like, wow, there's a lot of life left to live after I'm <laughs> done with this. Like yeah. I should probably start thinking about what I'm gonna do. And I I definitely I love the industry all you guys, all the people I'm around all the time. So yeah. I'd be lucky to be in the sport somehow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Adam Seen Cirilla here on the on the Pulp Mech Show. Um, I guess before we let you go, uh, how's outdoor stuff coming? Have you ridden much? Uh, what's your thoughts on the upcoming outdoor stuff season? I've, I've only got about, I think I've got three or four days on outdoor, so not much. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel good about it. I think – for my hand right now, the the worst part of everything is the whoops, and obviously there's no whoops outside, so that's encouraging. Um, but yeah, I think I've always, you know, I guess since 2019, I don't know what the hell changed because I felt I, like I was I terrible at outdoors before that. But um, I've always I, had a lot of confidence out there, and dude, I was yeah, I got a podium. I, so. I, I was looking back for this Supercross stat for you today for my column, you know, uh, of Houston. And I'm scrolling, and I'm just like, I know you, you, you told me to shut the fuck up one time when I called you an outdoor guy. Um, but I don't know, man. I think you're an outdoor guy. Like, I, I even looked at, like, you know, the last few years of results. Like, you know? Like, yeah, bro, you're an outdoor guy. That's it. <laughs> I'm working on, I'm working on my, my body of work kind of part two in my career. We've okay. been in part two. Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. check back in a few years. Okay, all right. No, but you, you have that national championship, which is awesome. And then, yeah, you've. You've hit the box a lot, you know, the summer that uh, Zacho won uh, and then other, yeah, other years, man. You're there. So, um, yeah, outdoor guy, Starling. He rips outdoors. You can't deny it. And you, when you grow up that way, but, uh, man, you watch him ride Supercross, it's so impressive. Yeah, no. It's like, so hand guards. Hand guards, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for your time, buddy. Uh, thank you for uh, an interview, and congratulations on the podium. Uh, really cool. I think all of us were stoked. So, thanks, yep. man. I appreciate it, fellas. Later, Justin. Right. We'll Later see you. See you this weekend. Right. See ya. That's Adam Cincerillo, everybody. Brought to you by Renegade Racing Fuels. Always a good interview. I really like him. I, seriously, I like, know, when that's... I came across the finish line well, and I thought like something had happened and he wasn't on the podium anymore, I was gutted. I, I was thinking about having him on anyways because he made the box. It's been a while. But then when I knew you were in studio, yeah. I'm like, I, I just, I just got, Florida guys. I, yeah, like, I have we don't on. speak a lot um, anymore, but – we can always, if we walk by each other or something, we talk on the gate or something. It's it's, it's always normal and yeah. it's fine. But it, I mean, we we're different paths in our in our lives right now. And yeah, um, he's serious at the race. That's when I only see him now. But um, yeah, grew up with him. 
bunch of love for the kid. Yep. Great family. I think, I think yeah. he and his dad went through some stuff, and I think they're better now. Um, happens good. with them all. Yep. Me and my dad went through the same stuff yep. in the past, and yep. now we're better than ever. Nope. It, it, it happens. Yep, I agree. The uh, sport it's, it's can, good to see him. And can I, go a bit I, different ways. I, I did, he told me about the stem cell stuff at the race and then uh, and today and everything else, and I wasn't sure if he was going to say it on the air or not, no. but I'm glad he did, yeah. He's so. very transparent. Yeah. Like, yeah. very, very transparent, so that's that's cool. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, the number one source for power sports companies looking for employees and candidates, looking for employment opportunities. It's the first and only job role that's built specifically for the motorcycle industry. Upload your resume for free today. If you're a company out there looking for some people, uh, go put your job on MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Get yourself some exposure. Try to find the right people for the right job at the right time, and the MIJ will help you. Uh, this week, job of the week, a Blue Crew. Blue Crew. P&A sales planner based out of Georgia. That's uh, where Yamaha is these days. They've got an excellent opportunity for a national parts and accessories sales planner to join the team in Marietta, Georgia. Position reports to the sales planning manager and will be responsible for de- developing P&A wholesale programs and promotions as well. Uh, it's got what you'll be doing. It's got what you need. High school diploma required. A BA or a BS in degree in a business-related field desired. Five plus years of power sports industry experience required. Yamaha Blue Crew out there in Georgia. I know we just visited the office in Georgia a few times, so maybe if you get this job, probably you can get the you can get Weege's, You can see Weege. Uh So P and A <laughs> sales planner uh, at MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com for Blue Crew. Thanks to those guys for coming on board. Thank you, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. All right, go to commercial break. We got JT coming up. We got Wes Williams. We had to make a um, a call on Savachi. Can't make it. Uh, I had to I had to put Adam's catching a flight. I had to bump Joey for Adam because Adam was already planned. Then Joey said he can't do later, and we're gonna go next week. So yeah, Joe Dog in Florida, so it's yeah, late there. Yeah, so Joe it. Dog will be on next week. So cancel the Joey Savachi public mix show. One appearance. of the best twitters, Joey Savachi. He's coming around. He's really good. Yeah, I follow him. Love yeah. it. Yeah, it's great. So we'll we'll get him on next week uh, for sure. And uh, thank AC and Kenny for calling in. Justin Starling here as well. We got the draw coming up. We got LCQ challenge. Starling, you have some beefs with the LCQ challenge, and uh, we're gonna he- we're gonna have this out. Mm. Uh, I want to hear your call opinion. It a beef. Well, whatever. Opinions. Uh, opinion. What do you, you call opinions? opinions in these yeah, days? Beef. beef. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got beef. Tons of beef. Then bring the beef, Starling. So much beef. All right, we're gonna come back right after this, everybody. God bless. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Hey, in case you didn't know, Racetech is the world's largest aftermarket suspension modification company. All Racetech products include award-winning goal valves and settings are 100% guaranteed and made right here in the U.S. of A. Racetech also offers state-of-the-art precision engine services and parts to all engine builders. The staff has over 65 years of championship winning experience. It's so good that many of the top privateer teams such as SGB Honda, Team Solitaire Nuclear Blast Yamaha, and Motul AJE Gas Gas, as well as Jerry Robin, Kevin Morans, and many more, choose Racetech for their superior performance, reliability, and their customer service. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kate Clayson, and I choose Racetech because I love their desire to strive for perfection. I think we all know that perfection isn't possible, but getting to perfection is always the goal and i think that is something that both myself and race tech have always worked towards and i think they can help you get there too hey guys this is alex ray i use race tech components in my sgd suspension and also the race tech engine the reason i like it is just because uh, the engine is super reliable tons of torque and also on the suspension side it just gives it that flush nice feeling Hey, it's your boys over at Team Solitaire. If you don't run Racetech, here's what you do. Put your hands behind your back and run your face into a f***ing wall. Racetech.com. 
What's up, guys? This is Kevin Morans, and I choose Race Tech because of their convenience of having Race Tech centers all around the United States. Obviously, within my Decker Performance suspension, works really well. They're very high quality performance products. Definitely check them out. Hey, guys, this is Jerry Robin, uh, and I choose Race Tech because of uh, the reliable motors, good power, good suspension, and obviously, it's great people around, and I've uh, been there for a long time, and they're awesome. Visit Racetech.com and use code PULP22 to save. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport for 33 years. They've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, attack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Works Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they've, the best part of this whole deal is if you use a code PulpMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Works Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Works Connection for coming on the show. PulpMX20, the code to save. Over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA. Wiseco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two stroke or a four stroke, Wiseco has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance focused Racer Elite series. Wiseco offers race proven components for the rest of your engine too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. Wiseco is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or wiseco.com to find products for your machine. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship winning factory Kawasaki race team. Longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal, design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. 
The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line, and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you, from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. 
Case in point, the championship winning factory Kawasaki race team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport. For 33 years, they've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, a tack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal, and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Worst Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use the code PULPAMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Worst Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Worst Connection for coming on the show. PULPAMX20, the code to save. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhaust, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hey, in case you didn't know, Racetech is the world's largest aftermarket suspension modification company. All Racetech products include award-winning goal valves and settings are 100% guaranteed and made right here in the U.S. of A. Racetech also offers state-of-the-art precision engine services and parts to all engine builders. The staff has over 65 years of championship winning experience. It's so good that many of the top privateer teams such as SGB Honda, Team Solitaire Nuclear Blast Yamaha, and Motul AJE Gas Gas, as well as Jerry Robin, Kevin Morans, and many more, choose Racetech for their superior performance, reliability, and their customer service. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kate Clayson, and I choose Racetech because I love their desire to strive for perfection. I think we all know that perfection isn't possible, but 
getting to perfection is always the goal. And I think that is something that both myself and Race Tech have always worked towards. And I think they can help you get there too. Hey guys, this is Alex Ray. I use Race Tech components in my SGD suspension and also the Race Tech engine. The reason I like it is just because uh, the engine is super reliable, tons of torque, and also on the suspension side, it just gives it that flush, nice feeling. Hey, it's your boys at Red Team Solitaire. If you don't run Race Tech, here's what you do. Put your hands behind your back and run your face into a f***ing wall. Racetech.com. What's up, guys? This is Kevin Moranz, and I choose Race Tech because of their convenience of having Race Tech centers all around the United States. Obviously, within my Decker Performance suspension, works really well. They're very high-quality performance products. Definitely check them out. Hey, guys, this is Jerry Robin, uh, and I choose Race Tech because of uh, the reliable motors, good power, good suspension, and obviously it's great people around, and I've uh, been there for a long time, and they're awesome. Visit Racetech.com and use code PULP22 to save. Over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA. Wiseco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two stroke or a four stroke, Wiseco has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance focused Racer Elite series. Wiseco offers race proven components for the rest of your engine too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. Wiseco is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or wiseco.com to find products for your machine. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride. Upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, Go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, tyke, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in a wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Paul Mech Show presented by Motorsport.com. Folks at Decal Works, Fly Racing. Uh, sorry we're not on camera right now. Travis Marks just so busy up downstairs. Has no time for us. But I need a Red Bull, but I got one, so we're good. I think that's a couple weeks in a row you've not put us on camera right away. 
you weren't ready anyway, and you got coffee and, you know. Justin Starling here, uh, Stardog, uh, one of the top privateers in the sport right now. And because he's a good guy, uh, he's going to give away one of his FXR jerseys to uh, – this is a race jersey. This is an actual – Yep, yep. Right, a real thing. Probably from last weekend. And uh, so we're going to give away one of Starling's FXR jerseys. Signed? Signed? Yes, of okay, course. Okay, signed. Always. Um, just for coming up here. Really appreciate that. That's awesome. Let's just do uh, you know an e- email contest. Yep. Let's just do that. We'll do 60. 60 yeah. e- 60 60th email. Number. Uh, contest at PulpMXShow.com to get a signed Justin Starling jersey contest at PulpMXShow.com. And don't forget, contest at PulpMXShow.com to get – Enzo Lopes has signed a Cherby's Plastic from this past weekend, signed by Phil and Enzo. Enzo won a heat. That's awesome. Dude, uh, he, you know, he set fastest time in the first qualifier session. Like, Kid's the real deal. He's the real deal, man. And if I, you watch him ride, too, his style and everything is really good. Yeah. He's always, like, very centered on the bike. And, yeah, I don't know how that club deal is with him and how the bike is and all that, but yep. that's a kid I could see on, you know, a star bike yeah, and th- really and really do some damage i think he's talking to mm. some people i think there's some chatter about and they'd that, be dumb so, not yeah. to honestly honestly though he doesn't do outdoors and his best ever outdoors at 10th at jgr years ago like yeah I, if i was a team i would be a little bit hesitant you know i don't know I, but yeah. especially in the 250 class you're not going to get a whole lot of 250 or uh, supercross only deals right there right. unless you're going to go to like another b level team yep um but yeah yeah it, that part kind of shoots him in the foot a little bit but yeah i mean Maybe get a fill in or uh, are they? Does club do outdoors? Are yeah. they? They're yeah. racing outdoors. Yeah, they do outdoors. Oh, oh J Mark. Wow, wow. J Mark, uh, Kilroy, Phil when he gets back, and then oh, uh, Kilroy. Garrett Marchbanks. I forgot about him. Did yeah. he get hurt this year? He got hurt in the first practice or okay. first main event yeah. of the year. And then uh, Marchbanks as well. So mm, wow. um, I thought he was going world. So okay, never mind. Okay, uh, Off Road Warehouse brought you uh, bringing you the seven o'clock hour. Uh, ORW uh, Off Road Warehouse dot com. This is the ORW on the back of club. MX's uh, pants, uh, J Mart and Enzo and Phil and everybody else. Uh, ORW is the place to go for all your truck and off-road accessory needs. They have stores throughout the West Coast. They got one in Atlanta. Oh, Knights scored, Marks. Um, you got damn right they did. Uh, Temecula, San Diego, Corona, Vegas, Atlanta, Phoenix, and more. <laughs> Offroadwarehouse.com. Stop in to check out the latest in truck, Jeep, Overland, UTV, and racing products from the industry's leading brands. Offroad Warehouse stores are staffed by a knowledgeable, experienced team. Plus, they install everything they sell. From suspension kits, tires and wheels to steps, bed accessories, and more. And the code is uh, PulpMX to save at offroadwarehouse.com. Get your truck to the track in style. Uh, all Steve, right. Yep. Have the Leafs simply considered scoring more goals? Take this baseball. Just some food take, for thought. Take this baseball. <laughs> is that baseball why you picked right that now. thing up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just, just ridiculous. I ain't scared. Uh, we got the Race Tech rant tonight. We got the X Brand Goggle Terrace. We got the Motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment as well. JT coming right up. Wes Williams as well. We move Savachi to uh, to next week. Um, let's 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 do this. Let's talk about the LCQ challenge a little bit. Yeah. Uh, second year in a row, Feld yeah. gave us a race on Friday uh, again. Thank you for your help in calling it. Um, yeah. A wild card won again. Now last year, Brees and Chiz were started from the second row, and they blitzed through the field in a six minute race and went one three, but only because Brees crashed in the last turn. Yeah, like last turn. Right. Yeah. So b- probably basically one two from yeah. the back row. This year, we uh, had four different ways to start, mm-hmm. and I made Chase Marquier, who, who won the points championship all year long, choose the starting position, and unfortunately for the chaos, he chose just 1-22. to 22. Right. The wild cards at the end were 17-22. to 22. Wild cards were Devin Simonson. He, he let me cut his hair. Yeah. Did a good Looks job. Looks ridiculous, yeah. too. Look, did a good job, I think. <laughs> Dominique Thury, Hunter Yoder, Josh Cartwright, and Cade. Luke Neese. Oh, yeah, no, Cade Luke Neese. Cade yeah, those were my wild cards. Yep. And Cartwright got the 20th gate pick. Now, the start was pretty fair, um, yeah. but he had the 20th gate pick. He got in the lead after Freddie crashed. Yep. Uh, Norrin was the guy to, to win. He was yes. my pick. Yep. Freddie crashed. Cartwright takes off with it. Um, and then, you know, we had some chaos with air wheelie contests and everything else. I, I have a bone to pick with you on that. <clears throat> Preston Taylor should have won it. No. Yeah, I get that his I was in the tire manager's was tower. very high, but yep. it, I wasn't. I did not want to base that off of exactly how Chris does it, like his air wheelies. The whole reason he put that on, I wanted to do it off of like who was really in that motorcycle and not just because everyone could do a bone air and just lean forward. Okay. I wanted someone yeah. to be like in the like almost like the seat and like have that thing up. And okay, some of them were were a little bit like that, but Kerr 
he was like sitting on the seat and was like, he yeah, was, he was a okay. little bit up, but like he wasn't just like over the front of the bike holding because anyone well, can t- do. I didn't feel like Taylor was that way. No, Taylor wasn't as gnarly with that part mm-hmm. of it, but yeah. I just when I saw Kurz and, and he just was like in it because like if you're sitting there and like you're that high up yeah. and you're on the seat like with your butt, that is a terrifying feeling. When you do like when you're doing the whole like bar hump thing, like yeah. everyone else yeah, was, yeah. yeah. It's not really that. Yeah, I mean, there, yeah, there, there was there was probably fifty fifty of guys that weren't really doing an air wheelie. Yeah, you know I, they were just bringing the front end up. And yeah. I and I wanted someone that like w- when I think about the feeling of what it would be like to be on the seat in that high up. Yeah, it's probably yeah. super scary for him. And I was like, that to me is sure the best air wheelie. So okay, so you tweeted this, and, and again, I respect your opinion. Yeah. Uh, it's just you, an opinion. Yeah, just you opinion. tweeted that n- no more wild cards yeah. because. As we've seen in this race, the wild cards are taking the money. Yes. Um, so you just think one to twenty-two in the points, and that's it. So, yes, because like, and, and first this, of all, do you this agree? This also shoots me in the, the foot. Let in me the ask future. you this: Do you agree with the way I'm doing it, fifth on back in the LCQs, keeping track yes. of that? Like, I think like, that is the best thing right. because, like, yeah, there's a big pay difference when you don't make the main. So, in my opinion, I think that the alternate or not the the wild cards are cool. Yeah, that it's definitely cool, but. When you add someone of Josh's caliber, he is killing it in the main events right now. I mean, he's got 12th. Yeah, it's a depleted field. I, I get it and all mm-hmm. that. But, like, he's been doing so well, even with a stacked field. So when you put him in a thing that, okay, he's already beating these guys to make it to the main event. Right. And now you're having him race the dudes that aren't making the mains. But It's kind of like. But is he beating Freddie? I mean, yes. He has a few times. I yeah. know, but Freddie. Made it via the points. Yeah, and that, and that's why if Josh made it via the points, it's fair. Nor made it via the points. That's fair. I just think, like, and this me saying this, this shoots me in the foot of anything in the yeah, future. Yeah, because you're like, not getting it. Yeah, right. and, yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's fine. I just like, I'm I make all the mains. Well, I missed two this yeah. year, but I I make the mains. And I think if you're gonna do a race for the privateers and the LCQ challenge, you need to keep it to LCQ. the dudes that are in the. Because if you if you remove the two, the alternate and the wild card, the dude that has been leading the points all year wins. Yeah, that's and I think that that's how it should be. And yeah. The, and at the end of the day, like, did you have any problem with me putting Kate in for John Short? No, because I the, did not. The reason I did that for people who want to know was because I needed someone. John Short let me know on Thursday. Yeah, so super I told late. I told Kate early late. on, like, hey, if anybody drops out, if anybody gets hurt uh, Friday morning in practice, you're in. Yeah. And John Short called me Thursday afternoon and was like, I tried, I can't race it. Yeah. And I needed somebody who was gonna be there on Friday, ready to go, you know, and so Kate yep. was an alternate. So, yeah. yeah. I'm fine with that. And Kate uh, has L C Q points. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I I'm fine with that. I just think I mean, at the end of the day, I'm fine with anything that you do. It's yeah, your race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, just I my opinion. It. I think if you're going to add wild cards, don't add the ones that are, like, absolutely slaying it in the main events and okay. stuff like that. Add, like, put some 250. I saw, I saw a bunch of tweets, like, put some 250 guys well, in I there. Did. that Yoder, are Yoder, Nice. And uh, I think Thurry was you know, a great Thurry, pick because yeah. he's having a rough year. Right. But, like, it needs to be based around – and at the end of the day, you can fill those 22 spots with people from the LCQs every week. They're going to be there. And, yeah. like – you can easily do it, and I think that that's the way it should be. But I also understand it's that you want some chaos, you want some stuff to happen. And Cartwright at twentieth gate pick, there should have been chaos. He should have came from the well, back, but he somehow started great. My comeback to you would be, okay, I get it, you're right, and you were technically you were not in the top twenty before Denver, so you nope. were, you were in the spot that was, you know, when people were talking about Moran's to me, right? Hey, Moran should be in it, Harlan should be in it. I'm like, they're in the top twenty in the yeah. points. And so technically, you were not, and you were one of those guys. My comeback would be though. But like, people also don't know I was an alternate. Yeah, had had yeah, another alternate, or someone right. not been able to do right. it. You I were, was down there with yeah. goggles, and yeah. I was going to race. <laughs> you, you Even were. AMA was like, "We have a transponder for you if someone pulls yeah. out." Yeah, yeah. I told. So I there told was Harv, a possibility. I said, "Harv Starling's another alternate if anything goes yeah. wrong." But my comeback to me would be like, "Dude, I made Brees and Chiz start in the second row, and Cartwright had the twentieth gate pick." Yeah. Like I'm, ha- I'm trying to handicap these guys. Right, and right? I, and, it, yeah. and I fully agree with that. I just, you can fill those spots with other dudes that are trying out there. Yeah, like, yeah. like a Chris Howe. You know, he yeah. he's sitting there and he's yeah, he, he showed up to I a like few Howell. races. He's and a good dude. Yeah. Showed up to a few races and he's not going to make a main event, right. but he could make some money in that. You yeah. know, and like instead of putting, I I love Josh. Yeah, and, and, and no, I'm he's stoked making a lot of money won. this year. Yeah, he, he's yeah, making yeah. good money and like, man. Put Chris there. 
You know, sure. like that's just my yeah, my no, thought is, listen, is give it to uh, someone that Harman, like Harmon hit me up and Howell hit me up yeah. and Politelli hit me up and some good guys that I like hit yeah. me up and then I'm like yeah. See, Politelli would mind, be considered you know? a wild card, right, you know, but right. I just think you could fill those spots with people with 450 races t- this year that yep. will probably have points somewhere. Yeah, and go by that and throw them in. Okay. That's just my opinion. All right, your race, do whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's ask the gentleman on the uh, on the phone of what he thinks. He was there calling the action along with. Starling and of course Fly Racing, flyracing.com. It's Jason Thomas. What's up, What's up JT? Not too much. Um, I, mean, I don't think it's ever going to be perfect. Yeah. No. No. So yep. I would, um, no offense, but Justin doesn't belong in that race. Too good. And Thank you. I would always go for but, the guys that you're, you're not thinking about, the lesser guys. But does Cartwright, does Cartwright belong in that race? Uh, or Cade. Probably not. Or Cade. Probably not. Cade definitely didn't belong in that race. Right, right. No, he didn't. Well, how does and Cartwright... I, he, he's how is, and whatever. whatever. How is Cartwright a probably not, but Cade's a definitely not, but Cartwright's got way more points than him this year? Because Cade's been hurt a lot, and Cade's just a, a way too good of a rider. Like, no. You look at Cade last year, and then he's been hurt this yeah. year. Like I know yep. it hasn't gone to plan, but yeah, he's far too good. I see a good result from Cade this last race, though. I do see it. Well, he was he was good in uh, he was better in, he was, um, he in is, Denver. He's yeah. getting I think better. He, yeah, yeah. His, his injury is uh, yeah. is healing up a little bit. Um, yeah, you're right, JT. There's no perfect way. Um, well, the way that would get no bitching and no complaining would be just the top 22 in the LCQ points all year long, yeah. right? And then if someone's hurt, like A Ray or Winterstrom, you just go 23 and 24, yeah. and you just go yeah. down the list. I, I, yeah, you're not wrong. But you're not wrong. The wild, the wild cards are always going to be subjective, and you're always opening the door to pissing people off. Yep, yep, yep. But uh, I'm not scared of pissing people off. So no, <laughs> I, I know that. And I don't think you did anything wrong this no, year. No, I, I just, yeah, yeah, I just would like to see. Yeah, you know. Well, again, though, like, I'll be honest. Like, I, if you told me that Chiz and Brees in a six minute race were going to just crush those dudes, and from the back row, I would have said no way. I would just, I, I would have been I like, fully agree with you. I would have been like, they'll get like fifth and sixth. Yeah, you know what I mean. And dude, they worked those. Saw guys. them in the first rhythm and, section in like seventh, and I was like, and truthfully, oh, Freddie should have won this weekend, yep. threw it away. But Cartwright would have been on the podium anyways. Yep. And I gave him twentieth gate. And Cade, Cade did the same thing that Brees and Chisholm did, pretty much. Yeah, he came from same way thing. back. Yeah, yep. yeah, he 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 rode great. So, um, and also I should let people know, like, so John Short couldn't get in because he got hurt. So Cade was an alternate. Kate is giving twenty percent of his money to Short. Yeah, I, I made that very happen. Respectful yeah, about I, it. I, I, uh, I said, Kate, if you want in, John deserves some of the money because he's, you know, put himself in this position, and yep. you're getting his spot. And Kate was super cool with it. Yep. Uh, Kozad is giving his money to Winnerstrom, some of his money That's to cool. Winnerstrom. That's really, cool. you know what I mean. So these guys are being cool about it, yep. right? So, um, all of that's good because those guys were supposed to race, and yep. they just, they just didn't. Uh, but yeah, it. I don't know, like. I'll tell you what, though, JT, uh, I don't know if Feld would go for this because, you know, they obviously they're giving us a race and that's pretty cool of them and all that. But I almost think, JT, next year, maybe we do some sort of bracket racing. I agree. Could, could, do you think they, I don't know if they would let us do that. That's a whole other story. But we gotta, we got to mix this thing up, JT. we got to get some chaos. Yeah, there's, I just – I don't know if bracket racing or – there's got to be a rethink here um, because I, com, being completely honest, that race was super boring. It yeah. really was. <laughs> you and, know, last uh, year's was too. But everyone, they just know their spot and they yeah. stay there because they're making money. Yeah, but yeah. That goes against the whole spirit of it. Like it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be just nuts. Like that's what we're going yeah. for. Yeah. I, first and foremost, it's supposed to help these guys, and it's a way for the fans to give back, and they're also getting a chance to win a dirt bike. But it's also supposed to be wildly entertaining, and anything goes. And so I don't know. Like we need to brainstorm some ideas. So- do we? Uh, what if we just paid top how ten? How can we up the ante here? Just top ten only. Well, there you got some good racing, but I. I but then I, you don't reward those guys. But I also think it, it's tough when you do it the day before a race, mm-hmm. and people are thinking about the race the next day. Um, but I think while I was sitting here thinking about it, I know what we need to do. This race needs to go to Date City. <laughs> okay, all right. You're so, gonna have some chaos then. So everybody goes to Date Move City. Move it straight to Date City, <laughs> and there you go. Well, JT can vouch for Date City chaos. Uh, what if cool. we? What if we set it up similar to Pulpamex fantasy scoring and we handicapped everybody and then that's how your prize money is paid out based off of your total points oh. via handicap? Marks? Dude, dude, I like that. 
Marks Hardy asked Marks for a, a, a fantasy pick. game of this race, and he flatly shot me down. Nope. No, no. we don't need him. No, no, I know. You don't need I the game. You just no, use I know. the handicap. Yeah. yeah, but JT, then you're trying to figure out the winner right there. Uh, yeah. My dad says I mean, do it's, three six-minute motos. Yeah. It's basic math. Like, it's, Marks already has the code to do that math for us. Like, yeah, we can still run it hard. as is. True, true. Yeah, but – I think explaining that to fans and, and, and everybody else, but but uh, yeah, your dad six three six minutes. Maybe do it like a triple how, crown? how um, right. like World Supercross was last right. year. Come in for X amount of minutes, right. go again. X amount yeah, of minutes, that, go that would, again. That would give us some chaos, you know. Do you like the old uh, Paris Supercross in yeah. California? Yeah, it was like a halftime. Or or again, like what I was thinking was, what if you just? Uh, but that's it would take too long. But what if you just did? Uh, a one lap, twenty-two man race, and you do one lap, and then the the last five go out, and then the next five. Okay, how about that? You have oh, another race, and the last Geneva five go out again. Yes, yeah. Percy, Geneva. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I have an idea. This, okay, just hear me out. All right. Hear me out. You do the halftime thing, like the old Paris Supercross. Okay. And you have, you split the purse money in half. The first race gets the first half, and that's based on your result. Mm -hmm. Then you invert the field, so whoever was last starts first mm -hmm. and then you pay the second yeah. half of the purse so so if you're if you're not that fast is it you're gonna start first bro like is, is it based on overall or no no, at, no it's not based on overall no, you split yeah, yeah, it, right? yeah. Split it. Got if it. you're really fast if you're car right you don't get screwed right you you got half the purse money for winning that first race congratulations you're awesome yep but now for the second half you're gonna start last and whoever that was in the very back, Joy and Cross or whoever. Mm -hmm. Now you're starting first. Yeah. So I single, know you're not single the file it, or are you talking about gate yep. pick? Yep. Yeah. No gate. Single no file. single file. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Single file. And then it, that's where you get the chaos. Dude. That, These guys I like that. That's, that's like good. Second race. I, I like that. And that is really I, good. I might just take credit for that next year. You know. Um, <laughs> um, and you know what? You know what I told Mui uh, and Prater on the initial call last year, I believe. I said to them, "Hey." If you want to run this race as an experiment for future formats, like we can do whatever you – if you guys Try come up some with something stuff, yeah. and you want to watch it in action on a Supercross track on a Friday afternoon, I'll do it. You know what I mean? I, 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 they didn't do anything with it, obviously, but – but that's exactly what I said. Like if you guys have an idea, yeah. try try it out with this race, you know, because – but, yeah, JT, the more, the more I think about it. Because then, yeah, look, it's – we're going to give away the total here, not right now on the show, but we're going to do the draw here right away, and I'm going to give away the total. It's a lot of fucking money. And so, says yeah. that sounds sick. So if you get half the money, just as a normal race gate drop, you won't, you will not be mad in a sense. You will be happy, you know. Um, no, at least you have a yeah. chance to make some money, and then the second half you can still win. Yeah, I like, guess not like yeah. you just have to. You're just gonna have to get nuts. And that's <laughs> where I think the guys, like the guys that aren't as good, right? Because there's some of these guys are going in the race going, I can't beat Cartwright. I yeah. can't beat Cade. So no, yeah. guess what? You're gonna start third. In this second round, yeah, and you're gonna you better race the race of your we, life. We had like Nagy, we had Nagy and Preston Taylor just trying to do the slow lap and get the money for the oh slow my God, lap. Poor so, Preston's bike. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. I'd have to run that by Feld and everything, but I like that certainly. Yeah, I just I don't want anybody hurt, obviously, but I want yeah better racing. I want more like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We just need excitement, right? We need it to not be predictable, and it's a great concept. It's amazing for everybody involved. That is. You know, I have nothing to do with this, but I am so happy it's happening. Yep. Yeah. We just need to make it more interesting and, and up the ante a little bit. Great for Feld to let me have it. Thank you again to Mewy, yep. Feld, Sean Brandon, everybody who made it possible. Prater, uh, I really can't believe that we get I get a fucking race. How many people do you think that come in on Saturday to watch the race knew that race happened the day before? Not very many. We need to somehow get it to those well, people. Well, I ran it by Mewy at Feld about Saturday. I've said that to him before, and... I said, w w why couldn't you just do 15 minutes of track maintenance after the last practice? Yeah, like drop a triple crown. Yeah. And How an LCQ goes. Drop our gate. You're yeah. right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's going to, you know, put on race day live. And then the verb, I don't got to hire the verb guys and everything else, you know. So um, imagine how big the purse gets. Oh, my God. Area. It'd be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I, I, I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, also, JT, another thing I want to bring up on a little bit more of a, of a serious note. Well, actually, you know what? We have. Um, there's some phone calls about this. Uh, Trevor's got an idea on payout. Let's 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 get to Trevor here. Trevor, what uh, what's your idea for payout? So I was actually wondering about when you buy your ticket through the Yamaha. You know, when you put your twenty bucks in for your ticket. Uh -huh. What if you could pick what place that went to? Like, you know, you could pick 
tenth yeah, or eleventh. I don't know because then, and then yeah, I, I well, yeah, dude, that would cause chaos. Climb up, often you see there's thirty thousand dollars in eleventh. Yeah, you know, and it just just something to change it up, and then it's not so random. Yeah, I guess that would requ- that would require marks to write some code and figure all that shit out. But uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's not a bad idea. But what if like fourteenth gets no money, and then you're like, hey, sorry man, you got fourteenth, you get zero. Like the idea is to pay everybody, right? So. Yeah, I don't life know. sucks, though. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Cole is on, too. Cole, it says here that you want to give kudos to Mr. Side. Yeah, um, I had the pleasure of riding with Mr. Side this past weekend at a vet race, and uh, I reached out to him on a Friday. <laughs> I reached out to him on a Friday and said, hey, I'm interested in racing. He's like, yeah, come on out and um, he, I pitted right next to him, and he was—he was a real good guy. Oh my God! So you, he, dark, dark, dark. <laughs> dark. So, so, like, he just walked you through racing or something, or like, what happened? Like, no, I mean, I haven't raced. I haven't done a gate drop in like 17 years. Oh Jesus! Um, oh. And I signed up for the 35 plus plus class, and the I initially signed up for the C class, and I he kind of talked me into doing the B class, and I had a great time. Um, okay. Well, Mr. Side, he went, he went, a man yeah, of the people. Even, he even sold me a pair of Lucids, and I love the, love the goggles. So. Wow, they are the goggle of champions for sure. Uh, thanks, yep. man. Props to Mr. Side. I've always yep, been there for him. Dark. <laughs> thanks. Thank right. Cole. Thank you. Look at Mr. Side gets props. Dark. Uh, all right. Let, let's talk about this, JT, before we let you go a little bit. Uh, we talked about the Tomac. You can listen to the review show on this. But P. Fox put up an Instagram about, you know, Making our sport safe, safer, safety or safer, yep. because we only have two out of the fifteen factory riders that are still going to make all the main events. And mm-hmm. you know, we kind of brought it up with Kenny a little bit, and I was like saying, you know, I, I in my opinion, front and back chest protection should be mandatory, like MXGP. Uh, I know we live in a litigious society, and that might cause another problem for the AMA if they did do that. I don't know, but um, I don't know, man. Like I one look one of the th- I wrote on there, I definitely think what we could think about is you know f1 drag drag racing they've all limited the horsepower that you can make with these machines they Mm -hmm. really have and in our sport and i don't know about your street bike racing jt you can i think you can speak more about that that you love but like um why why can't we limit our bikes our bikes are we now have the ability to tune the bikes for a specific corner on the track we can look at the track map uh, and tell the tell the bike to put this much uh, fuel at this percent of throttle opening on this left turn of this off camber. We can do all that. The, the we have no hesitation, no bogging. You know, we have the ultimate tune machines, the 450s. They're basically faster than CR 500s were. And like to me, there's these bikes are flawless. They they don't they can make any mistake they want and still jump things. The speeds are higher. What if we try to do something with the bikes, JT? Like, I, I don't, I don't think the AMA is capable of this right now, but they are trying. They're doing things this year that's impressive, but I don't think they're there yet. But maybe we should start looking at machines. Okay, I know it's pretty bad right this second, right? So I, I don't want to be victim of the moment, right? But is it statistically like I would love for someone that's that's great with graphs and has all the data? Maybe Marks. Yeah, I know he has lots of free time to go back over the years and find who was hurt, how many people were, you know, started the yeah. first round that are yeah. out and yeah. show us a graph. Cause I don't know. I don't know that it's been worse. Like, I, I don't yeah. know. I remember I, so many years at the end of the season, I was like, Oh my God, there's no one left. This is no, amazing. Like, we it, talked it, about it at our live so, show. Yeah. 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 So I don't know that it's, it feels bad right now. Right. I get it. I understand mm-hmm. the sentiment right now, but I don't know, like historically, if it's really has been any worse since the bikes have gotten faster. I don't know. Maybe it has. I just, it, no, I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not convinced of that. Well, Barsha's crash wasn't power induced. Tomac's injury wasn't power no. induced. No, 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 no. I, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that so much as this uh, uh, 2023, we need to do something. Right. I'm just saying like in general, four strokes are going faster. They're they're they You're able to be, you're able to make way more mistakes and still go fast. You're, you're, there's no doubt the speeds are higher. There's more horsepower, more torque, all of that. It is easier to go fast. I'll yeah, and so to me, like again, I'm not even saying like uh, just in general. Like, should we start looking at bikes? Like, like, like 
uh, drag racing does and like NASCAR does and like Formula One does, where they don't just let these teams run wild with make them as fast as you can. Like, there's, there's limits, right? Um, do we start looking at that to just try something and see how it works? I don't know. I, it's, <laughs> okay. uh, it, it, it's a really yeah. delicate subject. I, I don't, I'm not technically knowledgeable enough to know how that all works out. Um, it just seems very problematic to get everybody on the same page. Well, it's not. I'm all for I mean, keeping people safe. Yeah. But I, like, how, are you going to use uh, like AMA supplied ECUs? Dude, or... you could you could literally just do a restrictor plate on these things, like like just like a NASCAR thing. You you put it on the throttle body. I mean, we can't even keep people from using big boards. I know, and I know. Can... I, and I said right. I said earlier, the AMA has a long way to go. Yes. I wish all the bikes were the the same speed as they are at altitude. Like right. the bike this weekend was so much slower, but yeah. it was so nice to ride it because yeah. it wasn't you couldn't jump yep. anything gnarly. We had one quad, but a step on step off quad thing that we were doing was not big. It was just so enjoyable to not have to jump something huge because you literally just didn't have the power to do it. I'm just saying, like, just in general, not not because of 2023, because I'm with JT. Injuries are going to happen. They happen in two stroke days. I remember that I was around. So injuries are going to happen. But at this point, there's no doubt, there's no debate that the bikes are faster and easier to ride, and the technology of these teams is amazing. And do we need to start looking at that in attempt to maybe keep more people on the track? It could be chassis stuff too, with how good these bikes work, and these guys are turning so fast, and then when they come, well, they turn that fast, they can quad things out of corners. I don't know what you would do to a chassis. No, to, uh, I, I, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, it's where I get to the point where I'm like, what can you do? I you don't can, know. You can baffle a muffler. You can put a EC. You, well. An ECU, again, like JT said, I don't think we want the AMA giving everybody an, AC, an ECU because if something happens le- legally-wise. Yeah, uh, they can't do that. Right. They're like, hey, Starling, uh, the ECU we gave you just cut out and you broke your neck. Uh, yeah. Guess who you're going after. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you, you can't, 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 you can't do, do that. But mm-hmm. what if you do a simple, you know, throttle body? Here's the size of the throttle body. Here's the hole that yeah. you have to, to, to put fuel through. You need fuel. You need air. You need spark. Here's the size of, of the fuel. So – can we just make the tracks less gnarly? I don't think we can. I mean, this past week in the track was pretty pretty safe. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, Nashville claimed guys were saying how tough that was it was. Dirt. That yeah. was a dirt thing. That right. wasn't anything right. to do with like what how the track was yeah. built. I don't know. It, it's it's not good for anybody when two factory riders out of 15 are standing at the end of the year. That's no. not good for Fly. That's not good for rental, you know what I mean? That's it's not, not even. It's really it's not, not good even good for, for us either. Like, yeah, like well, it's we're great for good, you. No, it's but, great for no, Justin Starling. It, but it's we we get those results and like we're happy about them. And, but we also understand the yeah. result. But sponsors understand them too. Yeah. So it really doesn't help us. Yeah, it's yeah. better when we get a result when they're there. Right. Ultimately, this is so prime JT time too when he races. <laughs> this is this is. So this it, is <laughs> yeah, it, we we can't look at it like oh yeah we're gonna get so much more no, money no, it, yeah. or like sponsors. Yeah. Or, no, they understand and they know it, and just yep. like we know it, it. And I don't really get too excited about a tenth because of all the guys out. It's like cool, yep, yep. got it, sweet. But like, right. Harlan got ninth too. You know, yeah. like it yeah. wasn't like it was just factory dudes all the way to me. I don't know. I guess uh, I guess I like to see something done, something Wouldn't tried. We all? You know, yeah. but yeah, but like JT like said, I'm all, yeah. I'm all for. I'm all for Pete's post, but yep. it doesn't do any good unless you have some ideas for a solution. That's all. Well, it's gave you some great ideas, I thought. No, I'm saying for Pete. Like, oh, okay. Pete well, contributed yeah. so much to this sport. He's a he's yeah. an icon. But like when you make a post like that, like you you have to be able to come up with some solutions too, because that, I can point out lots of problems, but yeah. I don't know how to help. Well, I, I I'm glad that I came up with a great idea for next year's starting. At the LCQ race. You did. Nailed it. Thank you. That's um, good. Uh, we had Kenny on earlier, JT, about the World Supercross. And yep. look, look, uh, let's be honest. I asked him what attracted him to World Supercross as opposed to Nationals. And I didn't say this, but we all know that probably United the United States dollars. <laughs> the, the bag of money probably <laughs> helped a lot. But, uh, uh, but, you know, he made some good points. He gets to race in Germany in front of his fans, and he, gets the, and he thinks the outdoors, and, he's, and this is true. I believe, this, I believe he's telling the truth. Outdoors with his condition and his wearing down and his viruses. And, He's going to add years of racing to his life. You know, outdoors his... will make it harder yep. for him to, 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 to beat that, right? So that, I believe that 100%. We've seen that, Kenny, in the past. But, but what do you think of that decision, JT? Uh, I mean, I, I 100% think it was a financial decision. And I don't blame him for that. Um, okay. you know, he, he could push back and say, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And that's fine. I, I am, I'm okay with that. 
but I would say this, cut the number in half, cut it. They, say they're going to pay him 20% of his offer over three years. Do you still do it? Because if you say no, then all the other stuff is not necessarily the reason you're going then. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Like, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm going in saying I would do the same thing for that amount of money. I would. No questions asked. But I think in that scenario, if I'm him, I just own it and say, yes, this is life changing amounts of money. And financially, this is the right decision to make. And then, like, who can push back on that? Like, I would do it. I, I would 100% do the same thing he's doing. I just, I chuckle to myself when, then you start trying to qualify it in other ways, right? And he's also a spokesman for the series, so that's the picture you need to paint. But I'm too much of a realist and I think too cynical to think that it's anything other than just it's too much money to turn down. Uh, I'm not totally with you, but I'm mostly with you. I think there's 50-50 there, on it. I think there is a point that he makes about staying healthier. But he was gonna race he was gonna race motocross until they made this offer. That's why I laughed. Like he was yeah. All of his negotiations in the offseason, he's racing in pro motocross. This yeah. is what's happening. Right. And then, oh, there's this huge offer that I don't, you know, it's not my business to share numbers that I've heard. And then he's now he's going to go. So, like, that's where I'm like, well, yeah, like, obviously you tipped your hand then, you know. Yeah. The money, uh, the money matters. Sure. Uh, X Brown Goggle Tear Off segment. Let's do this. The X Brand Tear Off segment. 15 second rapid fire QA. X Brand Goggles, the choice of champions everywhere. Freddie Norn, the would be winner of the LCQ Challenge. Oh, Freddie. Uh, Roto got a great video of it. It just, is good. Yeah, just drifting left. He crashed on that, vi- on that same jump in the heat race. Too. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, my Him God. and Mark A on Freddy. that one jump. Uh, X Brand Goggles, Pulp Show 23 is the code to say with those. The Lucid Goggles, as you heard that caller earlier, uh, simply phenomenal. And, uh, you know, the A-Star goggle, the factory ride goggle, they look a lot like that X-Brown Lucid. Did they? Oh, yeah. I haven't looked at them. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, easy quick change lens, great foam. Uh, X-Brown goggles, GNCC winners as well, which there's nothing tougher than to, to win in GNCC. So thanks to X-Brown. We're going to find out. Yeah. We're going to try to get you a ride. Yep. We'll do it. We'll make it happen. We're going. Uh, these questions are submitted by Corey Moser. Are you familiar? Never heard of him. Yep. And uh, 30 seconds on the clock. Rip it fire. Let's do this, Marks. Steven. Yep. Which rider was the most appreciative of the privateer LCQ race? Ooh. Well, Cartwright thanked me a lot. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> <laughs> but they all were. Honestly, everyone was cool, man. Um, they were really – I can't think of one guy. Like, Yeah, they were all thankful. I think they all thanked me at one point or another or sent me an email or a text or whatever. So. Nick Schmidt? No, that was last year. Yeah, Nick. I know. Nick I, know. Was, I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, Nick wasn't – Did he cash it yet? Yeah, he did cash it. He <laughs> – I mean, look, he said thanks. That, yeah. let's, let's just leave it at that. He did say Where thank you. Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know everyone was pretty cool. And also, like, Thule at Riders Meeting on, on Saturday said thanks to Steve Mathis and people applauded. I don't know, expect that. Thule is a good guy. What ab- Thule is a great guy. What about the uh, what about the Pulp MX on the stadium? That was pretty cool. It was cool. Yeah. You made it. The graphics. You've made it. I know, right? Uh, so, yeah, no, they were all good, honestly. But I, I guess Cartwright stands out. Yeah. But because he was on the podium and he, I saw, you know, I mean, I saw Cartwright a lot. So, yeah. You're going to get a, probably a text and a call tonight, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, JT, did Weed redeem himself with Lane this weekend after some struggles with flags and starts in the past? Yes and no. Thank God he didn't have to work on the bike. So, he was just kind of like a prop more than anything. Like, he needed to provide food which they had a core and that's real. like the rest of it was just get out of the way. Well, so I don't know if that's redemption, but at least he didn't ruin anything. How about that? <laughs> he did talk to Tony Alessi and Sexton gave him line advice, lane line advice. So he didn't even like do that. Like he passed his duties off to TA and Sexton. Yeah. yeah. Just, so, literally the best thing he could do is just stay out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Starling. Besides Steve, who has done the most for privateers? Ooh. Uh, I don't really know. Um, Let's go Teddy Parks. I was going to go Ted Parks. Was that was, yeah. was going to be my, yeah. my one thing. I don't know of anyone that's like done what you've done, but yeah. that's been behind privateers, Ted Parks. 16 seconds. Oh. Steve, what's the most stressful part about coordinating the LCQ race? 
Mm, you know what? Harv Whipple, who does the future stuff for the AMA, was assigned to me this year, and he made my life way easy. Thanks, Harv. As far as starting new practices and the timing and the score, he was great. So I guess the most we the hardest part is getting everybody's uh, social insurance numbers and addresses for checks. You know, they all they all got to respond to me before I pay what pay, before I pay any of them um, because they're going to get taxed on it, obviously. And then, uh, yeah, just dealing with the questions, I guess, you know, like everyone like you send out a schedule and then you a few days later you get texts about, hey, what time is and you're just like, well, I just sent the schedule out. But nah. It was way better this year. We're with, back with not the smartest. Yeah. JT, who will be Sexton's biggest competition this summer? Chad. Yeah, that's 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 a poor question. Like, was he in a hurry? Was Moser in a hurry? Nobody Probably. knows. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, the obvious answer is Jet. Jet Lawrence. His team. I mean, Ferrandez could be good, but it's Jet. I mean, to jump in there, but it's just it's Jet. How can you not? No, no, man. Moser's not always. <laughs> Who is he? Nobody knows. J Star, uh, which privateer has the biggest voice or most pull in the industry? Um, I don't. Ooh, I don't know. Carnot's been pretty pretty good at things this year, but I don't know. I don't. To be honest with you, I don't really pay attention to what others are doing. But I guess if you're going to say most pull, maybe and biggest voice is probably Morans. You notice Kenny didn't want to go there with the lapping thing. Yeah, that's why I didn't say anything. That's right. It's not my deal. <laughs> I've heard more guys. Oh, I've heard it too. Complain about Moran's and this he's year. He's my buddy. He's like no, one he's of a my good best dude. He's a good guy. But I've heard it he, multiple times from like he's riders got this, that we're close to, and I'm like, he's yeah. got this whole shot bonus that's been a little bit of a disaster for him. I think everything was fine until Phoenix Moto Three. Okay, yeah. that's where oh it was God, like. Sexton was so pissed. At yeah, him. It, and, oh, we, yeah. and we yeah. all ride together. We were all training at the same place in Florida, like. Yeah, I'm yeah. out. No, I, no, I just, yeah. Waffle. Yep. yep, okay. All right. Steven, what will be the key to making the World Supercross Series a success? Well, I was actually talking about this on a group text today. Like, I think they're going to sell a lot of tickets because the fans all over the world love Supercross, and I've seen plenty of Bercy and Geneva lineups that weren't great that mm -hmm. sold out still mm -hmm. because Supercross is Supercross. Starling, you know this stuff yep. too. So – Ticket-wise, they're great, but you can't survive on ticket sales. Mm -mm. You need corporate sponsorship, and I don't see WPS and Parts Unlimited, Monster, et cetera, getting on board with this series yet. And I don't know if I see them ever getting on board with this series. So for the, the key to these guys, Adam and everybody else, is they got to get like, like Siemens and Xerox and these, these worldwide global companies that you see in soccer matches and in, in – in, uh, you know, in, in rally races and things like that on board with their series as a sponsor to make, to make it successful. Do you think they don't because of the riders that they're getting? Um, I don't know if, I don't think those, those outside the industry companies don't really know. Right. I think you just, they don't put together a good enough package right now right. or whatever, but do you know what I mean? Cause I, they, they, I don't see them getting an energy drink, an American energy drink no. or an American distributor or whatever as a title yeah. or anything. So, JT, what is your opinion on this Hurlings win stats drama? I don't, I don't really agree with Steve so much. Um, I don't love Jeffrey's comment there. Like, I thank you, thank you for that. Are, I just thank you. Yep. Yeah, I, like you don't need to be that guy. Like to to not thank KTM for how many years of support? I mean, like a decade. 15 years, I don't even know how many years of just unequivocally having his back um, to me is, is crazy. Like, that's just wildly inappropriate. Um, but I also think he's he's amazing. Like, he's going to – if he stays healthy, he can break all, all the records that there are. Um, I don't know that he can stay healthy. But, yeah, that comment to me was just – I just rolled my eyes. And, I, and I'm a huge Jeffrey fan, and I just rolled my eyes. What was the comment? I didn't, I didn't hear this. Uh, his quote was, "Hold on, I can't find it here." Was it in like an interview, like a live? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, he, he basically just said, "I want to thank my." They said, "Who do you want to thank?" He said, "I just want to thank myself because I'm the one that did it." He goes, "I want to thank. I, I want to thank myself. I'm the one who did it, so I want to thank myself." Okay. Mm. Yeah. Odd. 
That's the old Jeffrey coming out. Yeah, like not Red Bull KTM. It's just unnecessary, man. It's yeah, like that's that's a little. You're not even leading the points right now, and you're saying that. I don't know. Okay. I I I mean I don't get his post about a world record. It's actually not a world record. It's just an MXGP record for all time wins. I I don't know. I just well, you know, they call it the World Championship, right? Yeah, world but a world record means you know you know like. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get all the – you know, we don't – again, we don't run around and say Tomac has X number of wins counting as 250 motocross wins. No one does that here. We yeah. don't do that. I don't know why we don't. I just think we are – we all understand that 250 class is a class that you just sort of step into and try to get out. It's like but we, my... we, count, we count Ricky's 125 motocross titles. Yeah, you count the titles, right? Uh, but you don't ever say – when you talk about Ricky's career, you don't say, generally speaking, you don't – title all of his wins i think they say 150 wins though yeah when you know yeah like you're, you're never we're never yeah. going to agree on no that. Um, it's just, it's, but i yeah I, I will give you the comment was just yeah it, for lack of a better term it was just dumb like right. come on man like be better than that i even sent it to a couple of super hurling super fans on my text today and they agreed too yeah so. i don't know like i got a fifth in supercross in the mud and i don't really count it yeah. I, 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 yeah. Cool. Like think about think about the um, the amount of time, effort, and just overall resources, however you want to allocate that that KTM has put into Jeffrey Hurlings over the course of his life. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just in immeasurable, and that gets, it's not that hard. Just say yeah. I have so many people that have gotten me here, and thank you to everyone that I could accomplish this. That's it. And then everybody thinks you're a hero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Last one, uh, Starling. Do you think Tomac comes back or calls it a career? He comes back. Yeah, Starling. It's on the record. Beginning of the show. I do I do think he does. I don't know at what level or, or where he's going to do it, but I, I do think he comes back. He could right. go race World Supercross and make like $50 million that's, or something. That's out of, kind out of, of what I'm saying. Like I, I could see I that I mean, his happening. recovery might happen right around midsummer yeah. next year. I right? wonder. Yeah. I don't quite understand the, the economics of World Supercross. It's like Monopoly money. Like, I, I truly don't know what the plan is here. I mean, I'm being, I'm being facetious with $50 million, but, like, where's the, what, what is the business plan here? Like, I know I'm getting off topic, but. Yeah, you are. How are they ever going to make any money? <laughs> I, I think they. That's not, for me to, that's not for me to decide. Like, they, I'm, yeah. it, it doesn't matter if I understand it, but I'm like, I weigh at night sometimes. I don't, I don't have much of a life outside of work and these things I do. We know. But sometimes I'll just be weighing at night going, how are they ever going to make money? Like, is there something I'm missing? Is this like a, some sort of like charitable enterprise? <laughs> um, is someone like dying and they're just like, just spend five no, million? It's, it's, I don't no, care how you it's, do it. it's Brewster's Millions. It's the plot of Brewster's Millions. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, it's Richard Pryor having to spend – a million dollars in two weeks or whatever, <laughs> whatever the Bruce yep. millions was. So I just don't get it. Remember, he hires the Yankees to play his softball team. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's Bruce Because like you and I both, right? We've been around this sport most of our lives, and no, we don't get to see the books on what Supercross does, or, but we have a, a decent grasp on the economics and how it all works. And I look at the numbers. I'm just like, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Like I look at who they're. They don't even. To your point, they don't even have sponsorship levels to offset a lot of these costs, right? And I know they're they're hoping and banking on getting government appropriations for some of these rounds, yeah. similar to what MXGP does. Mm-hmm. But I I just don't see how this is ever possible to get any sort of return. And I know from from the outside looking in, when you when Tony Cochran's gone and uh, Sanderson's gone, like to me, when I look at it, I'm like, well, there's a reason. You know, there's a reason that those guys are not there anymore. And I just wonder if it's the spending and they're looking at like, how in the hell are we going to make money at this? You told us we, there was going to be money at right. the end of this road. Ralph, Ralph's so, flying first class to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere you turn. Uh, everywhere you turn. It's just wild spending. All right, JT. Uh, thanks for calling in. Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Uh, big, exciting things coming from those guys down the road here a little bit. And uh, the Formula Helmet, of it's course. Our, uh, it's our 25th anniversary this weekend. Oh. You'll see, oh, you will see 25th anniversary stuff everywhere from Fly Racing this weekend. Oh, nice. 25 years. Congrats to everybody there at Fly. Yep. It's awesome. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks. That's, uh, that's Jason Thomas. All right, Marks. Uh, it's time for our drawing of our uh, LCQ raffle um, coming up here. 
Uh, Jed wants no, not Jed. No, 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 no. Uh, Jimmy's on three. Let's go to Jimmy. Jimmy, what's up, man? Jimmy. Jimmy. What's up, Jimmy? Oh my God, I'm actually on. This is awesome. Hey, I just got a quick question. I I know you guys were just hitting on this. Mm-hmm. Um, with the Pro Motocross Championship, I'm basically wondering what you guys think it's going to take to kind of put that on the map. I don't know how far gone it really is. There's a lot of guys out already. So if some of the guys that are still in are going over to the World Supercross, what is it going to take to bring them back over here? You know, is it just for the money? What else is in it for these guys? You know, I've seen motocross in person. I've seen supercross in person. I personally like motocross better. But, in person, okay. you can get closer. Yeah, but, but uh, you, you know, right sitting across from me is a rider who has not done motocross maybe ever. Starling? I, uh, I, I, I wonder the same thing on how you get it back as big as it used to be. You don't. I don't think it's possible. No. I, I just don't think. Not not with the way that this sport is and, and sponsors are these days. I think it's – you get so much more return out of Supercross, and mm-hmm. I just don't – see it ever changing i don't yeah I don't, I, I don't i don't get it look it's the pay isn't great it's better now than it was but it's not great there's no season ending money from the promoters it's really hard work it's a lot of money and time on your machine right parts and, and wear and tear for 230s it's traveling all across america back and forth with not a real super sensible Outdoor schedule, like it. There's a lot of things that you're like, yeah, man. That's that's really tough, right? Yeah. Um, it is. I love it too. It is what it is. I think there's no doubt that riders in their prime, the Lawrences and Sexton, and these guys, they'll all continue to do motocross. Mm-hmm. The factories will sign them up. That'll be part of their deals. But as you get older, you'll be able to to relax a little bit and go to World Supercross. Yeah. You know. Do you think it comes down to? Um some of the fans, a bigger portion of the fans not being um, true advocates of the sport, people that just go to a stadium to watch Supercross for the first time versus a smaller amount of people that follow it religiously and go see a motocross race because they know how gnarly it is? No, I don't think so. I think the OEMs know that the people that go to Unadilla and Bud's Creek are the ones that buy dirt bikes and chain lube and air filters right, and gear, right. and they'll right. always be there to support those people, you know? So, so that's why you don't see the big, big, mm-hmm. big sponsors for those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, But but it, there's no doubt it's it's not going to be as appealing to these guys, including the guy sitting across from me, as Supercross, you know? Yeah. Cool. So. I appreciate it, guys. Right. Thank Never you, been on a podcast before. That was the first. All right, there you go. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, uh, the LCQ Challenge raffle. It is time. Starling, you bought a ticket. Three. Three tickets. Yes. Comes up Starling. We got some questions to <laughs> to to, uh, to answer <laughs> to our audience. Uh, Marks, you have the randomizer going on. Yes. And let me pull up the the thing about the thing, uh, the prizes here, uh, so I can do it. We're going to raffle them all off, um, including the motorcycle first and then the other prizes right after that. And we thank everybody. So a couple weeks ago, I was stressing – at how low the payout was. Yep. And we had a hundred. What, how much did we have last year, Marks, without the props? Sorry. 120. 120. 124. 126? 126 last year, which was blew me away. We have all the prop bets, and that was yep. 15K. We had 126,000 last year. That was so amazing. I couldn't believe it. Um, it's just great, right? And we gave that all the way to the privateers, and it was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty damn amazing. Um, a few weeks ago, the money was so low. I was stressing about it um, and didn't really know how we were going to even come close to what we did. I didn't think you would. And, folks, we did it. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's just fucking amazing. The, the, the Cartwright right now is like, the, harp, yeah. the hype of the race, the the Racer X guys, uh, Swap Moto guys, Verb guys, putting it out there. Uh, I went on Supercross Live, Race Day Live in Nashville that helped out a ton to bring awareness so that the Feld guys helped. We, 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 it, again, I just, Marks, I must have texted you three or four times sweating about, uh, sweating the, um, uh, uh month, the number. Yeah, you were yeah. stressing. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we should know better. I just yeah. wanted to get it close. I didn't, I don't care about breaking it, but I just want to get it close. Well, we did 126 last year. 
We did 147000 this year. $147,000 to give away these privateers. We need a round of applause to all the fans. Uh, it's Come absolutely on. amazing. Amazing. It, it's, it's, oh, I, I did a Vital MX interview with Mr. Side. I can't, can't, can't forget about that. And, and Derek. And honestly, it's, it's amazing. And we had another 15000 in prop bets. And so just to be up front with everybody, uh, we, had some, we got to pay the square fees. And then we actually had $147,064. We're going to keep the $64 for admin fees. We're going to make it $147,000 straight across. I think everyone's across. okay with that. Yeah. Marks, I'm going to give you that $64. Hell yeah. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> Big payday. So yeah. what does this make Cartwright's thing? What is this? Um, I believe it was twenty nine. Twenty nine thousand for Cartwright. Right God. Here. Yeah. That's uh, two main. That's yeah. over two main events. Yeah. Twenty nine thousand four hundred was his purse. Yeah. And then uh, thirty thousand four hundred with his prop. What's Cade get? Cade gets eighteen thousand one hundred and twenty dollars total, and that's with his uh, cut out to short. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's just his. What he's taking. That's what right. he takes after paying short. Yeah. 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 That's just that's Same. awesome, man. Uh, thank you everybody for that. That's that's just great. One hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. I had to give a little bit of money to Verb to cover their expenses for the live stream. They uh, they did not make any profit on it, but I had to pay for flights and hotels and camera guys and everything else because I really thought it was important to stream this thing. And I think it was and, good. And I think that so I, I'm I'm glad to take some of the money out of that to to pay the expenses to the Verb guys uh, uh, to put this thing on for the fans because the fans are the way we're going to get this much money, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, really 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 awesome to uh, to have that much money. It's just amazing. My people, fiance thank is you. pissed at you, by the way. She's, she's even more, she's, she's, she's even listening to this and watching right, it, right. and she's like, wow. Yeah. Well, maybe you should lay up next year. I actually just mentioned that to her. Grab a bunch maybe of Maybe I fifths. should start laying it up a little bit. Right. And then once I know I'm in, go for it. Oh, it's all you, you just, you just got to get in the Nick Schmidt yeah. this thing. Schmidt was 100% yeah. laying oh, up last absolutely. year. Yeah, absolutely. He told me it was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you, everybody, for that. And uh, $147,000. Jesus. The one year Crazy. that I do it, it's going to be like 50. I don't know. I, it wouldn't be, but like that, I'm that telling would be you, my I'll, luck. I'll be, I'll be honest. It was. Nicholas it was high. like thirty grand, like two weeks ago. Yeah, maybe, maybe more, you maybe can't three weeks doubt ago. This industry and I and was like, fans, dude, the real ones. I remember telling the guys on the group text. I think I said, I hope we get eighty. Yeah, I said, I, th- I, I, th- th- I didn't think it'd get over eighty. When I'm you like, told me it was at thirty, right. I was like, yeah, there, it's, it's going to be a low year. Like I'm cool not being in it. And now it's like, damn. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Uh, so thank you everybody, and thank you to Yamaha and Fly and FXR and all these people that we're going to mention. For prizes, uh, it's a really great set of great set of prizes, and so all right, should we do this, Marks? Let's, let's give, give this a, away. Let's give a bike away. Let's give a dirt bike away, Starling. You're going to be in charge of telling <sighs> Marks when to when to stop. So uh, yeah, so Starling, when I push start, it'll shuffle everything, and then when you see the red button, anytime after you see that red button, you can tell me to stop at any point. Got it. And I will pick the winner. So and Marks, do you want me to name. write down the four, or you you want me to say that? Uh, you, yeah, if you want to write down the four on that one, and okay. then uh, just say them out loud. The last four of, of each raffle ticket will do. All right. Thanks for your help with this, Marks, by the way. And yes, Swizzcore was great for this, too. Swizz was putting in overtime, making graphics for the Verb stuff and all that. I got to ride so, one of those new bikes, too. Yeah, so whoever wins this thing is going to be stoked. That's a year. great bike. Yeah, I tweeted it. It's bike of the year. Bike of the year. Uh, all right, Starling. So you're responsible for when we're stopping this I think for this more bike. more nervous right now than, like, an LCQ. What if, what if it's oh. Cade? Oh what if it's Cade? What if it's you? You better race that thing, then. <laughs> I might just take that thing straight to Salt Lake. Marks, do, do we video the randomizer? Or do you think people trust us at this point that we don't need to video you doing the, the thing? Well, I just push the thing. Like, if someone wants to see the code, I'll put the, I can put the code public. Okay. Like, it's yeah. not that yeah. special. Marks so. has built the thing to randomize the entries. So Got it. everybody's in it. So uh, if he wins, that's weird. And, oh, by the way, too, uh, Justin uh, Lamb. Lamb is in studio from Snowboard. Yep. He won this thing. He's won this thing before. Two years ago. Yeah. He was so he one. could win another one and right now. He we went to Glen Helen, uh, rode it with yep. uh, Mike and RV and everybody else. So he's here hanging out. He in drove my van this year yep. to a race from California. Yeah. So he uh, he can testify. That's a uh, true one. Yeah. All right. Let's do this, Starling. When you see that when you see that red button, then you right. just say stop whenever you want. Stop. I don't know how to say that. Mark last name. Derocious. Derocious. Mark Derocious is the winner Just of the bike. Three seven Sorry, seven Justin. three. Oh, I, I mean, honestly, I'm glad it didn't say Justin Starling there because we were we not glad at well, all. we would have had some serious discussions. Uh, thank you, Mark. Mar- uh, is there a way to uh, find out when he bought that ticket, Marks? I don't even really want to know if we if we. Yeah, um, 
Thursday. Wow, recent. You bought it Thursday? Bought it Thursday. Hit it again. Let me see if I won again. No, 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 no. Ah, but again, what people have to understand is if the majority of the tickets, tickets. are bought in the last five days, if 80% of the tickets are bought in the last five days, then there's an 80% chance that the winner comes from the last five days. So yes. Like that's, yep. everyone yep. always says it comes from the last few days, but that's, that's how the odds are. That's how yeah. odds work. Yeah. So. so congratulations, Mark. You won a 2023 Yamaha YZ450. That's rad. That is so cool. That is a great bike. <laughs> it's bike of the year. It is a great bike. Okay. Grant Harlan, straight Remo to ninth. We're moving on. Uh, fly Racing, complete set of Fly Racing gear, including Formula CC helmet. Stop. Steve Corliss. 3257. 3257. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Race Tech, Gold Valve, Revalve, uh, full bike setup. Including uh, parts, fluids, labors, everything else. Uh, race tech. Here we go, Justin. You do this one. Stop. Five five two two. Casey DeLong. All right, I'll do this one. Uh, it is a FXR complete set of FXR gear. Thanks to FXR guys for this. Stop. Ryan Eaton. Uh, five one eight six marks. Thank you. All right. Uh, FMF slip on exhaust. FMF slip That's on exhaust. One. All right, Justin, you stop. Oh. Angelina Hilt Hinton, five two five one. Five two five one. All right, Marks. Uh, Atlas neck brace. Thanks to Atlas brace, official brace of uh, Logan Carr now, and, and Dylan Cartwright. Wright, and Cartwright. All right, that was a cute winner. Stop. Matthias Lanes two zero two four. 2024 for the Atlas Brace. Um, all right. And the next up is a Works Connection prize pack for everything that Works Connection makes for your particular bike. All right. Stop. Oh, I thought that was Kyle Peters. <laughs> 12. <laughs> I was like, no. 12. Way. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 5. 1, 2, 3, 5 marks for that. Uh, all right. Liat, set of premium Liat 4.5 boots. Stop. Brennan McCormick, 5087. Thank you for Brennan for playing. Next up, Renthal uh, Bars Grip Sprocket Set with a Chain. Stop. 3509 for that. That's uh, Joe. Good job, Joe. Thanks, uh, thanks for playing. Thanks for buying a ticket. Decal Works, $250 gift card. Stop. 4425, James. Four two four James A Zippy Zip I, four uh, four two five not four two yeah, four 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 two five sorry, eleventh uh, place full firepower kit a battery a chain oil oil filter tie downs firepowerparts dot com. Stop. Jacob Karras, uh five five six one five five six one Jacob, good job, uh, thank you again for supporting Michelin Starcross six tire package, stick to the track like glue. Here we go, Marks. Me or you? I think it's you. Okay. Stop. Jacob Hudson, 2973. 2973, Jacob Hudson wins. Uh, 13th place prize. Grill your ass off. $150 value ammo box full of seasonings. It's good stuff. It is. Yeah. All right. Stop. Marcus 4647, Ray. Marcus Ray. Enjoy your grilling your ass off, Marcus. Next up, fire another fire power kit. Two five four three, two five four three three. Joshua Orlowski. All right. Next up, Liat full protection package. Thanks again, to folks at Liat. Stop. <laughs> three four three He's one. He's coming back, boys. <laughs> He's coming back. <laughs> James Stewart wins. <laughs> wins the Liat protection package. Good job, Stu. Thanks for supporting the the raffle. Uh, Weisco piston kit is next. Trisha Voden, uh, 4076. Trisha Voden wins that. Uh, all right. Thanks to the folks at Firepower. Starling, you're up next. It is a Maxima USA Pro Filter bike kit. Stop. 3588, Carl Hutchins. 3588. Thanks, Carl, for supporting the game and the raffle. Next up, Wysco Garage Buddy kit. 
three three nine three Stephen Stewart three three nine three for that Starling Roost uh, MX sticker kit for your bike Christina Denny yep stop Philip Pruitt one six seven one one six I know Philip you do yeah he lives in Florida oh wow All right. he lives right by me in Brandon. <laughs> Roost MX. I mean, if it's the same guy, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, he lives right by me in Florida. He's actually helped me out this year a little bit. Uh, complete seat from the folks at Guts Racing. Pulp MX 2023 is a code to save with Guts. All right. Stop. Derek Vanderboom. Vanderboom? Vanderboom. Uh, 3569. 3569. There we go. Thank you to all these companies for putting up these prizes. Thank you to you people for buying raffle tickets. $147,000. Wow. Uh, really super cool. Uh, appreciate that. And, uh, man, cool. Uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. And uh, it's, uh, it's really cool to do. We're going to do it again. We, talked, we kicked around some ideas for race formats. We'll, talk, we'll have some more chaos. Maybe Starling will get in next mm, year. I'm going for mains. I oh. always will. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Really sad for that. Um, <laughs> thank you to Yamaha, 2023. It's cool what they do. Yeah, really, really great cool. Great bike. Uh, bike of the year, some say. It is, it is a great bike. Um, so thank you, everybody, for supporting it again. And thank you. Congratulations to the winners. Congratulations to um, uh, the riders as well. Cartwright coming away with over 30 Gs with the prop bets. That's wild. That's crazy. Before we get Wes on the phone, let's do the prop bets. Let me, let me, let me announce the winners and, and the people who donated for the props because I want to give them some love here. Um, here we go. All right, uh, whole shot, thousand bucks from Hannah Ray. Lane Shaw won that one. The first FXR rider from FXR, five hundred bucks. Obviously, Josh Cartwright. We each put up a hundred bucks for the first DNF. Joan Cross, mm. who was sick, not feeling it. Uh, Swap Moto biggest crash, five hundred bucks. Thanks to Swap Moto, Freddie Norn gets mm -hmm. that one. Uh, Anton most passes in the main event, hundred bucks. Kay Clayson gets that one. Uh, Covert Cameras, our buddy Regis. Most positions lost. Tristan Lane, 1000 bucks. Oh, uh, yeah, Tristan went down. Yeah, he did. Uh, Guts Rider, first Guts Rider, Cade, 250 bucks, And Guts put up the money for 250 bucks for the last Guts Rider, and that's Austin Kozad. X-Brown Goggles, fastest lap of the race. Freddie Norn gets that one. Uh, Christian Craig. First to the finish line. Christian's a Pulp Mix fantasy player, so it makes sense. Yep. He put 500 bucks up for first to the finish line, and it was Lane Shaw again. Cobo Links put up 1000 bucks to the shortest rider. So we had Yoder and Lane Shaw measure it off on track walk, and Yoder got him. So Hunter Yoder, shortest yeah, I rider. Yeah, was pitted next to Lane, and he was like, do you think I'm smaller than Yoder? I, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never stood next to him. Yeah, yeah. We don't really know. Yeah. Uh, Works Connection, the first Works Connection Pro Launch uh, rider. Got a 500 bucks. Logan Carnell got that one. Moto Pivot, most passes. 100 bucks they put up. Cade got that. Cade rode a really good race. Uh, Justin Haley put up slowest lap without falling or crashing. A lot of controversy with this one. It was 250 bucks. We gave it to Nagy because Preston Taylor actually went off the track. Yeah. Which kind of counts as a crash or whatever. Yeah. You know, so we gave it to Nagy. Preston may be upset. I don't know. I couldn't You're need a new clutch for that bike. His bike was steaming so bad. Our buddy Adam C. Cirillo, ninth place for 300 bucks, and it went to uh, Max Miller. AC paid him on track walk. That's cool. He came up to me. He's like, where's Max Miller? What does he look like? <laughs> what does he look like? Yeah, yeah. Raced him last week. Doesn't he, know what he, he looks know like. He doesn't know what he looks like. He sees him with a helmet on. <laughs> Valid. Uh, K. Boos, only fans, K. Boos, lit kit. Uh, I, she wanted to be the judge of this because yeah, who she pick? last year we were the judge and I, maybe she wasn't that happy with it. And so K booze, I sent K booze a bunch of photos for 500 bucks. She picked a uh, three for lit kit. And her reasoning was, I like purple. All bad bitches like purple. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Sweet. Yeah. K booze, <laughs> uh, MX sponsor and Paul Parabinos put up last rider on lead lap, 850 bucks. That was Preston Taylor. Because Nagy eventually passed him. Oh, no one got lapped? Oh, wait, no. no Sorry. I was uh, they that. did get lapped. So, yeah, Preston Taylor, they lapped, uh, you know, a few of those guys at the end. So Preston Taylor was the last guy on the lead lap. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Checkers, our buddy Checkers at Race Tech. Best air wheelie. 2831, you were the judge for this Mason Kerr. Yep. Uh, I stand by that, too. People, people give me shit for it, but I stand by it. 
Partzilla, uh, PRMX, the team that swept the podium. No, sorry, three out of the four. I always think Cartwright's on PRMX. Yeah, I, I do, too. I screw that up. See? Uh, they put 250 bucks up for uh, sixth and ninth. So Shaw and uh, Shaw and Miller got 250 bucks each. Uh, Ice Shaker, the Gronkowski guys, um, they joined us late, but they got on. Uh, Ice Shaker did 500 bucks for fifth place, and it went to Car now. Uh, 95A Complex, ninth place and fifth place. They put 100 bucks up each. Uh, Max Miller again for ninth and Carnell again for fifth and props. Renegade Racing Fuels gave the top three guys some race fuel. Uh, at player K13, 13th place, 200 bucks. Uh, that's Dominic Thury. Dirt Bikes for Presidents, last place, 100 bucks, Joe on Cross. Uh, Next Level 101 gave us money, 200 bucks to give to a random mechanic. And I gave it to Greco, who actually had a mechanic's fanny pack on that while is he raced. insane. Yes. Our buddy Nash, the Barry Carson. Does it have tools in it, though? Yeah, I think so. It looked it. Yeah, make sure that thing has tools. Anyone yeah. can wear a fanny pack. It looked like it. Knowing it's, Greco. It needs T hey, handles knowing hanging Greco, out the side. It probably had no tools in it. Yeah, it had no tools in it. Uh, okay, so Nash, our buddy Nash, said 100 bucks for the uh, Barry Carson All Grid Award. He went with Freddie Norn. Uh, Chiz and HEP gave us uh, 200 bucks for the Grittiest Chiz Award. We gave it to Nice because his bike was screwing up in practice. and He, he didn't even ride, did he? Yeah, he rolled around. And then he showed up in the main, having just rolled the track and got like seven. So we gave it to Luke Nice On a 250, too. On a 250, the grittiest Chiz Award. Jay Clark, Dirt Bike TV, the last X-Brand finisher was Joe on Cross for 150 bucks. Anchor Tape, the first Anchor Tape finisher, 100 bucks. That went to uh, Cade. Uh, MTX Brakes, great mountain bike brakes. Uh, they gave us... 500 bucks for the best save. I put Phil Nicoletti in charge of this. He said Max Miller almost died twice. Hmm. So he gave it to Max Miller. Uh, 1000 bucks from Dennis Parker, my buddy. D, uh, Heavy D, guy who bought Kiefer's Alta. 1000 bucks for oh, best. Oh, sold. For best pass. And uh, our buddy Phil judged it, and he said Carnell had a sweet pass after the finish. So he gave it to Carnell. Seal Savers, lowest earning rider, 100 bucks. Oh, Mark, did we figure that out? It's not on here. Uh yeah, Piazza, you have an outdated. Oh, okay. Uh, Piazza uh, wins lowest earning rider, so he gets a hundred bucks. My buddy Courtney Lloyd up in Canada, seventh lap leader, five hundred bucks. That goes to Cartwright, and Align Media guys, the guys that take the photos of the races, best whip over finish, a hundred bucks. Max Miller. So basically, you, you actually f don't have one because you have the outdated thing, and oh. there's one from Snowboard. It's oh. the Boat Anchor Award. Okay, which is last to the finish line. On the first lap instead of first, uh, and that goes to Piazza as well for five hundred bucks. Oh, okay. On, on donations from did you, Snowboard. Did you collect that? Uh, they're gonna. I think they're gonna pay Piazza. Okay, direct. all right. So, so we're, we're dialed. Piazza. So basically, Max Miller made uh, twelve fifty in props. Carnell made twenty one hundred in props. Uh, Shaw made seventeen fifty in props. So so on and so forth. We had fifteen thousand marks ish in props. Um, yes. Uh, it's actually 16. 16,000 in, in props yep. on top of the 147. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. That's great. That's so rad. 163 total. $163,000. Damn. You ever thought about putting your own series on? <laughs> you know what I did think of? If they weren't really going to give me a raise, I was going to either A, give the money all away uh, on a, in an LCQ. <laughs> From fifth on back and watch the watch the, the easiest main to make ever. Right, or I was thinking of maybe holding a local race on Saturday of the day of the Supercross, <laughs> renting a track in Salt Lake City. <laughs> there are tracks around too I that like Mo Miller Motorsports has a Supercross yeah, track. You could have done it there. Could, uh, watch, imagine if nobody showed up and they're all at my race for one hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. I I wouldn't show up. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, I would no. go racing. Um, I'm a racer. I I don't know. Yeah, I'm a main event. I just go for the main events. I get it. Yeah. Um. God damn, that's impressive. Good. Good job. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Yamaha. Thank you, Feld. Thanks, everybody. That's uh, cool. We'll be in contact for the prizes as well uh, as soon as we can. All right. The um, next guest on the show, uh, OGO Power Sports. Uh, traveling's a pain. My favorite OGO is probably my new, my new layover bag. It's got four wheels. It's got uh, a mesh compartment. It's got two compartments on it. It's great for uh, flying on uh, the short little trips that I do every weekend to Supercross. Uh, I know the gentleman on the phone, though, probably has uh, a, another favorite OGO because he's traveling all the time with very, very expensive equipment. From Verb Moto, it's Wes Williams. What's up, Wes? How are you, man? 
Hi, 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 everybody. What's up? $147,000. Dude, I, I, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Dude, I, I can't believe you, it would have been 247000 if you didn't have to pay me 100 of it. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, I know. Holy shit. Yeah, no. Can you imagine? Uh, no, I. Hey, thanks for I, doing I'll this, Bert. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, we, we, when, I think you texted me when I was at Delta Shred Tour last year, and you're like, can you pull off a live stream? I'm like, dude, it's not my day job, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. Again, you guys didn't make any money on this. We're covering expenses, and I think the reason we know we got to stream this, it's if people wanted to see it, and, and it was worth all the money to do it. Uh, and, again, you guys didn't really make anything on it, so I appreciate it. You and, and your crew, and, like five guys and, and everybody, yeah. It, it was a bit stressful because, yeah, since uh, since we decided to go low budget, we uh, all had to wear a lot of hats. And again, not being our day job, I, I won't say I wasn't nervous because uh, I kind of <laughs> was. But uh, it was definitely a sigh of relief when we got to the end, um, and and it went off with almost almost glitchless. I mean, every we had a few faults in there. So, yeah, we um, we ruined everything. a lot of things, but we. You know, yeah. what, what are you going to do? The podium audio and, yep. you know, like the start. And, you know, at Starling, we, we we had like four or five features that didn't even get ran because we didn't realize Starling was not press day. <laughs> we're like waiting for him to get up to the booth and we're like, where the hell is Starling? I left press day and, early too. Yeah. I, I, I wow. pulled off about halfway of the second I, I, session. Listen, so I you guys back. did a great job, but yeah, I just would have started rolling at two and when Starling gets there, well, he gets I, there. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was just nervous if we started at two because we were like thirty minutes behind. And I remember last year it was like an hour and a half behind or something. And I was like it really was. nervous was, if if we started at like two, and we just had to blabber with JT and Starling for an hour and a half. I I don't know. I was like let's just play it safe. Yeah. And then it seemed as as soon as it started, it was like go 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 go. Yeah, I watched so, it back. Uh, it, you did a guys did a really good job, uh, and it turned out really good. And the, and the audio from Daniel's interview is up on the archives now. So. Yep. Yep. I, I I posted them. Uh, a few hours after the race, uh, yeah. you know the uh, the the lost interviews from our um, <laughs> hot dog transmitters. Yeah, it was great though, man. It was awesome. Thanks to Verb for doing it. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, Th- it- thanks for believing in us. Uh, Chase Chase was like, dude, Steve's like the easiest guy to work with. He didn't ask like one question the whole time. Wasn't worried. I, no. I was like, hey, that's, that's <laughs> dude. I, I run a loose. Uh, you can ask Marks. It's loose over here at Pulp MX. Like, there's not a lot I of like. like uh, yeah, there's not a lot of like. Uh, you know, stressing or, you know, control freaks or, you know, no matter how it gets done, as long as whatever happens, happens. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, yeah, I I feel the same way. You're going to call me if there's an issue. If there's not an issue, no news is good news, right? No, for sure. Uh, uh, Exactly. Exactly right. Swizz did a lot of work for it, for the the, the lower thirds and all that. So it looked great. Looked awesome. Yeah, and so, uh, I do I do appreciate everybody on Twitter saying we figured out live timing better than yeah. uh, Supercross. When in all reality, we literally just had the real live yes. timing guy uh, Brandon Rohde freaking hooking us up, coming yeah. in clutch last minute. Um, but he did he, he was showing us all kinds of cool stuff we could integrate, and I was like, I feel like that's kind of sophisticated for where we're at. Like, let's, <laughs> just, let's just keep it simple. But yeah. there's all kinds of options that they could add to the uh, broadcast that I found out. Um, that I was like, yeah, we're not going to introduce that to, yeah. on this. Let's let's skip that. Yeah, I, th- listen. The number one question last year was, where can I watch it? How do I watch it? I want to watch it, and I knew for 2023 we had to get it on stream. And thanks to FXR, they stepped up oh, and, uh, and gave us some money too. So yeah, huge huge thanks to them. Like we were talking about it after the race. It's like you know for for them to throw in, and it, it's not like there's any ROI in that for them. And it's it's so hard, as you know, Steve, to get freaking money out of anybody in a sport in this day and age to do cool things like this. And um, for them to step up means a lot. I mean, it, it's it's so cool to see you raise this amount of money and for FXR to step up and, and support it and the, the privateers too. Mad props to them. And, uh, yeah, they, they don't do anything for me personally, but, man, it, it, it sure does mean a lot. Um, yeah. Badass company for sure. No, it's our uh, baby. Top yeah, line. yeah, it's uh, it's great of them to do that, and um, yeah, what a, what an effort. Yeah, you guys pulled it off, and uh, cool to see. And does it does it maybe does it maybe make you think about opening up a little bit of a streaming race service at all for you guys, <laughs> adding that to your to yeah. your repertoire? I, I think we do pretty well doing other production stuff, but uh, after. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's definitely some fun, intriguing things. Uh, maybe not at that scale. Um, even though we didn't really go that big on this one. Um, but I don't know. It it, it it it's fun, but uh, probably a lot more stressful than what I normally do. So um, right, well, it's it's a lot more fun to shoot everything and then figure out how to put it together versus live streaming. Uh, you rely a lot on technology working and a lot of pieces of technology working. So 
Um, I well, listen. So yeah. <laughs> I, I talked to the I talked to Mui and the Supercross guys, and my ultimate goal is to get this thing on Saturday and have it on Race Day Live and all of that. But yeah. if that doesn't happen, yeah, you're doing it again next year. So oh, you, yeah. you know it. Yeah. I, we're we're in for life now. I, honestly, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't know that I want to do it every day of my life, but uh, <laughs> a few times a year could be fun. So yeah, hey, why don't we have two or three pulp races? There we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wes Williams from Verb Moto on the Pulp Show, brought to you by OGO. What's your number one OGO go to bag? Dub. Dude, you, hey, you know what? The last time I think I was on there, you introduced me to the Rig 9800, and I'm not joking. This is not a sponsor plug because I even had to pay for this. Uh, but after I saw the Rig, because uh, I used to have the 9800, and yep. the Rig has like the the big top, mm-hmm. and so the 9800 could only fit my tripod right in the middle without in, in the sides. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying. This is stupid trying to explain this. But anyways, when I saw the Rig, I can get two tripods side by side. Plus some like soft boxes, some other lights and stuff. Um, so yeah, literally after I left your show last time, I got on uh, OGO and ordered a rig 9800. And yes, it did pull about 80 pounds of stuff to your live stream race. <laughs> you guys, and it, as it does every other shoot I go to, I don't like I. I was looking at it going on the Southwest bag uh, thing the other day, and I'm like, I don't know how that thing doesn't just fall apart every freaking time it gets thrown on a plane. What's funny is you. Uh... You, you do this for a living, and you, you have to carry everything around and, and all that, and then you're buying a bag, Wes. I mean, come on, Dub. Come on. Dude, you know, I, it, the problem is you ask for bro deals, and, oh, sure, dude, I got you, I got you. And then it's like three months later, and it's, I don't know, dude, I can afford a bag. I'm just going to go buy the bag that I okay. need so I can have it tomorrow from Amazon, and then, and then I can go to the race this weekend and okay. <laughs> not worry about it. Uh, Pulp 15 is the code to save with OGO Power Sports. OGO Power Sports, you know, okay, Pulp 15. I, I might have done that. I might have done that. Okay, okay. I'll, 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 be, I'll be real. Uh, I'll probably use your, I probably use your code. <laughs> yeah, probably. Also, uh, Starling, they were telling me about the monitor. They're getting a monitor, and, and you're going to look at the race of the monitor. And I'm like, you guys got to bring a TV to the race? Yeah. And they go, no, we just buy one at Walmart and then return it the next day. <laughs> That's what your move is, Dub. That's brilliant. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you do it Anytime as long as you we do, do it. Live stream- Hey, no, but hey, we, we go and get the open box ones. They're already the ones that someone else has already returned. It's not like it's not it might be kind of shitty, but like I don't know. Like, hey, we only use it for two days. It comes back in perfect. Yeah, it's condition. fine. That's no, all you guys trash it. I'm not saying that. I'm just like Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kinda kinda smart. I, I yeah, I didn't really think about that. But yeah. Hey, I mean we right, we probably saved five hundred dollars on the budget, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh no, I liked it for sure. They're for uh, the people. Absolutely. For the yeah, people. Absolutely. Verb Moto, uh check it out. Uh, how did your how did your um the race at Mesquite, the bringing it back, the uh, the world mini, the world mini. Yeah, how did that work? Forty forty seventh running, even. I Justin like that. Starling remembers the world mini. Oh yeah. Oh god, I, I can grew imagine. up racing that. I moved here. The yeah. first year I moved here was the last year they did it. Uh, all right. Well, I can it. tell you, it's, it was way better now than it was then. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, it was it was honestly really damn cool. Um, I think with any first year event, especially announcing it two months before, you can't have incredibly high expectations, but um the bra family did an incredible job we they, they did a schedule just like loretta's and every single moto took off to the second which was like so commendable so i think that aspect alone will bring a lot of people back and then uh like we didn't have time ca- to get any contingency or or big purse money or anything together this year which we'll have all that in line next year and a bunch of uh you know other other fun stuff money wise so um yeah, first year I think we exceeded our own expectations and crowd had fun. So hey, on to on to the forty eighth running because uh, yeah, uh, I was involved in so many before those. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, Gary there at Mesquite, he's an awesome guy. Simply awesome to yeah, work the, with, right? Their, their whole family, like dude. Th- so all three of the brothers, I'm I'm sure you know this, but have like qualified for nationals. Yeah, um, yeah, they rode Canadian nationals for at, a little bit, right? Yep. Yep, and like two of them at the same time in pro motocross like they're but they're all three fast enough that they could qualify for a pro motocross on the same day if they tried I think. yeah yeah great great family great track uh, have you been to mesquite i have yeah that place is cool it's really cool it's, it's really nice it's really good now justin i don't know when the last time you went out there but uh they've they've had it for what now four or five years steve yeah um yeah i was 20- yeah it's like 11 Oh yeah, 11. so that's back when uh, I think Jason Jason Ellis was his name, if I remember correctly. But yeah, now it's yeah. No, I I don't really remember it back then. I only won a few times for World Mini. Um, but but yeah, now they 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 run like all the Northwest, uh, Idaho, Utah, um, Nevada yeah. s- 
style AMA races and everything in their own series, the RMX series, and every single track they do is just unreal. So great people, great promoters. Uh, what's new with Verb? So you guys are following Hunter around as he wins his first uh, U.S. title. Uh, Jet, yep, yep. Jet wins this weekend. Um, what's, yep. uh, you guys busy with Red Bull stuff at that end? On that end? Yeah, we they always keep us busy for sure. So uh, I, I tried to convince them to bring back uh, Supercross by this year, Steve. I know you would have been thrilled with that, mm-hmm. but uh, they didn't really bite. They wanted to do another Jet and Hunter series, and I, I was I was just like, there's nothing left to tell right now. We need to like <laughs> sit on this for maybe a year or two and just see how it develops, but. Uh, then when, when Hunter and Jet were obviously doing so well with the series and we saw uh, just how it was culminating and Jet moving up to 450s, we, I, I was like, hey, why don't we at least do a one-off like mini doco moto spy mm-hmm. slash flight plan, fun little thing. Um, and I, I'll, I'll just say like filming Hunter winning or anybody winning the first championship, like that emotion is so unreal. Uh, mm-hmm. It was very special to be part of that last weekend. Uh, or two weekends ago, rather, um, filming Jet when again, I, you know, I, it's like just so expected. And I think once once a racer gets that, it's not that exciting to them anymore. Yep. But to be there for hunters, like the emotion through him, his whole family, even the way Jet felt for him, uh, and, and the images we were able to capture are, are, are very special. So, yeah, it's it's funny. I, I feel like I've worked my whole career to be able to film that moment, right? Yeah. So, um, well, that's good. Listen, lots of talk. Uh, obviously, drive to survive is is huge, and I think the Feld guys are trying to get something done for our sport to open it up on Netflix and all of that. Certainly, I think they would be wise to hire you. Now, Supercross Spy and the Red Bull guys did it, but you know, no Monster Riders in there, and Monster does a thing, but no Red Bull Riders, and it's all this political bullshit. If we just mm-hmm. and, and even Drive to Survive, let's face it, the first year Drive to Survive, Ferrari didn't do it or something, right? right? And then. Then they came around because they yep. saw how good it was. So it's not like the Drive to Survive guys are fully open, non-political either. There are things they got to dance through. But our sport would uh, be portrayed, I think, in some awesome ways and in some ne- some very high drama ways, which is good for TV viewing. And a series like that with all the riders and all the sponsors would be awesome. I think that you could get hired for something like that, Wes. I think if anybody – looked at your body of work and the way you operate, you and your guys, you would be a natural to get involved with that. I hope if Feld did anything, they would not just pr- produce themselves a bar-to-bar type of can thing, which was never that great. Mm. Uh, long, long-winded long way to ask you, Wes, c- c- A, can it work? Do you know anything? Uh, and what's your thoughts on trying to do something like that for our sport? There's definitely a lot of rumblings through a few – top level production companies talking to uh platforms and streaming services a lot of things happening right now uh i are they viable uh, yeah uh am i going to be involved i don't know um but i definitely know drive to survive and box to box dudes are in conversations and um Wahlberg's companies in conversations with Feld so oh okay um, so you where, wouldn't, where it's gone from them i i know i know there's talks happening where they are at and how yep. how viable they are, I don't know. Could if you could if they could put you in charge of it, which maybe they wouldn't, because you know, yeah, you've you've got your hands full of everything. What what would you think of that? What would you what would you do? Would you make it a, you know, you've been around enough of these supercar spy stuff and everything else. Like what 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 do you learn good and bad from doing it? I've I've I've, I've often thought about this. If if I, I don't think they put me in charge of it, I think someone like Box the Box has done Judges Five, and now the you know the. Yeah, all the flagship non-scripted sports shows. Um, yep. You know, they they uh, someone like that would have to be at the helm, but I, I think they would. They'd have. I I don't know. I, I feel like our sport is so close and tight knit, and uh, personality is everything, in my opinion. So I think if you were to go into some of these places and try to get around AC or Eli Tomac with a big production crew, I just don't know that it would work. You you really mm-hmm. need the people that have the, the chemistry and the, the history more so than anything with these guys. Like that's yeah, why, yeah. you know, I work so tight with Jet and Hunter. I've been with them for four or five years now. And then before that, you know, we were filming them in Belgium and Spain and uh, Czech Republic and stuff at junior worlds back in 11, 12 and 13. Uh, so they still tell me all kinds of these bird memories and stuff uh, all the time. So, you know, it's just, it's having rapport with people. So I'm, I'm curious as to how a bigger production company could come in there with 
you know, high-end DPs and camera ops, this, that, and the other, and, and pull it off, I'd be very curious because, yeah, as you guys know, it's not um, it's not the easiest functioning in our sport trying to get access. No, but I feel like they, they would do that, right? I don't know. Wouldn't they do that? Yeah, you, you, would, you would seem to think, but, like, I don't know, is Coker and Tomac giving a shit about – TV crews being around and giving them what yeah. they want. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe they, they, if they bought in from Feld's side, they were told to buy in. I don't know. You know what? I yeah, would. But I'd you know curious, what? I'd be curious okay. to see. Right. No, and you certainly know it better than I do. But talking about these privateers and the LCQ challenge and all of that, I would hope to God like that there would be some sort of devotion to. I mean, Starling himself. Like, okay, so Justin, you're not this funny seven deuce deuce Carnell type of guy, no. but. You are you built a team of yourself, main event guy, driving to the races, getting guys from snowboard to drive your truck. The you're up against Chase Sexton, right? Yeah. And the 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 difficulties that Chase Sexton has on a Monday to Friday versus you is enormous, right? The the, it's, the, the disparity is huge. Yeah. I would love to show Justin Starling on there, or you know, uh, A Ray, or these other guys that we all know are huge personalities and our privateer heroes, I would hope to God there's a spot for them to well, show the fans what it's what it's like. I would like people to see see that stuff. Like, I'm going to fly 100%. home at 6 a.m., yeah. and my bike is still loaded in the van dirty from the main event, <laughs> and I have to go back to Denver, unload it, and wash it, prep it, yeah. leave Wednesday to get to Salt Lake to do media stuff. Yep. <laughs> it is not easy. No. But people don't see that part of the life. Like yep. I, I was joking about it last night. I'm sitting there at eleven o'clock at night doing laundry with my gear and stuff, and they're, like people don't see that. No, no, they so have no idea. I, I want to see Chase Sexton and his week, and and Adam Cincerillo, but I want also to show the fans Starling's week and A Ray's week and the injuries and the shit that goes on behind the scenes that and the characters, the full yeah. Carnal characters that we have to show fans everything. We have you so know? many different right entities in this sport yeah. that you. You, it's not just one way. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different ways people do it. But but yeah. So Wes, you've been here in some rumblings. So this could be a possibility down the road. There's definitely movement in a few different spots. Yep. Yep. Um, what's next for Verb? What uh, I mean, I know this rocking chair thing. You know, you guys can't really. Get yeah, we. Any, you we, can't get any better than that. Back to Casey. We are going to Casey, Illinois. They have the world's largest taco, uh, world's largest mailbox. Uh, you know, they got a lot okay. of the world's largest things. So, okay. I, you know, I got to see if Brett Q's available. But yeah, so, we're going to be there in July. But our next one's this weekend, actually. We're going to Unadilla. We partnered with them in J-Day. Uh, thank God Chase isn't going because he would drink all of the mamosas this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and I, we, we've had to cut him off, dude. Yeah. Had to he, cut him off. He was out of control in a press box on Saturday. Um, God. But – yeah, so last time you were in studio with Troy, and we all know what happened there. But um, <laughs> you you were just he showing still hasn't lived that down. You were God, showing us Troy. the video that you showed. Yeah, aren't you on his team? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Proudly. That's your leader. Proudly. Yeah, he can't. He, he turns the wrong way on the freeway. We had four guys in the top hey. ten this week, okay. and we were a tight knit, okay. okay. very run our stuff to him to the minute. Like we make sure we are on time for everything we do. Okay. He, he he got to multiple top tens, and he had a freaking butt patch on the uh, Team Solitaire boys. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Oh, my we God. Are, Troy's everywhere. Troy does. Um, There's one right, shirt right there. Yep. No, we put, we, we put a shirt up. So you uh, so you were in studio, and, yeah, the rocking chair, bet Q, you were very stoked Huge, on that. Huge, so, dude. Yeah, that, I, I, I still can't believe how big that was. <laughs> yes, I know. World's <laughs> largest rocking chair. Okay. So you got J-Day and Unadilla this weekend. <laughs> Yep, yep. And then you got your. And then, then we, I think we got to go to Millville Pulp Race or something, don't we? Are you doing that? You want to do that? Uh, when is it? October. Ooh. We don't have a race. It's just chill. a ride day. It's just a two ride yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's that's right. what I meant. Starling yeah. wants to I go. believe me. I, not once. I'm I, going. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. Through ride day? I've been meaning to ask the timing because I've seen it on Twitter and I'm like, yeah. dude, if I could make it, I feel like that'd be a very cool thing to come and crash. Yeah, Zacho wants to go. Phil wants to go. Starling wants to go. Wilbur wants to go. Uh, I'll throw Zacho's tro- bike in the van. Martin Brothers will be there. Uh, you know, and so, yeah, it's, Brayton wants to show up. So I feel like it'll be a really cool. It'll be cool fun. Event. Yeah. Fun. Um, and we're we'll gonna come do, and live stream it. We're doing a pulp show. We're, we're doing a pulp show uh, that night too. So yep. yeah, nice. Love it. Um, and how is things at Verb? Everything good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we uh, we seem to stay busy. Um, as you know, between production work and doing Verb, I often ask like, "What the hell am I doing?" It's two full time jobs, uh, yeah. and then I also now have two kids. So 
Um, you have two kids I have now. An addition, I didn't, I didn't even yeah, know. I have an addition of one since the last time I was at your house. So, like, yeah, I, I pretty much ask myself every day what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and so now Chase moved up to Boise, too? Yep, yep. Uh, yep. We um, we knew we need, we had to become broadcasters at some point, so uh, Chase came out. and Wow. Here we are, even starting more work uh, on and, top of our already lots of work. And you launched a podcast. Welcome to, to the Bro- broadcast. Bro- broadcast. It's, 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 not, it's stop it. It's a podcast. <laughs> the, you know what we? We're, you know what the not, moto industry needed, West was another podcast. That's what the moto industry. Nope, needed. nope. We're, that's why we decided to do broadcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? Wes? I mean, why why would we start the four thousand podcast of our industry when we could start the first broadcast, Steve? It's as big as the rocking chair jump. That's right. Uh, I bet. I bet the rocking chair jump. I mean, I I don't know how you go. It's only down from there, Wes. <laughs> I don't. You wait till you see the world's largest taco, bro. Okay. <laughs> Wait, Brett Q's gonna jump <laughs> jump through the world's largest taco. I can't wait. Uh, we got the world's largest teeter totter. Okay, we gotta we gotta get There's you in studio. Good... When are you gonna you know, when are you gonna fly down to be in studio again? Hey, what's cool is I think I uh, was I here last time. I don't know. I'm like an hour flight from you now. I don't know. I know. Me and JT just got to buddy up. Yeah, you know I I uh, I don't think you were I don't think you were here or up there in Boise when you came here. Maybe I don't not. Think. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's it was make a it year happen. ago. Yeah. Oh no, I wasn't. I I had to come from the world's largest rocking chair jump <laughs> to your place. <laughs> okay, all right. I came straight from there with the red eye after Troy's house. Yeah, and I, we missed the flight. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Then so your dog made me drink like a bottle of vodka on the four-hour drive home, and then I had to be up to tell Troy which way to go to the airport. I'm like, dude, I don't know where you live. So, Google the world's largest rocking chair and Brett Q, and you'll see the video. Everybody, he, he yep. we showed it. We debuted yep. it on our show last year. It was thrilling. Yeah. Lincoln Trail, baby. Uh, all right, man. Well, thanks for coming on, Dub. I, thank you from the bottom of my heart for your hard work hey, with, I, the, with the stream. No, yeah. Hey, dude, thank you for everything you do for the sport. I, I, I freaking blew you last time uh, I was on the show, too, about this. But, I mean, for real, man, that's, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, our bu- our yeah, weekends man. are very busy. I, I very rarely have any free time. But when you called and said you wanted our help with this, and, yeah. Um, Knowing that we, 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 again, not my day job, but I knew we could pull it off technologically. I was like, I want to do anything I can to help support this and, and yeah. help you. Uh, because, I mean, dude, 147 grand. I Actually, I'm going to still chase this joke. <laughs> Only $147,000. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah, what was happened? Quite, he, yeah. was, he was quite proud of that one, dude. He must have made fun of his own joke like five times. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that, so. that you still employ him, but no, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. Thank you for doing the stream. Verb Moto, check it out. Uh, attend some of the races they got going on uh, and, and all of that. Thanks, Wes. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Good luck on your drive to uh, Salt Lake City, Justin. Yeah, I'm, thank uh, you. I'm sure, you're prou- I'm sure you're proud to be close to done. <laughs> oh, one more and then a whole trip back to Florida with my fiance. So, yeah. Ooh, nice. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. The, the, stro- the strokes will have you, have you jamming all the way. Oh, it was played heavy today. <laughs> See you boys this weekend. Thank See you, man. Ya. See you. All right, Wes. Later. Uh, that's Wes Williams, everybody from Verb Moto, uh, jumping on. Thanks to the folks at OGO Power Sports. Pulp 15 is the code to save with that. The 8 o'clock hour brought to you by the folks at uh, Wiseco. Well, over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right in the USA. Wiseco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, Wiseco is a variety of pistons from reliable forge replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. The code to save with Wiseco is on the PulpamexShow.com website and their performance partner of Factory HRC as well. And uh, they got a full range of performance components for dirt bikes, UTVs, ATVs, jet skis, you name it. And again, two-stroke, four-stroke pistons. Thank you to Wiseco for coming on board the show. Uh, appreciate that and uh, and more. We still got the Race Tech rant coming up. Motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment. Uh, you mentioned the end of Supercross for you, Starling. Uh, I know you. In the past, you've uh, you've found yourself some fair races, some overseas stuff. You've pieced together a living during the nationals. Uh, big German uh, arena cross guy until yep. that series kind of got put on hold. Although it's back now. Yeah, um, but now the sec- it's only two rounds and second rounds during. Super oh, is cross, that it? So, okay. Yeah, I don't. So, do what's anymore. your plan after Salt Lake? What do you What do you What do you know? What do you want to do? We're gonna, uh, we're gonna try to get you in GNCC. Yeah, we do have that lined yep, up. We're yeah, we're gonna do the plan is Ironman GNCC. Uh, I have a race in Italy in September as well. Um, plan is to go back to Paris uh, for the Supercross as well. Oh, so you um, might be kind of off then. For... Yeah, my plan is uh, well, I'm getting married July 29th. Yep. Um. So, yeah, my fiance has been amazing all supercross season basically just flying back and forth taking care of the house here and yeah. there um and then working your butt off all day on race day and um 
yeah, she's been just grinding. So my thing is that when the season's done, I'm going to basically just give the focus to her for a couple months yep. and, and do the marriage thing and get yeah. married and everything. So I'm really excited for that. So, uh, yeah, after the season, take a couple months off, um, you know, just get ready for the wedding. And after the wedding, you know, we'll do a honeymoon and all that. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, kind of get back into get it, back you into know. It. But yeah. um, in my opinion, like, uh, I'm only going to do this once, you know, the, yeah. this getting married thing. <laughs> um, so I want to really – cherish that time and take care of that time um and put their bikes to the right. on a hold for a little bit uh on the racing side of things i'll still be riding yeah but uh yeah and then after that just you know start getting ready for those off-season races and then um yeah supercross again um uh, talking about world supercross with kenny and all that um you've been a guy that would fit in nicely at world supercross yep. you didn't do it last year I did the first one. The first one? Yeah. Yep. I wasn't meant to do any of them, right. though. Yeah. I, and uh, and you're not doing them this year, m more so because of the wedding stuff than, than the actual Yeah, the second series, round's but, the weekend before the wedding. But and, I did want to uh, talk to you about, like, like I kind of – I know one guy's getting half the purse money. I know some of the riders that have turned them down that I'm surprised. Guys that are that, that are lesser privateers yeah. have said no. Yeah. Uh, these teams are trying to make some money. And yeah. if I'm Adam Bailey, I don't know the full lineup yet. But we're going to see it, and I'm going to wonder if I'm Adam Bailey, if these teams are truly putting their best foot forward uh, as far as feeling the most competitive team they can. Yeah, that's that's honestly, a, um, I wouldn't say 50% of why I'm not doing it, um, but it definitely is a part. Uh, everyone I've talked to, it just seems so chaotic, and mm -hmm. no one knows this, no one knows that. Then all of a sudden you're going to get paid this, but they're going to take a percentage of this, and then you're not getting this, and then, oh, well, actually, no, I've already filled your spot because this other guy did it. It, it just, to yeah. me, it's too unorganized for yeah. me to really be interested in it. Um, I tweeted this at you. I think the only one that I know of that's really doing it right is HEP. Mm -hmm. They were very, very good to me last year, um, and they, they weren't cheap with anything. Like, they actually paid me well. Everything yeah. was good, and that's the way I think it should be done. All the other races seem to be that way, and all, right now it just seems like all these teams are just grabbing these yeah. random riders, and then <laughs> that aren't even really the gap racing between anymore. Kenny and other people are going to be. It just be, doesn't yeah. make sense, yeah. you know. And, and, and it's not a knock to those guys. It's yeah. just like, and then they're not paying anything. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, if I go over there and something happens, which like for me happened in Cardiff, and I get last, I'm making like thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah. But I've been there for a week. <laughs> yeah. So I'm now yeah. actually in the hole because I'm now buying food. I'm yeah. doing this, I'm yeah. doing that, everything abroad. It, it's a I, cool series and it has potential. I just don't understand the way things are being ran right now. I ran into a guy that told me that there he's gonna get he got an offer or he got, he talked to a team. Uh, maybe not an offer, but he talked to a team and the team was like, We're gonna give you seven thousand dollars around for travel for you and your mechanic. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it. No, that's not gonna. You're not gonna be able to go to Indonesia and mm. Australia. Asia, yeah, no, it's and just not gonna happen. For seven grand, that's like, just where I'm at with it. It just doesn't make sense. And um, yeah, so I'm I'm way out on it. Um, unless things kind of change, um, it it's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, because it would be it was a lot of fun when I did it last year. Yeah. But um. Yeah, you yeah. would be, you would be a guy that would be perfect for uh, this. And I perfect. and I would love yeah. to do it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I would yeah. love to, but I'm about to get married. You know, yeah. we want to start a family and I'm sorry, but I can't go race for free yeah. and travel and be gone for <laughs> weeks and weeks and weeks. Um yeah. that that's just not going I can go I can go to a local race and make that, honestly, yeah. and stay home. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, for it's, me it's not it's, it. It's uh it, it'll be interesting to see the final rider list things in final I'm rider I'm very lineup. excited to see it if but, I'm honest. But, I mean, I've heard I mean, of some riders heard, that I, are like I'm like they haven't even been racing again. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. You know? But I heard one team reached out to an off-road guy. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, a lot of it's not making sense. Um, that's why. If I'm, I'm Adam Bailey at the World Supercross, I'm, like, asking these teams, like, look, man, we paid you a lot of money yeah. in year one, and we paid you a little less in year two, but you got you, – I mean, can the guy stay within yeah. t 20 seconds of Ken? Yeah, I hear some know? deals that are being thrown around, and even what I was offered, and I'm just like, yeah. immediately it's a no. One guy told me he's getting half purse money because purse money gets paid to the teams. Yeah. Guy told me he's getting half purse money. That's basically the same as Feld. And now you're – It's less. Yeah, and now you're in Australia yeah. for, for five days. That's where I'm yeah. at. Like, uh, Don't get me wrong. A couple of years ago, I would love to uh, – yeah, cool, whatever. I'll make yeah, 500 yeah. bucks. Let's go to <laughs> here and there. I have a house now. Yeah. I have a fiance that I'm going to get married to in July. And I, no, yeah. I want to be home. And don't get me wrong. If the money's right, I'll go. But these guys, are they're just not paying. And, and 
and I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, pay this, pay that. But it's like they're literally like pocketing the money. Yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, why? Like <laughs> this doesn't make – okay, I get it. Now you're you're trying to turn it into a profit thing and everything like that. Okay, everything has to make money to, for it to make sense. But yep. your guys are getting ri- – like, it just starts to look like a joke yeah. in a way. Yep. And, I, and I don't want the series to be that way because I want to do it next year. Like mm-hmm. my goal is Supercross, World Supercross. Like that's what I want to do. Yep. Um. And with the twos that they're throwing around right now, yeah, you might see me in outdoors next year. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like yeah, it's just I mean, not outdoors good. is more money now. It's yeah, it's more money, so it, it might it, it might make sense to go that route in in twenty four. Um, but yeah, twenty three, I'm gonna step back and uh, focus on the wedding and um, kind of live a little bit more of a yeah. normal life for just yeah. a little bit yep. and uh, embrace that and get back into it yeah. as you can. Did uh, Eric get your spot in? Paris, you feel like, um, you're, like you're in? Not or? like he hasn't okay. told me this year, but right. when we talked last year and everything, and and going into it, we've we've talked a little bit this year, but nothing, anything besides like the team that I was on, Valentine yeah. was like, yeah, we'd love for you to come back, right. and and they basically told me like, yeah, if the team wants you back, like then yeah, we'll yeah. we'll we'll, we'll, we'll make send you, you yeah. know, and yep. um, so as of right now, I'm pretty sure, um, mm-hmm. and then I think result wise coming into it i'm getting better so that should help me right um but i absolutely love that race so yeah the plan is to go back to that okay awesome um justin starling here brought to you by the folks at decal works again uh appreciate the the support from those guys and thank you to ken roxon adam Cine cirillo and of course wes williams for uh, calling the show troll training as well john wessling alex martin uh they share similar passions for health and fitness and created trolltraining.com with the goal of providing the resources you'll need to prepare for your next race whether you're an up-and-coming amateur racer, a vet rider like Starling. He will uh, be getting a call from me this yeah, summer. Yeah, it and works, man. I, Harlan, I already plan on going to Harling it. And Harlan and A-Ray and yeah. uh, a few other guys I've talked to. It's already to. been in my plans so yeah. as soon as the season's done to, to get into that. Absolutely. Alex Martin and John Wesling of Troll Training will prepare you for your best season yet. All aboard the Troll Train. Trolltraining.com. Alex knows what not to do after years and years in the industry and, and uh, many, many podiums and race wins and all that. Trolltraining.com. Thank you for coming on board with that. Uh, let's talk 250s from – we're going to talk a lot about Sexton next week. He's going to win the title. We're probably going to have him on the show, uh, you know, and all that. And so let's – you know, we talked about the Tomac situation. Let's switch 250s a little bit. RJ Hampshire. <laughs> Dude, if you want to see – look at the dictionary Heart. of sending it. Heart. Look at the dictionary of sending it. You'll see a picture of RJ in Denver. That – that Dude. double launch, I didn't see it happen yeah. or anything because we get yeah. down there a little, like when the race right. is like already halfway over, and uh, I get on the gate. And I just happen to look back at the TV and I just see a replay of him just facing that double. Yeah, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh my god! But that was way before, and I had seen him like when I got down there, he was getting ready to pass for the yeah. lead. And I was like, wait, that already happened, and yeah. he's already he's back, already and then he sends the whoops. <laughs> and man, I, I say this all the time. That kid's got some of the most heart that yeah. you'll ever see at a rider oh, yeah. and yeah. some of the most like uh, okay his I right wrist is not connected necessarily to his brain if that it's, kid had more talent yeah. he would be unstoppable right. i've always said it i don't think he has the talent but he has the hard work that kind of starts to overcome the talent just a little bit but if you had the talent and that hard work combined oh my god that kid would be unbelievable i mean he already is in my opinion but uh i think the little mistakes and stuff would be gone yeah he uh that was awesome and I, I was talking to Kitchen a little bit, and I was like, uh, you know what, man? Like, you rode a great race, yeah. and it's just you got to give it up to RJ. You didn't do anything really wrong. You rode no. great. Just give it up to RJ for being amazing. For being and, RJ. And, and, you know, RJ came close to crashing again many times. Oh, yeah. But he didn't. He kept it on two wheels. Yeah. And I told Kitchen, like, you should just, you know, tip your visor to RJ. Yeah. Like, I know you're pissed, but I don't know. To me, it's like he rode a great race. It's but hard RJ to stop just that rode, when yeah. that's coming up. Like, yeah. when RJ's coming from behind and he's got that – red eyes and he's just going yeah you can't really stop that yeah he, he i mean look at the last turn in east rutherford he will go <laughs> for it every single time <laughs> he, he will and I, I can tell you right now if i was a team i would want him on my team yeah. every single time yeah. i have to have a huge budget in parts <laughs> but i'll do it to have him yeah and you know he's been vocal about his bike uh not being happy with it last year this year it seems better and then if you're a team and the guy's vocal about it, but then you fix it, and he performs. You're like, okay, yeah. I get it. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he, didn't he just like resigned it. with them. Too, yeah, he did so, two yeah. years. Yeah, so two year deal. Um, it was quite a race. Good job yeah. for for RJ Hampshire. No, it was it was good. You could tell Jet was just riding that thing in. Well, he, especially after the bad start. Yeah, right? yeah, he was just like, nope, I'm yeah. championship. Which is I don't care. Which is fine. Yeah, absolutely. I would have done the same uh, thing. I think I think Kitchen next year is poised for big things. Uh, he's going to go to Pro Circuit. That's from what I hear. Crazy but, to yeah. me that he's not going to stay with Star. I feel like that's such a good spot for him too. And I don't 
I don't want to speak. It's a great bike, too. I don't want to speak for him. I think, in my own opinion, just from what I can gather, I don't think he liked the mentality over there. The whole team mentality. Yeah, I, I think mean, he, I've never been a part of that type of thing. Yeah, so I, can't, I think it's I intense. Know. I think it's dog eat dog. I think it's uh, every single day the stopwatch is out. Yeah. I don't. I think he just, you know. But it's working. He's getting better. Yeah. I mean, maybe PC's yeah. good for yeah. him. I yeah. mean, it, it I mean, could Mitch, be you. Mitch, know. Is, Mitch doesn't run an, an easy team or anything. No. You know, so yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's just I don't know. I feel like when you when you're on a 250 and you want to be on the best team. As of right now, I look at I think Honda or Star. Yeah, the the the, the Star bikes are good. They're, they're great. Good. They're, they're they're really. They're great. like the only bike out there that didn't look like they were held down by altitude by any no, means. No, no, they're they're something else. But you know yeah. what? Hey, if you believe in yourself like Levi and you're gonna do it, then yeah, you know. So what are some moving arounds? Like it was Volan to Star. I I don't think that's done, but that's the that's word the they're word. talking. Yeah, Volan to Star. Uh, Joe to Honda. Joe Schmoda. That would be good. Yeah, that would be he's really going good. To Honda. Kitchen to PC. Um, there's a spot open at KTM if they want to put another guy on with Vial. Yeah, they have Vial now. Yeah, they got Vial now. Um, RJ resigned. Yeah. I think. Uh, Huskies where where could Lopes go? Lopes could go to Rockstar Husky. Okay. 250 ride. Oh yeah, because yeah, Jalik's out. I would. I don't know, but I would. I think Jalik would be out. I yeah. think Jalik would go to Triumph. It yeah. seems like Bobby Hewitt and him are tight. Yeah. Um, he could go to he could go to Rockstar Husky. He could go to. No, he can't go to Gas Gas. Ryder D is going to Gas Gas. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Ryder D is going to go there. So, so who leaves Gas Gas? Uh, Moseman. Where does he go? I don't know. Probably done, right? I have honestly no idea. Yeah, I don't know. That is a – where has he been? He's been hurt. Yeah. He's hurt again. Yeah, he's hurt. Okay. Yeah. I think there's yeah. some friction between Moseman and the TLD guys on how hurt he is and, and, right. and, and, and sort of like what's been going on. And, right. You know what I mean? Of I course. don't think it's a smooth – I don't think – I don't gather – it's a, been a smooth sort of, hey man, you're hurt. You know, I think yeah, it's a little yeah. bit, of, a little bit. It's like, man, you're not right mentally. Yeah. And go get better. Yeah. You know? and, and and he's probably and he's hurt as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I think a little Does bit of Mumford that. Does Mumford retain there? Does he stay? Uh, I don't think so. No, yeah. I don't think so. I think they're full. They're gonna have uh, Kitchen, and uh, Hammaker, and McAdoo, and Forkner. Oh wow, yeah, that's a and cool And maybe is Jet Reynolds up? I don't know if they carry him or not. Him, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So, uh, yeah. but Enzo could go to Husky for sure. Yeah, be an opening there. Um, but again, I think they want to see some motocross results from him. But dude, listen, that's his second time topping the board in a qualifying session. Yeah, you don't luck into that. No, speed's there. <laughs> speed, speed is there. Yeah, and then I mean, like, then that opens up a spot at club too. I mean, you could yeah. see Mumford going to club. I don't know because I think two years ago he went out and rode the bike and they really liked him and he turned him down. And sometimes these teams get a little weird with that. Like, oh, you turned us down then. Yeah, but it's it, it, the team maybe knew that they weren't up to par at that time. Maybe, maybe. I mean, who I knows? Just, I, yeah, you, you know, know how it goes. Right, right. Yeah. Um, by the way, thanks to the folks at Renthal for bringing you Kenny. And we still have some of that hard anodized uh, sprockets to give away. So, Talon, if we can, I got two Gas Gas KTM slash Husky. Sprockets. I have two Honda sprockets and two Kawasaki sprockets, but they got to be like a modern fitting bike. So don't call up with your 2008 KX250. You know, it's got to be something modern. F you, dude. Sorry, man. Uh, so, Mark can, or Talon, can we do that? And then well, I just need their address. Two Austrian. Yep. Two Yamaha. Nope. Two Cowie. Nope. Two, two Cowie, two Honda, two Austrian. Okay, got it. Got it. No Suzuki, no Yamaha. I'm done with those. I gave them away already. Actually, I, I, Paul gave me a, a sprocket for my bike, and I actually gave away too many last show, and so I had to give him my personal sprocket. Now I don't have a sprocket for my own bike, so that sucks. Is your bike clean right now? Yeah. I'll, I'll show it to you if you want. Yeah. Okay. 702-586-7857. If, uh, if you want to win those, just call and uh, get their addresses, Talon, and thank you for Renthal for doing that. Really appreciate it. Race Tech, Rant of the Night. Uh, our guy Checker's there with the uh, – Air Wheelie. Uh, Race Tech doesn't just specialize in Supercross and Motocross. They have Cody Webb, Cooper Abbott, Factory Sherco team recently switched to Race Tech. So whether you do Enduro Cross, Hard Enduro, GNCC like Starling, it's going to do at the end of the year. Well, we're going or for Or some it. other radical challenge. Riders have tested and chosen Race Tech to get them over the obstacles and to the finish line. And they're a choice for Team Solitaire, Motel, AJE, Gas Gas, and many of the world's top privateers. Racetech.com. Uh, my Race Tech round of the night. It my race tech last night, my race tech rant last week was a race tech recognition. That's not going to be it anymore. Race tech rant of the night. And we touched on it earlier. My race, my LCQ race. It's just not chaotic. 
Nothing's no. happening. None of these guys are doing anything. I watch LCQs all year long where all you fuckers are trying to kill each other. Oh, and, yeah. And, and we got Freddie Norn and Chiz and A-Ray and, and shit's exploding and guys are going off the track. And that's and, for, like, no money. And that's for no money. <laughs> and I see this and I love it and I embrace it and I want it in my race. Two years in a row, outside of Wageman dying mm. due to his bike blowing up, which bad. apologies to Wageman. That was, that was awesome, but not to him. Yeah. And then Freddie, who just went Freddie. Yeah. We've got nothing. We got nothing from you guys, and you're on the island with these guys. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because, like we talked about, they just everyone's got money. They're just making so much. I mean, you can see Katie got the second, and he was like, "I'm not gonna risk it." He still made eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah. So that's I'm gonna ride all year, <laughs> all seventeen races, to hopefully make ten thousand at twentieth. At twentieth place. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I could I could still lose that spot. Yeah, yeah. And then it's nothing. Right. But they make one race. It's and I don't you know want what? the pay to ever change. But it, it's just I would I told my my fiance the same thing. I'm like, man, if I'm in fifth and things are squirrely, I'm chilling. Like yeah. I'm gonna make money. Yeah. It's money. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, so I don't really. You, you and you make a great point, Starling. To me, I don't think about. And I, I guess, because, okay, so I don't want to say this in a jerk way. Mark's a, probably Mark, going to come out as one anyway. Well, Mark, and Mark's will clip it and use it against yeah, me and fine. everything else. I wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> but to me, it's not that much money in my eyes, okay? I forgot about the ceilings. I'm I, so wow. sorry. See, God wow. damn see, it. I fucking see, forgot about the ceilings. See, now <laughs> I look like an asshole. But but I don't think like, no, okay, so look. You can't look, say look, that. Look, it's $14,000 money. No, no, Cartwright's money is a lot of money. That's thirty grand. I get it. I'm talking further back. Like outside of the top five, those guys. I'm sorry, five grand to me is a lot of money. It's a lot okay, of money. Okay, it is to me too. That is a lot right, of money. All right, you're right. It's, it is to me too. So, yeah, they're going to. I, 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 I honestly. So, so, but, so, but I honestly think that. Fuck you, Mark. Having um, that race the day before a Supercross race, when that's still their main focus. I guess I don't think about I don't think yeah. people want to send it and get hurt and then not be able to race that too. But they said it in the LCQs. Because that's what they're there for. They're yeah. there to make that main yeah, event. Yeah, right. And they know the field's depleted. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, Lane Shaw. Right. Boom. He's like, I know I can make it. I'm just going to ride this thing in. Yeah, okay. So I don't really think about, like, how little these guys make racing the 17 rounds to what I'm paying them in this race. So I don't. Yeah, if you look at, like, what I've so, made all year, yeah. like, from track pay. Yeah. It's probably not much more than what car rates got right now. Right. If anything, in it's probably one race. the same. In one in race. In one race. Yeah. In one 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've done yeah, that when, in when you, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, so 20, 20. When you, <laughs> when you put it that way, that you did 16 rounds and made a little more than Cartwright, and he's doing it in 10 minutes, when you put it that way, maybe that's why I'm not getting my race tech chaos that I want. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not getting it. it it's, it, 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 you know, it, the, the races have been, hey, man, I mean, Richard Taylor, he tried to clean out lane and fell over. <laughs> uh, and Lane kept going, uh, Tristan Lane. So it, there was a little bit of something, but yeah. it wasn't much, right? And and so I, yeah, I just I want to get chaos. I was hoping for tough. the gate picks, but, but uh, you know. like going back to like me saying like there's the race the next day. I remember last year, I probably you probably would have wild carded me in last year, and I literally was like, I don't want to yeah. be a part of it yeah, because you, I'm you in were, the battle for points, mm -hmm. and I know Saturday is important for me, and I want to do that. It's you, it's tough. My objective going to the races is that main event. Yeah, that's yeah. always my. Yep. That's the reason I race right. is to get in that main event and yep. get points and do this, you know. And when you have a race the day before and you're in fifth and you know you're going to make six. Uh, well, fifth was what car now, and he made uh, what almost ten thousand. I think it was something like that. Yeah, you're just going to chill. That's ten thousand dollars. You know, if there's an opportunity to go for the lead, you go for it. You know, but yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's tough. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you do some bracket racing, yeah, you're probably gonna get some chaos. Or the chaos, the, the, the my, my idea of inverting them after. after Car ride even said that's a good idea. I agree, that's a good idea. That yeah. is that is smart right. and make it like hey, like this could get wild. But hey, Kozad, yeah, got last. I think he got last. I don't know what place he got, but yeah, he could now get a fifth. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Yep awesome for him yeah that's rad because yeah. he's not going to make a main so i'm glad i came up with that idea that <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> no comment 
But yeah, yeah so I, I race tech around is just where's the chaos? But also JT's point, it's never going to be perfect. Right. But I right. do think you either need to do a shorter race, like a much shorter race, <laughs> or you need to do multiple racing type thing or uh, bracket or something. Because if you do ten minutes, I mean, you also think. I mean, man, okay, these, we, these privateers, like I'm sorry, but like past like fifth, they're not in shape. No, they're not. Uh, well, go I was going to say that we're in elevation they and we're do doing it. a ten minute race. I, I love Lane Shaw. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah. I lapped him twice in that main event. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and even then I got lapped, and it wasn't even that far to get yeah. lapped again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you do that 10 minutes, man, these dudes are going to peter out pretty quick. Yeah. And then the, plus their adrenaline and their their heart rate's through the roof because of how much money's on the line. Yeah. You got to think about those things a little bit, but it's tough to think about that because it's not even in your mind. I wasn't even in my mind until I'm sitting here yeah. thinking about it, you know. But I just, yeah. I mean, Marks, did you watch it? I don't know. if Oh, no, you weren't around. Uh, no, I was watching on my phone. I was rudely ignoring my friends that I was with. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. like it was kind of kind of just – My um, fiance says, do you yeah. want to pay the mortgage next year since 5K isn't a lot to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do agree. I think uh, you need to do something to mix it up. Like you have one where it's like fifth and seventh place purse are inverted or something. Like I, th I think you almost need to do something like that to, yeah, to so get guys to mix it up a little Carnell bit. Carnell mentioned that to me. He says that's why he thinks Norn got to seventh and then chilled. He did. Yeah, Norn said that. Yeah, so yeah. like that's another thing. Like you're, He's just – relaxing he probably could have got the fourth yeah you know like i don't know it, yeah i said you need to make second place the the highest purse fuck that'd be wild See? there you got some chaos yeah. imagine yeah. first and second just like trying to hold each other up and then third goes by and both gets first and gets more money than third i don't know it'd be wild <laughs> yeah i don't mind that one idea either i don't mind that it's idea your race yeah. you can do whatever you want you're goddamn right i can <laughs> uh race tech round of the night where's the chaos that's my race tech rant pulp mx 23 code to save with uh, with Race Tech, $147,000. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate Honestly, it. Honestly, great job. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well. For everyone. Involved. I got a lot of great jobs this year, this this weekend. And, again, they I, – I mean, thank you to Yamaha for the bike. Yeah. These people are giving me hey, money. Hey, man, you beating off? These people are giving me money I to – I am. My fiance is not here, so I don't have a choice. The people. Wow. <laughs> Keep her after dark. Great radio. Dark. <laughs> Sorry. I do. Had to hijack that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So – Thanks to Yamaha and all these companies for putting up the prizes, yeah, right? Yeah, it's cool. And, and privateers strike a chord with people. People yeah. love the privateers, yeah. right? I'm sure, you know, you have a nice little pit setup at your at your at your sprinter yeah. with professional looking, and you're basically sitting in a lawn chair. Yeah, fans can just me and my fiance, yeah. and then we had Sean, uh, my mechanic, this past weekend. Right, he but, but you're easily work, but accessible. Very, you're, very Chase Sexton's yes. again. I don't bring. I love Chase, but he's in his semi. He's in a yeah. lounge. He's I don't not sit up. in my van until after the pits are closed. Yeah, and then I go like sit up in the van. But right. everything else, I stay outside because yeah. yeah. man, I, if I can sign an autograph, that's cool. Yeah, you yeah. Know? People come by, they see you. You're sit chilling, or you're in an orange, and they're like, "Hey, man, like good luck, yeah. and how's this going, and good bike, yeah. and, and you know, I think that people love that." And, yep. and so, and all you guys, all the privateers yeah. do that, right? It's fun. I enjoy. It. That's why I'm here, right? right? I mean, everyone always says like, "Oh, sorry, like I'll have my boots off, or I'll just be taking my boots off and ask for an autograph." And I'm like, they're like, "Oh, sorry, sorry." And I'm like, "No, no. It's like you guys are the reason I'm here. If yeah. you guys weren't around, we wouldn't be around." So, I'm cool. Yeah, I'll sign whatever. Yeah, it's all good. Sometimes yeah. when I'm putting my goggles on, I'm like, ah, oh, like man, I yeah. kind of got to go yeah. or yeah. something. But I always will try. And then especially like riding off the track. I mean, these kids are wanting their hand, like hand, having their hand out to high five. Yeah, I did one at one point both hands out trying to do both sides. Like <laughs> it's just the fans are yeah. cool. Yeah. And, and they and, they and seem really supportive for us. And, and this is a this is a part that you know really gets these people going and that's why we have $147,000 because they love the privateers. Yeah. And they love those guys racing against the factories yeah. and going to the races and you know lining up like our sport. Like as I said with the Bobby Piazza thing, like I wasn't on Bobby's side of this. We can agree to disagree. I still put him in my race this weekend. I'm fine with Bobby Pizza. Yeah. I have no beef with him at all. But I don't agree that at a professional race, you should just be able to give some guy money and rev his bike. Like, it's a little cheesy. We're, we're, we are a professional sport yeah, here. But, okay, having said that, time out. I do like the fact that you can buy a bike from a dealership, get a pro license, put an exhaust and some supercross suspension, and you can try to make a main event. Yeah. I like that, you know? I, I'm all for creativity with – like with what Bobby's doing and, and revving the bike. Like I, I support that. I think it's awesome. He's making money. Good on him. Yeah. Was it loud? Yes. Yeah. That's all I ever said. Right. Um, 
I mean, it's I've been doing the same thing with raffling stuff off. I'm raffling a pit bike right now. Yeah. Like just to try to raise some money. You right. know, like and, and all these guys have different things that they're doing, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we're all trying to figure out a way to go to the next mm-hmm. race. Yeah. You know, and especially like those guys that aren't making mains, like yeah, they're making I, I don't know what an L C Q pays right now, mm-hmm. but it's like twelve fifty or so. That doesn't really pay for everything. Yeah. Two hundred fifty. That's just yeah. your entry. Yeah. You know. Then yep. you got a hotel. My hotel for this weekend is six hundred dollars. Yep. Right. You know. It's yeah, just mine like was expensive too. Very expensive. So once you add all that in, you're yeah. barely breaking even. So, so I like the privateers in our sport. Yeah. And that's why I'm doing this, and that's why you're here, and I like it. Some of the things make me scratch my head a little bit. Yeah. But but yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. On that. Yeah. 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 But, but in the end of the day, I mean, we had one privateer with a wild animal in his van. Yeah. So. You know, maybe you know, maybe that's a little like you don't see that in necessarily. Maybe that was in his pouch. <laughs> you don't see that in MotoGP. No. You don't see riders with wild animals in their vans or sleeping on top of their vans. Yeah, sleeping yeah. on top of their yeah, vans. I, I, so I, I get that. Some of that, I'm like, come on, man. But I wish our pits yes. were a little bit tighter. Like yeah, tighten yeah, it up yeah, a little t- bit. T- you know, like T-I-U. I, yeah, like yeah. I, I try to keep my pit looking yeah. really professional because, like, right, I want the sponsors to look at me as a professional, yeah. and not a privateer, yeah, if yeah. that makes sense. Right, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, some sure. some can get tightened up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I'm kind of at. But yeah. in the end of the day, again, I like the fact that you know, like uh, Justin Starling and Austin Kozad and and Josh Greco, and they, they're right on the gate with Sex Chase Sexton. Yeah. And if you're good enough, you're getting in the main event. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I don't like the whole like you're not on a team, you can't race. No, uh, I'm and, on two year old bikes. I'm sort of racing my practice bike right. just because it felt more comfortable on it. And <laughs> yeah, that's my bikes from last year. Yeah, yeah. So I I like that about our sport. Yeah. But there are some things that I'm just like, oh, my God, yeah, these tied yeah, it up, tied it up a little up bit. A little bit. Uh, thanks for uh, listening, by the way, and watching tonight's show. Really appreciate it. Again, thank you for the support. Uh, the 9 o'clock hour brought to you by the folks at EVS Sports. For over 30 years, EVS Sports has established themselves as the leaders in innovation and technology when it comes to designing protection gear for today's motocross riders. Riders like RJ Hampshire, Kyle Chisholm, Hodges, Pastrana. You ever wear EVS stuff? You ever use it? Uh, I did for a bit until Brad Barons went to – FXR. That's right. Brad was at EVS. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then he left the same year, or went to FXR the same year that I uh, uh, broke my wrist and had to start wearing a wrist brace, which is Mobius. So I wear Mobius knee braces too now. Okay, but you just wore an EVS. Yeah, at some point. Okay, I did. That's all we needed to say. But I wanted to give a shout out to Mobius. They're great. <laughs> EVS-Sports.com. Use the code Pulp30 to save on anything from knee pads to shoulder braces. EVS-Sports.com. Thank you to those guys. There's the, the code to, to save, and uh, so we still need Kawasaki sprockets people yeah the uh the austrians went first and then i got two hondas but okay. i'm still are they no like modern bikes are they modern yeah 18s and been are the you oldest are, so and far. are you mad about not having beat us oh, i don't mind you can use honda sprockets on a beta oh you can yeah they line right up uh, who knew the more all you right know. Cal- what the more you know yeah we have so we need kawasaki so call in if you want one of the two kawasaki uh rental hard anodized uh, sprockets uh ryan's on one what's up ryan what's your question man it was more of a thought for the LCQ race. So okay. I was thinking, would it would it possibly create chaos if you had the purse go as following? First place gets the highest purse, then third place gets the second highest purse. Yeah, yeah. We then just, fifth, yeah, fifth we just place. That. Gets, yeah, yeah. You guys did okay. Maybe I was. Yeah, Mar- Marx was just that. saying like, what if you made second the highest amount of money, right? And and then the two guys up front like don't really want to win right and then the third place guy goes by both of them i mean it it would be it would be something else that's for sure that, but then also throw in just to, to get the guys in the mid and the back of the pack you know bunched up and a little yeah. more exciting have like ninth place well be like a, a, a substantially higher i did that last year i did that ryan last year i made seventh or ninth more money and i made 13th more money and honestly, nobody nobody paid attention. The, the the racers on the track didn't really notice or or do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, we just need yeah. we just need Millsap's Millsap's mom out there with a BB gun or something. There, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Uh, thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, take care, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mike's on four. What's up, Mike? What's up, Mike? Oh shit! Yeah. Did you just? Uh, What's up, Mike? I just took a bite of food. That's perfect timing. Uh, anyway, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. I had a quick comment to make. Uh, I noticed in some pictures when I zoomed in on Eli Tomac's purple boots that the reinforcement bars were removed. And I know that when those Tech 10s first came out, they were crazy rigid, and people were cutting out the plastic in the front to allow for more ankle flex. And I thought it was very obvious 
that the reason he had this weird freak injury to his ankle while wearing Tech Tens is because that's the only time I've ever seen him do that modification on the boot. Huh. Um, and if you zoom in on some of those really nice high def oh. photos from earlier in the day, you can kind of see what? that, and then you can compare that to um, um, Sexton's boots or you know the other guys wearing those Tech Tens, and you can see he was the only one who had that happen. So. I figure he didn't mention it because Alpine Stars pays him a lot of money. Yeah, well, he say good things about. The yeah, band. Starling. Yeah. Starling was talking at the beginning of the show that he knows a rider that had some custom. Oh, you, know, you didn't bring that up on the show. That was before the show. Yeah, but before. we can just say it anyways. You know a rider that had a set of custom, a privateer guy that got a set of customs. Yeah, and they were much flexier. Yeah, than the ones they yeah. sell. Yeah, yeah. So you can basically wear it first time, and it feels like a boot that's been yeah. on your foot for a very long time. Right, because they have so many LE stuff. And yeah. they, you know, they want you to get comfortable. And I have tens, and uh, you know, I can vouch they're pretty stiff, man. I go from sevens to tens. I go back and forth. I like both of them; they're great. But I, I, mm-hmm. yeah, I could see where the ten would 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 not you'd not be ideal for right. somebody to just put on without lots of time on them. The know? whole material of the pro boot is is softer material that I that I'm aware of. Um, but also, in in, uh, in A-Star's defense, you know, they've been doing this for years. Yeah. And we don't have a ton now, of Achilles tendons. This is not t- a yeah. new thing for them. This right. is a right. very – they've been doing this for years upon years Custom upon boots. Years. Yes. yes. This and, is not new. And it's I not have, like we've I seen – I have a few pair. And yeah, this it's is – It's not like we've seen Achilles tendon tears No, no, no. All this over the is place. just like a yeah. freak accident. Yeah. So um, – Do you think he had a, a – previous injury or but the thing was kind of aggravated before or do we not you know, know about i don't that? i don't know myself mm-hmm. and i don't know enough about achilles tendon tears to know i've seen strains right i've strained my achilles uh for on bottoms on bottoming and stuff but i don't know yeah i have no idea about eli's situation so yeah oh well well that's all i had to talk about right. guys thanks, thanks for, man uh, thanks for having me on have thank a good you. show thank you very much appreciate it uh scott's on three what's up scott Hey, what's going on, man? What up? Long time no talk. Thanks for taking the call. Yeah. I'm missing my Supercross flagging since everything's gone out east. Yeah, well. But yeah. Uh, I watched this thing, and I finally get a chance to call it live here. Um, is it possible that those ankle saver pegs, Eli would still be riding? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Was, I, that, a, was that a preventive? I mean, yeah, I would think so, but I, he, you know, they also take a lot to get used to, right? I ran them. Yeah, you ran them. Uh, what traders they, Kawasaki I hear you had guys, them. Like pro circuit, you running them, and then you guys were laughing at pro circuit about ankle savers. Is that just not a thing? Yeah, it's. What's it like starting to ride with them? It's uh, it's kind of strange at first because like, I ride so much on my toes that I drop my ankles down a lot, kind of like what happened to um, Eli. And with those, you literally cannot do it. Like, you'll go through, like, a braking bump, and the bike will kind of kick forward, and it almost, like, kicks your feet up in a way because it just it's you uh-huh. can't flex as much. Um, it would have, I believe, saved him in the situation, but in Supercross, I, I remember we were with traders, we, we tried them, and outdoors it was all right, but in Supercross I was like, yeah, there's no way. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I'm not, I'm not gonna start talking about Achilles tendon protection in our industry because you, yeah, ra- no, I don't think you right, you rarely see this. I, I said on a review show, I forget who it was, Starling. Maybe you can remember. I think it was a pro guy who severs Achilles tendon from. He got hit in the back of the boot with a tire while he was laying on the ground. I'm almost positive that was a pro I have rider. No idea about this. You don't this. know what I'm talking about. No. I know somebody that happened to somebody. Maybe it was even just a local friend of mine like I, I don't remember if it was a pro for sure but they were laying on the ground and a guy hit his achilles tendon from the rear you know full speed and severed it from the back of the boot mm. but that like that's such a freak thing like you know how can you protect against that right it's, yeah and all of that so yeah. um but yeah i don't know scott I, you know i don't know exactly i don't know if he had a previous injury i don't know if ankle savers would have saved yeah. him i think it's just one of those weirdo freak things like justin yeah. said earlier yeah yeah it totally is two other quick things off topic Pulp MX privateer team traveling the circuit, yes or no? No. Hell no. Okay. You should do one bike okay. and have a different privateer ride it every weekend. Oh, yeah? Oh, uh, okay. Yamaha, Yamaha supported. And you uh, get like to be treated as a factory guy. That day you get a set of gear for fly. You get a whole setup. I got to go organize racing. all this well, and do all this? You could get it done. Okay. Uh, I'll be your guy. Next thing. Yeah. Um, when do I get to be a guest on the show? 
offer all my Supercross banter, a real life flagger in the studio. Yeah, uh, what kind of race? Scott here what kind flag, of flags the California races. Oh, okay. He wants to be a pulp correspondent. Yeah. I'm just not sure. I don't have an opening. I don't Did know. Did you flag Oakland? Go ahead. Uh, no, I didn't get to make that one. Ah, okay. You have been working a lot there. Yeah. I got the uh, I got the back side of the Dragon Pack at the Triple Crown though at Anaheim. I was really busy there. Dragon's back triple crown. Yeah, that was after the odd. finish. No, uh, yeah, after the finish. Yeah, yeah. that left-hander thing, right. that thing that Sexton was like yeah, launching, launching all the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that That's, was a gnarly dragon. Back. Scott, I'll, I'll get with Marks and we'll try to figure it out. I, uh, Marks has my email. I just, okay. I guess I called it. Like, I got some. What did I get from my gas gas? What? What's being sent to me for something? Uh, you got my email to send me something. For my gas gas, what am I getting? A sprocket? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. He was one of oh. he was one of the first guys that called oh, in. Oh, okay. And he all actually right. had a question so, to go. All with right. It. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. You want a gas gas? You want a sprocket from Rental? Great. Um, right. Thanks, guys. We'll send it to you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for calling, man. Appreciate it. All right, man. We'll see you. Th- thanks, Scott. Thanks. You can't work here if you don't know the difference between the employees, though. Oh yeah. You're out. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> We're tightening it up over here. Yeah, we are. We're yeah. really tightening it up. Uh, yeah. Justin Starling here on the show. JSR, John Sebastian Wall Motorsports. <laughs> Love it. Uh, don't forget to go through the Motorsport banner on uh, pulpmx.com to uh, help us out. It takes you to Motorsport. Make a purchase. We get a small slice of that. Uh, thank you to Starling for giving us a jersey to give away. Uh, Works Connection, we did a Pro Launch Start device. Uh, we did a set of uh, Cherubis Plastic right off Enzo Lopes' bike. We did the Rental Hard Anodized Sprockets. What a night of giveaways. It's yeah. fantastic. Um, just giving back to everyone. And we're giving away $147,000. I got a bunch of texts from the on my privateer group asking what their p- specific placing was paying. So uh, I was going to ask if you could like announce all that, like all the way down. Like, we will put it on the website. Yeah, got it. we're okay. going to put it on our site. We're going to do the prop bets on our website. Yep. But here's the thing. So if you guys are listening, the privateers that are listening, I asked you guys to email me your address and your social number, and about half of you have done it. There is not one check going out. Until I get all this information. So if there's one of you out there that's not sending me the information, all the other privateers that want the money, go go yell at him. The uh, the top twenty pay last year. Yeah, it's the same way. Everyone in the top twenty has to send in all this stuff oh, okay. before it pays out. And yeah. I'm like, Tomac don't care about that hundred grand. Right. <laughs> he didn't even realize that email's in there. And I'm like, I need that ten grand. Or it was eleven grand for me at the time. I'm like, okay. I need it. Can you just send it to me anyways? It took me like five and a half months to get the money. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, these guys don't care. They don't even realize that they're going to make an extra 30 grand. It's not even in their realm. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so, I, yeah, guys, do that yeah, because it so, sucks for some other, like yeah. someone else. <laughs> yeah, I ain't sending one check out. <laughs> Nothing. Do it. Just until, do it. It'll until take I you get five everybody's, any, everybody's info. It'll take you five minutes. Uh, just do it and uh, help so, someone else so, out. So, like I said, uh, maybe. Maybe I got like half in uh, this morning, and then uh, and then I'm still waiting on the other half. So we'll get it out there. We'll you should make it a thing that they have to give that to you before the race yeah, starts, okay, Saturday, and that's we'll your, like their entry the form. That's what Pookie said. Pookie said you should have. You already know your riders. Pookie said you would have went to everybody and said, text me your info right now. You ha- right. If you don't send it in, you're not lining right, up. Right, right, I would do it that yeah. way. It's like your entry form, basically. Yeah, yeah I, should, I should have done that. But I don't, I'm just worried about I just want these guys to, to, F- you, to, to, me, to email me. That's all. What's so hard about that? Uh, you Matt, want people to contact you? The riders, sure. Yeah. Uh, but then don't share my email address with anyone else, please. I want to post that right on Instagram. You don't know my email, do you? I'm sure I can figure it out. Uh, all right. Uh, Marks? No, Marks don't know it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Maxima USA. Uh, Pulp 20 is a code to save with Maxima, whether it's uh, uh, love the SC1 and I love the uh, filter clean. I've been building a project bike that I got from... And I've been using the assembly lube, Maxima assembly lube, yep, on it. my bolts. Yep. Uh, so it's really Red great. Stuff. Pulp 20, yeah. It's Pulp 20 is code to save with those guys. You use Maxima? Absolutely. What's your favorite Maxima oil uh, product? Chain Clean. Chain Clean. Chain Clean. The yellow stuff? No, it's a blue can. Yeah, chain. it's like chain cleanup. Okay, okay. Yeah, so when you wash your bike, yep. you, you spray your All hubs and chain? Makes yeah. everything look brand. Any little grease you got, like from old chain lube or something on the frame anywhere yep. spray it on there let it sit for a sec wash okay. it off makes your chain look brand new again. so i think i have the no mountain, grit i have the there. mountain bike stuff they sent me the chain cleanup for mountain bike Got stuff. It. it's yellow but uh same similar idea yeah it is unbelievable well it gets be like starling get yourself some chain cleanup yeah. uh, no one likes dirt all up in your chain and everything spray that thing in there 
Special pressure wash it yeah. off. Looks brand new. Okay, goddamn. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, Pulp goddamn. twenty is the code to save with Maxima USA. Also with ProFilter.com. Uh, you don't want to clean a dirty air filter. Neither do I. Uh, simply grab the pre-oiled, ready-to-use Pro Filter. Drop it in your motorcycle. It's fantastic. ProFilter.com. They make uh, air and oil filters for street bikes, side by sides, dirt bikes, and everything else. Pulp twenty code to save with those guys. So Pulp twenty code to save at ProFilter and Maxima. Use the codes. All the codes, whether it's Works Connection W, whether it's uh, Guts. Uh, all of those codes are listed online. Wisco and uh, and others are listed on pulpamexshow.com under sponsor, sponsor something, sponsor partners. It's just listed there. Maxima's right, amazing. That's good stuff. Max, where's the codes at? Um, yeah, just under pulpamexshow.com. Yeah, okay, yeah, pulpamexshow.com. Uh, go Thanks. and check out the codes. Save, use the codes, and that way we can keep you know paying Justin Starling to come in studio, buying a flight for him. Paying him his exorbitant amount that he he agreed to to, to get paid crazy to crazy amount, yes, crazy amount. Uh, and uh, I'm in and, the and hole that. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, right. <laughs> uh, also, so thanks to the folks at, at Maxima and Pro Filter and everybody for using the codes. Really appreciate, it. of course, Fly Racing as well. Uh, we're going to talk about Salt Lake City this weekend. Um, how many points do you need to get past Benny? Thirteen. I need another tenth. A tenth place, I'll get yes. you that. I have it wrote down right here. Okay. Yeah. And that, and then who's between you and Benny? Uh, Savachi is six up, Moran's is five up, Harlan is two. So Moran's, Moran's could finish right around you and then beat you. Yes. So you. I was sixteen yeah. points down going into um, this past weekend. Yeah. Behind him. Yeah. And yeah, I'm only five now. So well, anything, he, had a, he had a DNF. But yeah. anything can happen. Yeah. Oh, we just agreed. We just anything saw that. Anything can happen. But but no matter what, who's behind you? Do you Norin, know? Norin seven points. Seven back. So three. I feel that's pretty safe for you. Uh, Norin's, Norin's the one that you just don't know which one you're going to get that no. weekend. Um, that's a good point, too. So I'm not ruling him out. Yeah. But I'm also. But you're going to, even if he gets you, you'll get 20th. Right? Yeah. I, I like, would, I would literally have to get like last and him get up in there. Um, but, but I'm saying like, even if he passes you, you're going to be 20th because you're going to pass Joey. Yeah, he's six up, so I need seven. I need sixteenth okay. or better to really se- like to secure my spot. Secure a season. No matter ending. what, sixteenth or better will do. Yes, that. which I feel like you can. I, uh, I mean, I just got a tenth, and I came from sixteen. So if and, I can't top, and 16, this is gonna be similar track, similar soil. You I, know what I mean? And I got ninth here last year. I feel good. My confidence is high. The bike is great. Yep. Um, I am not yep. sweating it, but yep. you also can't just be like, oh, yeah, this is a lock. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you uh, never know. You go down the first anything turn. Anything can happen. You go down the first turn, you get a bad start. Yep. That anything can happen. Yeah. But, um, yeah, my my goal is to not think about anything other than just trying to crack the top ten again. Yeah. Um, I mean, Harlan was nine. I'm ten. Um, it can happen. Not going to be easy by any means. Uh, a little bit better start will help. But, um, yeah, if I can get past Benny and Savachi, that'd be awesome. Uh, Harlan is possible with just two points. Moran's will be a little bit tougher with five, but I'm not thinking about Moran's or Harlan with it at all. I'm thinking about Benny and Savachi. Yeah, that's the best way to put yeah. it. Yeah, I, I agree, yeah. and uh, and hopefully you can do it and get some yep. season-ending money. That would be great. Yep. Uh, what a year for privateers! You just uh, yeah, you guys it's are just crushing la- it lately. Last year this happened too. People yeah. went out, and it's just you have to stay in it. Like you. That's one thing I pride myself in is I haven't missed a race in a really long time. Yeah. I've been able to go to every single one and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – I mean, the one thing I look at is, like, some private – or not privateers. Some factory guys will have, like, a, a small injury and they'll sit out. Mm-hmm. Us privateers, we need the money. Yeah. We show up no Yeah, like Adam what. probably could have raced New York. Right? Yeah. But he just played yeah. it safe, hit his head, played it safe. You and might have been That's probably a smarter thing that way. Yeah. But, I mean, we just we just line up. We just go <laughs> and, and – uh, I mean, I've been doing it with a knee all year, and I get a tour at all shot before racing starts, and yep. we just go. Yeah, and we just handle it. That's what yeah. people That's people are listening. Like, that's that's privateer out of <laughs> If I don't race that weekend, I'm not getting any paycheck. Yeah. I, yeah. Got, I got bills. Yeah. <laughs> I got How much longer do you want to race for? Um, so you turned 30. Yeah, I just turned 30. Um, after how the year was going this year, I was like, man, I don't know. You know, like, is this my last year, you know, or yeah. can I do another one? Um then we realized how many main events I had. Uh, I'm at 94 okay. right now. Um, I can get 95 this weekend. I think hitting 100 would be really cool. Uh-huh. So I'm like, okay, for sure we're going to do another one. Um, but to be honest with you, we're going to do a complete revamp of the program for next year. Can we break that news or no? Uh, I mean, there's really not much news to break, honestly, other than I just want to make a lot of changes. Well, no, I mean, can we break the change? What do you mean? Changes that we talked about before the show. 
Bike wise? Yeah. Uh yeah, I mean, there's a Honda in my garage. That's that's where we're at okay, right now. Okay, there um, we go. So yeah, the plan is to go ride ride red. Ride red again, oh, still Kiefer. just a different. <laughs> you and Kiefer ride yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, plan is to ride red, and um, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm riding red now, right. but just just the Honda. Yeah, um, yeah good point. <laughs> yeah, so it's a great uh, point. You're still red. Yeah, now, not right? a whole lot of a of a change there, but like, yeah, I want to revamp the program. I mm -hmm. know what I need to do with it. Um, I know the way I need to run it. Um, I realize that results are not going to make that program change so i'm going to have to do something yeah. with content and so on and so forth mm -hmm. um but yeah I, I with that change and having my fiance she's kind of the team manager of it and it's helping yeah. run a lot of the stuff uh and I have that required that gives me help you know um i think i can make it something a lot bigger i would be really interested in getting a second rider yeah um, wow, look at you. if that's something that's possible to do yep um so yeah i I'm 30. I feel the best I've ever felt. I'm ending the season getting better again um, without those two two big crashes and the one injury and missing those two races. I probably would be up there with Benny is yeah. right now already, you know, or maybe we're Chiz's at 103. So Chiz has gotten better, huh? Yeah. Chiz so is chizzing again. Chiz is chizzing again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I plan to go as long as I possibly can um, until I'm just – I feel like I'm gate fill. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm gate fill. Yeah. So I make mains. I, I've i made the same amount of mains so far this year that I did last year. Mm -hmm. If I make one this weekend, um, I've made more than I made last year. So I'm just going to keep the ball rolling. Um, I would like to start doing some more overseas stuff again mm -hmm. um, and traveling with my, she will then be my wife at that time. So, um, yeah, we'll see. But mm -hmm. there's no plans to stop. Yeah. There is. No, we're going to uh, we're yeah. going to keep going. I'd like to build the program bigger and uh, keep, keep riding it. Yeah, just keep going, and I think the the change for for next year to to ride a Honda is the move I need to make. Um, to just, I'm not saying that I'm stagnant or anything, but mm -hmm. just not getting any help from those guys is really tough. Um, I don't get anything from them at all. So, um, yeah, I think going to a brand that you know is willing to support and mm -hmm. and is is down for that type of stuff and. I don't know. I just think it's good. It's a yeah. good move for me. So, uh, yeah. You see gonna... yourself like your dad's a, a lifer, right, in the industry? Yeah. He worked for Planet Honda forever as a yeah. mechanic, and then now he's with the AMA. And yeah. He's been there forever. Do you see yourself getting an industry job when you're done? Um, I mean, it might be tougher in Florida. Yeah, but I would yeah. like to. Yeah. Uh, it would have to be remote. I, I'd like to stay in Florida. I'd, I won't leave that because I'm, you know, getting married and starting a family. Yeah. Yeah. Up in uprooting that and going elsewhere it just is not for me um my fiance is from california she doesn't want to go back i spent my time in california yeah. i don't want to go out there um we both love florida i'm born and raised she lives there uh, we live really close to her family my family's close so mm -hmm. uh if something was remote yes yeah. um but yeah i'll stay in the industry for sure somehow something. um but yeah like ama would be cool but going to ohio you know mm -hmm. isn't idea uh for me so yeah, yeah. i don't know right. we'll see but right. as of right now it's not even really a thought in my mind sure. it's uh yeah. just keep racing starling riding red riding red yeah, big that. shocker yeah, tweet that out let's tweet that out marks you got it uh this bike i haven't i paid for it like i mean i, I bought the thing so i didn't get anything free motorsport.com tweet at talent segment thank you to motorsport.com go through the banner again oem parts aftermarket parts pulp MX is the code to save with 15% off anything from the folks at Michelin, uh, motorcycle tire-wise. So go through the, the Michelin, go through the pulp banner to get to the motorsport, then go to Michelin, then enter the code, then save 15%. And besides that, great prices on uh, X-Brand and Fly Racing and Renthal and a Chair Breeze and more Firepower. Uh, all right, X-Brand goggles. Or sorry, motorsport.com, tweet it down. It's the motorsport.com tweets at Talon segment. <laughs> These questions are submitted at Pulp MX Show on Twitter, and uh, Talon goes through them and picks the best ones, and, and let's do this, Talon. All right. Uh, first one from the voice of the drunken people. Stardog, what's the plan on – what's the plan for after racing? Any possibility of trying to squeeze into DB's size 5 shoes and pick up the mic? Well, we we just, just talked about this, yeah, so. Literally, but he was on the phone. He was on yeah. the phone. Got um, a little bit of – I'll vouch for him yeah. on that one. Yeah. Um, I have no idea right now. It's just focus on racing. From uh, Snowboard6969, 
What would you do if you had a friend agree to pay fifty dollars on a championship wager and then ghost you and other friends when it came time to pay it? Oh, oh my! I paid my dues. I paid my debt. Pay your debts, Alan. Pay your debts. Oh, I was just about to say that too. Damn. Got him. Is this a Damn. snowboard thing? Yeah. You should try it. I, you should try I, no, it sometime. No. It's called being a fucking friend. <laughs> no, listen. I don't. No, listen. I, I'd fly the girls in from L.A., boy. I, I don't. All you guys do is probably, like, seriously, talk shit about we my appearance. We have carrots in our ears. And you, you talk shit about around. my appearance. You talk no. shit about the show. No. Like, it's called being a fucking friend. You should try it sometime. I, I, I just feel like I'll get ripped apart if I showed up in there. No, you wouldn't. What I need to do is create. You'd be a, loved. I need to create. It's great. So is it like Slack where it's just open all day? I no or like, Slack okay. It's kind of like Slack, yeah, where you type in a message and the messages are, are uh, sequential. Is it on app. your phone? You can have it on your phone, yes. Yep. Okay, and, and you, okay, so you just have it on your phone as an app and you just open it when you need mm-hmm. to and contribute to it or whatever. Yep. There are photos on there, right? There are photos, yes. That would be the reason I might come on. Join us. Uh, We're going to get you set but, up after the but, show. But I don't want, I, I so, hey, Mathis, you suck. Hey, Mathis, you said... Eli won this race in 17, but he actually won it in 18. I don't want, I don't, you know, I don't want to just get beat down. You don't have to respond to him. Uh, I know, but I mean, there's no, nothing. Says Are you, you have on to. there? Yeah, all the time, like talking, like back uh, and forth. Not like on the snowboard part. I kind of have my own part, like with Lamb and Tiller and all these guys that I talk to them, and there are people that have helped me go racing. Okay, this but year. hold on. So, someone started a Discord channel. It's called Discord, not yes. snowboard, but Kiefer called it snowboard, and we yeah. we run with it, but. I have Someone, that on my gear. It's literally a carrot with snowboard. It's on my gear. So let me get this straight, Starling. You and I are friends, but we don't know each other great, but we're right. friends. And then there was a Discord channel about Pulp MX show that you just heard from the show. Yep. And then you joined it. Oh. And then you met people that are listeners. And now they are like your friends, your real friends. Yes. And then they help you drive your van around and all that. Yeah, the best part and is, none of is these like, guys, you're not scared of any of these guys raping you? No, or, no, or you want to hear the like, best one is like Justin <laughs> drove my van from Justin Lamb. He's yeah. part of you it. You raped her. <laughs> he <laughs> drove my van from California to, what, what was it Arlington or Houston? Houston. I never met him until he got to Houston. But you talked to him a whole bunch. Yes. Yeah. But like I didn't. No, I, I know. Didn't. I I rode with the guy. He's yeah. a normal guy. And then same with same with Tiller. He needs a haircut. Same thing. But like I have yeah. become super close to them, but and so I talk th- to them all every day. This is all just through the show. Yes. Like just these people. Yes. And these are your friends. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Right. Like they are like, like some of my best friends. Yeah. Honestly. I talked to them after like the main event. Like the first thing I did was like I mean obviously like talk yeah. to my parents and stuff. And then yeah. I jumped into the Discord and like talked to them. And my my actually my. I'm not going to say it on live, but like yeah. it was good. My yeah, yeah. Just don't worry th- about it. So if you were is, in it, you would see it. So this is a thing. whole like uh, um, uh, online community of friends. Yes, and it's from. But pulp. it's all based around pulp and max. It's all pulp fans. It's all that's, pulp that's, fans. That's but insane. The to me. amount of people that come up to me, even on weekends, and they're like, "Man, we love you in the Discord." Like when you talk here and there, or like yeah. they like we see you on this and pulp and like it. It's awesome. You uh, really should like uh, the fact that like you are pulp and max. And you aren't yeah, in the Discord. I, it's kind of slapping the face to Pulp and Mexes. I don't want to go on there because whenever I'm in Vital, it's just bad news. It's not Vital. I know, but it's I'm just saying my vital. idea is thinking it's a message board, but a live one, like an interactive live yeah. message board where you just talk shit on Pulp and Mex and motocross. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it's like a chat room on steroids, Steve. Basically. It is yeah. seriously like you don't have to respond. If you don't want to respond to something, don't respond to it. Yeah. I do that sometimes. Yeah. It is what it is. But like. Like you know, I don't want to hear about ah the 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 Feld sucks and AMA sucks and you know like a message board like where it's everyone complaining about everything like I don't it's yeah. not that bad right right it, it's really not and like I said you don't have to respond to it but like right. if you popped in there and you know someone asked a question that they're very interested and you don't have to get a, a call where you're like oh pff, man I can't believe yeah. like they can ask it in there you know and they can talk to them there you don't you can respond in two days I need to create an account you do and just lurk yep. lurk like a noops <sighs> you die. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. Every time I see Dark, that's how I Is Dark in there? Uh, Yeah. Dark's in there. Yep. Absolutely. Dark's in there. I think you're the only one that's not. I really do. I think you are. Talon's not in there. No, Talon's not in there. Talon's definitely in there. Oh, you are? Yeah. You you said you were. (laughs) I thought you said you don't go in snowboard. Well, I don't don't check it like daily, and I'm not keeping up with 
like everything that's happening in there, but I'll go through every once in a while and Tits see what that's kind of that's kind of me outside of like the we have it's Starling Privates, which is people that have yeah. supported me. That's how I am. I will go through and like lurk a little bit through snowboard, but well, and, you well, don't they have talk, to. They talk so much. Like if you miss an hour, you're you're not catching up <laughs> yeah. on everything. It's t- tits ain't in it. Tits is definitely not in it. Okay, all right. No. There we go. So I heard he started Marty and Ke- Party. And Kiefer's not in tits it either. Tits started Marty Party. <laughs> We're going to run with and that kids, one. And, and Kiefer's not in there either because he doesn't even know what it is. Uh, I don't think Kiefer's Kiefer can't even work a computer. He can barely yeah. work a computer. Uh, you, should, you should be it's, in it. It's interesting, though. That So, yeah, this professional racer. Like They've you, been my mechanic. He you, was my mechanic. You have we had this, to do subframe swaps. Tiller's been my mechanic. Yeah. Like, all these people from yeah. Discord has That's crazy literally been my mechanics yeah, yeah, this which year is, as well. Which is awesome in a way that. These fans that are just listening, fans of the show, the listeners of the show, have met a main event guy and helped him out. And you know, I mean, dinner that, with that's them. really like cool. We had, a, right. we had a pretty big dinner. I'm not in going Nashville. to dinner with anybody. I'm well, not, no, I'm it's not like, but that. it's like there's people that right. we just know. Like in yeah. in Nashville was cool. We all went to dinner. I was hoping Lynn was going to go, but he didn't. So it's cool that he showed up here. Like, it's it is cool. Like the friendship that I've made yeah, through it with these no, people. I, and yeah. honestly, a lot of the reason that the van. And I have gotten to the races is because of Discord. Wow! And it's snowboard, and that they have a logo on my jersey. Yeah. They have a logo. And on the my carrots shroud. come from me making fun of the yep. all the YouTube people. Yeah, the yep. carrots in the ears and stuff. Yep. Um, like Steve, la- last year, snowboard we sponsored uh, Carno. Remember, yep. we yep. all had our faces yep. on his bike. And yep. you guys were all p- part of that, that lamb, right? Tiller, yeah. Tiller organizes a lot of that stuff, yep. and he's really good at, at taking right. care of that stuff. And right. he's Tiller's awesome. Gets all the stuff. Yeah, he's a good dude. Starling, and uh, yeah. it's it's really cool. Actually. Well, I I have my own little community, guys. It's called Patreon. I have my own yeah. little community, community, so you don't have to get paid for everything. Yeah, you know, me you and my know. friends over at Patreon. <laughs> you so, and your friends. so maybe we'll maybe we'll do like a Patreon versus snowboard. So you, you have to it uh, costs money battle. to be your friend, is what you're saying, <laughs> basically. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one, Charlie. <laughs> hey, speaking of dinner, by the way, uh, I tweeted this out a couple weeks ago. I went to dinner with um, uh, A Ray in Tampa, and he broke his thumb the next day. I went to dinner with uh, Phil in Oakland. He broke his wrist. I went to dinner with Benny in Nashville. He broke his collarbone the These next day. the day. next days, too. Yeah, yeah, the next days on Fridays. So, Starling, you <laughs> – I meant to bring this up earlier. You're taking no chances. No. Nope. So, we ordered some pizza for dinner. Yep. You ordered your own food. Me and, uh, me and Lamb ordered Chipotle. And then you went outside. We were not on your property when we ate the so food. So, your thinking is <laughs> it's okay to be in the same building as me because in the Supercross – Supercross, every, we're in the same we're building. same building. So you're okay to do the show here. But if it, anything building. that costs you money. Yeah. And is sort of a dining, food, yeah, yeah, dining, a food or or dining experience. Yeah. yeah and uh, any of that, um, I'm not taking the risk. Yeah. So, yeah, we ordered Chipotle and we ate it on not even the driveway. We yeah. ate it on the street. We went off the property. We were off the, off the property. Mark's got a photo. Yeah. We, docu- you've documented yep. this, but this uh, is your thinking. None of your, I have not drank a single water from you. Yeah. Uh, none of that. This is a water from Lamb that he brought. Yeah. Um, I asked him before he walked in, like, hey, you have a water? Because, like, I'm not getting anything out of his fridge. Uh, I also yeah. usually s- stay here at night. Yeah. We're not, not staying here. Not doing that. We're yeah. not doing yeah. it. We got wow. a hotel. We're going to leave in the morning. Well, listen, Benny, A Ray, and Phil. I, and I, I know I don't race tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but it's just, you I'm can't not, be too I'm safe. I'm not taking it. Right. In the summer, man, I will drink the white claws you have in the yeah, fridge, yeah, whatever, yeah, the right, food. Right, I don't care. Right, I, sm- right. I can smell. Pookie's cooking something down yeah. there that smells amazing, and I can't it. have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I hope she doesn't take offense to that, but I just can't take the risks right now. Understood. Can't Understood. take it. I, what I have seen uh, happen. Is this uh, is this weird behavior? Is this sort of snowboard weird behavior that happens a lot? or you know? No, no. Okay. This, is, this is just me okay. uh, being scared okay. of uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I saw your tweet. And, yeah. and uh, it's not I me being superstitious about anything other than I just saw you tweet it, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm good then. Yeah. I'm not going to eat anything there. And God. yeah, you were like, so what do you want for dinner? Yeah. I'm good. I got yeah. my own food coming. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I would say this this trip is I'm actually in the hole uh, for coming here. No but uh, yeah, no, not uh, nothing. Okay. All right, Talon, next question. <laughs> From Slow Ride 858 Does Honda's desire to run the number one plate next year factor into Sexton's next deal? How official is the unofficial KTM deal? No, yeah, I think he's going to KTM. I, I don't think it. I think I think Honda has a right to match, but none of these OEMs, if you choose to leave, they don't match and keep you generally. No. Barsha, Yamaha did it with Barsha, I think. Uh, they matched Barsha it. Barsha was good for Yamaha. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't normally happen. No. no. From the Big T one one four, Starling, as a former life swapper yourself, how disappointed are you on Pope and Kiefer not following through? Uh. 
Yeah, still, yeah. still pretty bummed about I'll that. I'll be honest. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm not going to go uh, FMIP on this, but right, uh, right. yeah, it was a bummer because I was looking forward to it. I mean, every time I kept hearing the life swap thing, I mean, I was, yeah. I was on the show Wife Swap, if I don't, you guys don't know. I mean, every, um, I feel, like, I feel like everyone knows. I know, right? Um, but yeah, I was, I was looking forward to it, not in like seeing anybody struggle, but just yeah, it's yeah, different yeah. doing someone else's I, stuff. I, I so have a great comeback. We, I we, was, we uh, let a lot of people down. Yeah, I was looking forward to that. So I'm, I, I was bummed, but it is what it is. From JVG, did anyone check in on Tomac Superfan Dylan, and should he be on Suicide Watch? Dude, poor Dylan. I haven't heard uh, that guy talk in I don't, a year yeah. or two what, years. What, what, is he just not a fan anymore? Do we know? Does anybody have a Dylan update? Is he a Cowie fan? Nobody knows. Nobody knows? Okay. He was working like the night shift, but that yeah. was like a year that ago. That was a long time ago, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, I'm not mad about him not calling in. Right. <laughs> Uh, while we're on that topic, from Kevin for Zaka twenty nine, Steve is Tomax injury and how it happened the weirdest injury to have happened in our sport. No, no, but it is pretty strange though. It wasn't even a crash. No, it it's is a simple over jump. But even with the guys with like the football players, they just running and it just blows out on them, right? Like it's a normal you know range I think of motion when you just injury. See an injury, it's always um, a crash. Yeah. So I think that's weird. Right. Someone replied that Tommy Searle broke a rib uh, putting on his boots. Okay. Right. I've popped a rib out by, like, sneezing and stuff, so. Yeah, there's, there is that. Yeah. Uh, from 671 Mac, what 450 privateer makes his first main at Salt Lake? Uh, yeah, we got Lane Shaw. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll give you one. I got one. Mason Kerr. He would have yeah. got it, but Carnout Carnout dirtied him. I heard about it, which is fine. Car, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't dirty. It wasn't a T bone, but it was aggressive by Carnow. He knocked him down. Yeah. but Kerr was coming. Kerr is so underrated. He is really good, yeah. and his whoop speed. There's a good yeah. set of whoops. He's this a weekend. big boy, so I think whoops are. He's not, yeah, yeah, I I could see Kerr doing it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mason Kerr. Yeah, he was right. He should have made it this weekend. From Jack Gaffney, to the guy whose hockey team is about to get swept out of the second round. I uh, hate to see it, by the way. If you could move the SX finale to any city that isn't Las Vegas, mm. where would you move it and why? First of all, in 1942, the Leafs came back from 3-0. It's not over. <laughs> Second of all, uh, the Leafs suck. Uh, thirdly, I would say Vegas, but then he said, except for Vegas. So, I like the LA Coliseum. I don't like the area around the LA Coliseum, but it's cool we're going back there. Historic, right? Nashville. Uh, Nashville? Okay. Nashville's cool. It was cool. People dug it. Yeah. yeah, it's, it, a, yeah. it's a cool yeah, city. It it's cool. fun. I wish it was a dome. Well, aren't they? I heard they were building one in like three years. Oh, really? They were going to have yeah, one or something are. like uh, that. Hey, t Wolfie, was that question about the privateer's first ever main or just a main? Uh, first ever. Main. Oh, yeah. Kerr made a main already. Oh, he has? He has. Yeah. Salt Lake City. I'd have to see a list of riders. Okay. To be honest, so I, I, thought, I thought it was just, uh, I knew Kerr had made one main because I've interviewed him. I thought it was just uh, a pr first main of the year. So first, let me open main up. ever. Let's circle back to this. Let's go. We'll go we can live go first timing. of the year because first ever might be. Go four fifty combined. Uh, Harmon's made a main. Uh, Richard Taylor. I would say Richard Taylor, or no, Devin's already made one. Yeah, those guys have all. Yeah, has no. I'm sure Richard. Are you talking about four fifty main yeah, or he's, just he's main? Four fifty. Richard Taylor. Richard Taylor. We'll go that Richard Taylor. Or if Harmon shows up this weekend. Harmon's made a main on a four fifty. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. Don't ca don't don't quote me, but pretty sure. All no, right. he for sure has. You're yeah, right. Right. All right. Uh, from Philip in Discord. Don't know who that could be. How much would Jay Coop have benefited from staying in the 450 SX to finish the season? Well, a ton, obviously. I just I still don't understand that deal, man. I just don't get it. Uh, he'd signed it. He liked it. He did it. Agreed to it. He didn't. All of that. But yeah, I uh, yeah, it would have been great, right? He uh, he was really good, uh, Starling. Who? Sorry, just I was just reading Discord stuff. Stop it, okay? I thought that was a question just to you. No, it wasn't. I'm going to oh. ban you from Discord. No. It's my Discord. Why can't well, I, someone I can thinks that those uh, hey, those hey, guards hey. are light speed, but they are not light speed. So my, my fork guards, oh. they said they were light speed. They're not. Your they lugs, are, they your are your lug protectors. Yes, my lug protectors. Sorry, yeah. what was the question yeah, you're, again? You're banned from Discord. Sorry. No, you're Phone's not. closed on no. that. I just was interested in that one. Uh, how much would Jay Coop have benefited from staying in the 450s? A lot. Tons financially as well and like her fernandez got hurt 
And why wouldn't they just put him out there? Imagine they put him on this weekend. and then I I already Hey, Lars told me that there was a thought if both Lawrence brothers clinched and Chase needed help to put both Lawrence brothers on a my, 250 in the 450 class. My dad texted me about this. Yeah. Um, they, he, my dad's like, I think he's going to race. And I'm like, no, I promise you, now that the championship's wrapped, yeah. you're not going to see a Lawrence brother on a 450. No. You're going to let No, them. they were going to ride a 250 in the 450 class. Oh, don't make us look that bad. That's what Lars Lawrence said. They thought about it, but they don't obviously need it. You don't need, need that now. anymore. No. Let them stay down. Let it be a cool little final race for Jet. On a 250 yep. and brother to brother, that'd be way cooler. Ride Engineering, ridedestengineering.com. Pulp Fan 20 is the code to save with those guys. Ride Engineering's got a new product to replace the stock stop start switch on 2023 KTM and up KTM Husqvarna's. Uh, the billet dual switch bolts onto a throttle housing, providing two large buttons black for start, red for stop. MSRP 109.95, uh, available in about a week. Pulp Fan 20 is the code to save. So this cleans up the uh, the, the um, handlebar a little bit on the newer KTM. So ridedeskengineering.com, Pulp Fan 20 is the code to save. From Atwood 1994, with silly season ramping up, which rider is the most likely to lose a factory seat? Nichols. Well, I don't – he's kind of a fill-in. Nichols. You're just mad because you didn't think about it first. No, I just don't it's really a, consider him answer. like a, a full-time rider anyways. Yeah. I kind of seen him as like a, yeah. they need to fill a spot. Ask Discord. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Ask my guys in snowboard. They know. All right. Uh, for From the Steve Matthews band for Stardog, have you thought about switching to a blue front fender next year or are you locked in on the gas gas? Uh, well, we've talked about this again. The other um, red he, bike. He's, the the he's blue bike is really good. I did ride it. Um, everyone in my friend group at home, uh, brother-in-law just got one. Um, I rode it on the off weekend that we had, not the one with Oakland, but that bike is yeah. unbelievable. Bike of the year. It is a great motorcycle. Thank you. So, but nope, I will be staying a, just a different shaped red one. No! <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Motorsport.com, tweet at Talon segment. That's uh, that's it. At Pulp Mech Show for more on that. Uh, voicemails. I haven't played them for a while. 702-586-7857. Uh, Stardog was here when I was doing some of them and heard some of these people that call in. And yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. But here's the best of the best that was uh, for the last little while. Uh, voicemails. Call anytime. Leave a message. Here we go. Hey, Steve. Um, I just had something I wanted to add in regards to your conversation with the fan about uh, JT and his uh, – we could say happiness or something, you know, and just his schedule. Well, I think I, I think I got the answer, man. Is uh, you know, he he needs to start riding again. I mean, we he needs to be at you know the ride at Millville Day, and he also needs to be at World Bet. Um, I'm not saying he's got to be full time again, but you know, I think it'd be good for the guy to you know have a bike around and just go put in some motos once in a while. I mean, because ultimately, you know. That's what uh, that's what drives the heart, and uh, yeah, man. So you know, uh, uh, it's all good. But that's what I think. All right, peace. All right, yeah, JT, go riding. I mean, I don't know, man. He's. I went into my JT dissertation a couple weeks ago. He needs to. Does he not ride like at all? No, he needs to relax, not have so many jobs, and pay more attention to being in the moment. Yeah. Thank you. Steve, friendly reminder, your little feud with Gypsy Tales. I don't have a feud. Uh, Mark, so hopefully you can bring up a time stamp for us. Bring it up. But, bring it up. Uh, media going to races. You chat on this, dude. Said, how can you be media for not going to the races? Or if you're not going to the races, whatever. And now last week you're backing yourself up. I don't need to go to every race. Fuck you, Steve. Love the show. Thanks for all the content. You guys are awesome. Yeah, Thank like here, here's again. What a roller coaster that was. I know. I never I said hearing that one too. <laughs> I go to every race. I've never gone to every race, even in my mechanic yep. career. I've never made every race all year. My point of being, you have to go to the races, most of them, if not all of them, to comment about the races. And I stand by that. I've missed four supercrosses this year, the most I've missed in a long time. I get it. But I feel like I went to 13 of the 17. I'm going to Salt Lake this weekend. And I never, ever said you have to go to every single race. I, I, I've gotten this a little bit of my social media. 
Uh, you, you said you got to go to races. You do. Do you have to go to every single race? No, you don't. But you, should you go to one fucking race? Yeah, you probably should. Right. And so that's my whole point. If you're going to talk about the races, you should go to the races. Not every single race, but a vast majority of them because you see so many things that go on that you'll never see on TV and you'll never notice. And I stand by that, and anybody who disputes me is fucking wrong. You watch the show on TV, yes, you can see the replays, you can see things like that, and then you go to the race. That's how you report on the races. Am I perfect at every race? Nope, never said I was. Don't understand where this came from, where when I miss a race, I get some sort of shit on social media. Yeah. Because I've never gone to every single race, ever. So not doing it now. But, you know, for example, uh, well, that's a bad example because – the lap chart show it. Kenny went from 22nd to 2nd. Yeah. You know, did you know that he got hung up in the second turn? Probably not. I don't know if they showed it on TV. I don't remember. I don't think they did. So he got up from the first turn fall, went to, into the left, the right-hander mm -hmm. after the quad, and there were guys laying there, and he got hung up, and he had to roll back down the berm and get going again. No shit. Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, didn't see it. Uh, didn't see it on TV. I don't think I, I watched the mains today, but I, didn't, I don't remember seeing it. And no one would know that, but that was another five seconds that Kenny had to, yeah. uh, to make up. Again, there's an example. You have to go to the races to know what's going on. Yep. Not all of them, but majority of them. So that guy, he told me to fuck off. Or he said, fuck you. So fuck you, caller. <laughs> fuck you back. That guy's probably on Discord. That's probably a Discord listener right there. I Snowboard. hope it is. All right. All right, Steve. Just calling here. Got a problem with the app. Trying to watch this goddamn race day live. The, the 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 main show has been playing for about you know the last two hours or so. I can't even log in to watch anything. Can't get going. The race day live just hasn't come up on the app. I'm just waiting here. I, I, I could be watching the race right now. You know, I could be watching that. But no, no, we can't because race day live isn't available. I'm checking this thing every two minutes. It just doesn't come up. Anyway, I couldn't wait until Tuesday to call the Pulp MX show. Sorry, Monday night for you guys. Anyway, I'm going to get off now. Hopefully, I've calmed down enough and I can ring the Pulp show calmly on Tuesday. That's uh, that's a race tech rant, I believe, about the uh, race day live uh, Supercross app for overseas people. There we go. Thank hmm. you. Racetech.com. Yeah, so a couple things with uh, Denver coming up. Last year, we went to Denver, and JT cool guide me hard. Um, we were sitting in our seats watching practice, and I got in my seat, and I said, oh, there's JT. I said, hey, what's up, JT? He shook my hand. He goes, are you Jeremy? I said, no. He goes, oh, and turn, started talking to his fly entourage there. Oh, so JT. cool guide hard by JT. Um, Unbelievable. Cool haircut, though, I guess. Um, second off, shout out Kiefer, the new clamps for the KTM Husqvarna's from Riot Engineering. Those are sick. Love them. And um, that's it. Kiefer thumbs up. JT thumbs down. Oh, ouch. JT was probably in the just in the mode Dude, too. Dude, he's, he's very so, serious. About yeah, races, I, you know, you can't really. Yeah, you can't do that. I really like the Kiefer guy. Hey, Steve, we're sitting here listening to your uh, um, – we're on lunch break, sitting here listening to your podcast. Just uh, saying thank you. Keep up the great work. We appreciate it. We listen to it every uh, – we listen to it all week during lunch. Thank you. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. He's probably this, on Discord. It's the positive voicemail. I couldn't believe it. Hey, what's going on, Steve? It's Gringo. Hey, listen, man, I was just watching a race in Nashville, man. I'm calling bullshit on the way they took Webb off the track. You know what I'm saying? The dude took such a jolt to that neck and his head, and uh, obviously he was jacked up. He don't know what's going on, but yet you're moving around. That dude should have been thrown on a backboard. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe I'm out of line, man, but I think that dude should have been on a backboard, secured neck, donut, whatever they put there on the back of his neck, and then I watch him, he's jolting in the back of that effing cart, uh, you know, they're taking him off the track. You don't know what kind of damage he's got in his neck. You know what I'm saying? He he, he don't know what's going on. He's obviously in pain or crying. I don't know what was going on there when I because it was a little blurry, but what the fuck, dude? How do you know that dude's neck ain't snapped, partially broken or something? You know what I mean? 
I don't know. I thought that was fucked up, and I was just no, calling her to, 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 to rant, vent. I was, it was very frustrating to watch him take. I guess I left the mic on while we were. I said that's for I, sure I, I, us talking in the background, right? Yeah, I right? couldn't really figure it out. Uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here listening. To it, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, huh? What? That is. Why did that I turn sounds the mic? Like our conversation I was checking my from computer earlier. to make sure I wasn't playing what, stuff. Did, did in I, the background. We were all looking did around, I, super why weird. Why would I turn the mic on mid voicemail? Check. Well, I got answers for that, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say them out loud. Yeah. I was like, dude, that had to have been our conversation well, earlier. You'll bring in the ruckus to that edge. Thanks, Gringo, for your call. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what what, what happened there, but um, yeah, I got a few things about the Cooper Webb thing uh, after Nashville, and like again, I've said this before on the show. I'm not a medical doctor. Those guys are actually on the scene. Yep. Are they perfect? No, but maybe they got the coop and said, "Do you have any pain in your neck?" In your arms, in your legs, do you have any shooting pain? He's like, nope, nope, nope. Like, can you move? Like, maybe they asked him questions, and he gave them no indication of a spine injury, yeah. and so they took him off the way they did. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm not there. I'm not the ones talking to them. I'm not even a doctor. Yeah. So all these people on social media that are yelling and screaming about it, you know, I don't know. I just defer to the guys that are there and the experts. Yeah. Like, these people we see. Honestly, I think they throw the red flag too much. I think they throw it too soon uh, because I think generally they, they err on the side of caution, right? Yeah, and that's all so it's for. So when you see them err on the side of caution with red flags and, and you see this different stuff, that they, they look very uh, p- professional and proper, why would they not be professional and proper with Cooper Webb? Right. That's where I'm at, yep. and I wasn't there. So, I mean, are they perfect again? No. Right. But uh, – um, yeah, I don't know, man. It seemed like maybe t- they asked some questions. It's a tough call, too, when they do it so quick, you know, and everything's happening so fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, he probably said, no, no, like, uh, I yeah. feel fine, whatever. Right. And then it's just, okay, keep going. But yeah, I mean, again, and maybe they're, again, they're not perfect, but I just choose to not skewer them yeah. for things I don't know. Right. Because I've seen them be really, really proactive and yeah. really careful. Yeah. I, maybe too much, in my opinion. Yeah, sometimes. it's, man, that's a tough. Yeah, it's a tough call on that one. Right, it right. really is a tough yeah. call. Like you really don't know what the right thing to say is, or what the right in, even input is without yeah. getting yep. something. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, anyways, that's where I just err on that side because I, I heard a lot about it after national. Yeah, I, I personally didn't, um, right. but I also really wasn't looking at the situation because I was getting ready to go on the gate. Right. So my mind is like, ah, don't look at that. Like, <laughs> you get are you mind. that way? Yeah. yeah. I I a don't bit. like to look at that stuff because I will. I'm older, yeah. so I get a little freaked out. Right. I do. Sure. Um, it. You don't want to see that type of stuff happen. And when we saw him get hit, we were all like, oh, my God. You know, like how hard his head got hit by AC's right. wheel. Right. Um, so, yeah, we yeah. – I, I, other people were sitting there when he rode by on the mule, like just eyeballing him. And yeah, I'm yeah. just – I looked away. Yeah, like, yeah. Nope, no. That's I, out of respect, too, to Cooper. Like he doesn't want eyes on him. He doesn't want to get stared at no. by everyone. So No, it makes sense. Jeff, what's up? You got an Eli Tomac theory? Uh, yeah, call me fucking crazy. But would yeah. it be wrong for me to speculate if – uh? Eli is definitely on the, the downside of his career, looking forward to retirement, probably trying to make as much money as he can. Obviously doesn't care about winning too much, and Honda is willing to put 250 guys in the big bike class for a championship. Is it crazy to think that maybe behind the scenes, Honda hasn't won a 450 title since 2002. Maybe they could buy one, oh hypothetically. My God. I'm just saying. No, yeah, you're I crazy. I mean, it's a that freak is, accident, right? Nope. <laughs> you're no. crazy. Yeah, you're Throws absolutely. the dog pisser and pulls off. Zero shot. He he's, he got surgery today. He went on social media. He's on crutches. In, he's in Vail, Colorado. That is not a thing. Crutches are cheap. Okay. All right, Jeff. Jeff, do you watch a lot of Fox <laughs> News? Or where are we at on he's that? TMZ guy. Uh, that's insane. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you for calling. No, actually, Jeff, wait. Wait, you got a bike? <laughs> no, he's gone. I was going to give him something. That is... Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that guy's probably not on Discord. That guy's not a Discord no. guy. No. Not a Discord okay. guy. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> can we just keep doing this thing where Starling, like, points out to each color whether they're uh, probably on Discord Who, or not? Because I, li- I like this a lot. <laughs> Who's in Discord? That's going to be the, the new thing for this it. This is great. <laughs> okay. It's actually just – I think we should call it Snowboard. Yeah, yeah. Snowboard. Hold on. Here. Who's in Snowboard? We'll call it that. Hold on. Okay. 
That is a crazy question that that guy just asked, though, or his theory. When he started saying, wow. I was like, there's no way he's actually going where I think That's he's going. That's exactly right. my I thought. I didn't know where he was going <laughs> oh, for a little bit. I saw it coming. <laughs> I didn't know where he was going for a little bit. And then I'm like, wait, Honda. I, and I, I was thinking about signing. Uh, <sighs> That's yeah. a bad one. Um, okay, so. We're Honda gonna... can't afford that. Dude. <laughs> This is the world we live in, though, man. This is this is like that's not that crazy. Hey, he had an the, opinion, okay? Let like him these, have his opinion. These shit that you read, uh, you're gonna get comments about that that Fox News comment on this. Yeah, I don't care. On this, uh, yeah, archive. on a snowboard. Yeah, probably on a snowboard too. Uh, all right. What are you doing over there? I'm trying to get bets to call in. Got a bike? That's what made me think about it, and then uh, Adam Podium. Oh, that you know what I mean? Like, like all of it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I just, I don't know why we didn't have him. I'm on oh, Betts' gave, team he gave too. Me an assignment, and I forgot. I'm on Betts' what? team, right? Bet, Sorry, I'm... Betts gave me an assignment, and I forgot. Oh, he did? Yeah. What? What was it? I was supposed to pull some audio. What? what <clears throat> for what? Like, well, I don't know if he's calling, but I'll just say it. So he wanted me to pull audio of you saying that Justin Hill has a better chance of podium getting a podium oh, at Denver than shit. AC. I didn't say that. Uh, he said you did. I didn't say I'm that. Gonna, we'll pull the tapes. Oh, there's no way. He's going to call in. He's calling in. Okay. Uh, Wolfie, who's on two? Uh, Harrison. What does he want to talk about? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Is he on Discord? I'll he's let you probably know. on Discord. If he's hanging out in the, on the call for, for that long. Three hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God. Uh, another Sexton to Yamaha, or is he locked into KTM? Uh, yeah, out. he's locked in the kitchen. team. We're moving on. Uh, thank you to Ken Roxon and Adam Cincerillo and uh, Wes Williams for calling in. Chris Betts is going to call in here right away, but may as well get this out of the way where we can. Thank you, everybody, to uh, uh, Yamaha for that bike. Thank you for people for buying the lottery tickets as well. Betts. Betts. Yes. Welcome to the show. Wow. I, you just – I just got put straight on. No, yeah. no, no, no wait for or, you. Can ever. I, can I talk about what name came up on my phone when you called me? No, no, don't because I called you for my work phone. Oh, that's why. Okay. All right. Holy yeah. smokes. Did, did, did the name I think that came yeah. Up come up? Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy think he's that important? <laughs> no, like you, like, I would never have that arranged. Like you just called your phone. Yeah. Okay. So a uh, couple things, bets. Uh, Justin Starling's in studio here with me hey man how's it going uh oh just just having a, a beautiful night uh interrupted by steven no, i'm typical. holding i'm holding your game use bat in my hand oh so many strikeouts and what about adam seen cerillo making the podium tears tears for you incredible yo oh, i was so happy for the guy that was uh did you watch I mean, it live I think, yeah i was uh I was at a family friend's barbecue, and then I watched the the rest while I was driving, and I uh, mm -hmm. stopped off to have a have a drink by the house at a at a little mm -hmm. little establishment, and then the podium speech went on while I was sitting at a little dive bar, and tears may or may not have been shed sitting at a bar uh -huh. in Long Beach, California. Uh -huh. How cute is that? Yeah, can you? Super, uh, That's great. We had him on tonight. You said you threatened me actually if we didn't have him on tonight. Yes, I did. And yeah. uh, in addition to that, I will put you on the record as to saying that um, Justin Hill had a better chance of getting on the podium than he did. No, Mark said that. I didn't say that. There's no mm -hmm. way. Marks? I no. say about 10 words each show, so the odds of me saying that are uh, probably pretty slim. Well, yeah, listen, so it wasn't looking gonna, so I'm good. I'm going to go back and, and try and find that. You so won't find that it. audio. It's we'll, not doesn't exist. We'll post it on Twitter. <laughs> it's not it's not out there, but uh we have yeah. AI. But good job. Good job to you team. Yeah. It's great. I mean, hey, I I happily contributed nothing from California, but that was uh that was probably one of the cooler things I've I've uh I've seen just watching it happen as it was happening. It mm -hmm. was pretty I don't know. It was weird. It, it was a weird deal. So obviously everyone knows how much he's been through. So it was, uh, yeah, yeah it was pretty fucking cool. I, no, was, I was losing it. It was awesome. It was really good to see. And he was very open and honest afterwards on the podium, you know, so per usual. Yeah. And, and even with me in the, in the pits, you know, all of that. So that's rare. I would never advise that, but why, you know, it's cool. He did it. Why would you never advise that? Just, guy with the janky radio show walking around with a microphone in the dark it's okay just, okay it right. doesn't scream safe <laughs> fair enough 
Fair enough. Uh, how is baseball agent life going? Um, well, I was taking a shit when you texted me to call. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, great. Thank it's you. Been, it's been good. I'm, I'm busier than I was as a player, but it's totally different. Yeah. Um, you think I have completely sold out. Yeah. But I feel like I am still the same dude. Um, do you follow bets on social media? Anybody? Like, uh, do you guys follow? Do you follow him, Justin? I or, think so. Do, Marks. Yeah. You, of you course. Follow. Of course. Yeah. So he's on. He's in yachts. He's in Four Seasons hotels. He's living. He's in bar. Like, unbelievable life. Dude. Right now. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, he, he's not a greasy baseball player on a bus eating uh, Subway anymore. Like, he's. So, I agreed. I'm not. But. If I were to try and take a Major League Baseball player out on a bus or take him to Subway, I would probably be calling you for a job because I think I'd be fired. Okay. Fair enough. Plus, right. what plus a- I also I'm, – I'm like, I'm like Marks when I go out to dinner. I'm just putting it on the company card. What about – when's the last time you, like, caught a, caught a baseball? Um, like, when's the last time you got down in that crouch? The – last playoff game i caught so you haven't done you haven't taken my advice no no i'm sitting in my backyard staring at my batting cage right now just so grateful that i don't have to act like like i'm good at that anymore <laughs> like it was a it was getting i was getting imposter syndrome at the end of just like trying to fucking fake it because it was not making it anytime soon right right yeah you're like the like old, i told you yeah um what what's his name uh Lou, Lou Gehrig, the, the year he was dying from an illness that got named after him, had a higher batting average than I did as a perfectly healthy 25-year-old male. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but but what it's a- been good. I, I get to go to some nationals this year, so I'm excited. Oh, nice. Cool. I just hope, you know, I just want the old bets back, though, you know? I I feel like with some of the things that are said in the group text and some of the reactions I have and, and how – unhinged i'm still capable of getting you yeah. get you still got the old me a little um, bit a, a half the time yeah but like like never mind i'm not gonna go there what? um what How? i just there's some there's some things on twitter i can't say like like one genius that tried to come at adam this weekend oh you know? yeah what did you think of that tweet did you see that starling <laughs> what kuzo's tweet about adam Kuzo is my guy. I've been with Kuzo since I was like four years okay. old. I didn't understand. I hear Scott makes a pretty good goggle. <laughs> I will forever stay with Kuzo. Uh, just the, what, loyalty okay, and friendship. That's I, great. But what about that tweet? I, I, it, yeah, I don't know. It's Again, two people can disagree. It's yeah. fine. Like you you got to call it out when you I, see it. I, I, I'm not in support of it by any means. Yeah. It, it, I, it's Dude, when you're in the industry – and yeah, that was, uh, yeah, not hyped on it. D- does he do Steven. something? With, does he do something with Mobius? No, he's my goggle guy. Oh no, right but now, does still. he do it? Adam's like, dude, he's been cool to me. Oh yeah, I, Adam. See, Adam's like, he's been cool to me. I don't know why. Why that? He, Kuzo's an amazing dude. I yeah, don't seems know like where it, that came seems from. Seems like an amazing guy. Always been amazing to me. <laughs> Taking care of me like well, no other. I, I I hope I hope I hope the guy's one hundred percent yelled at him. <laughs> So yeah, I, that, I know one, I would that one was odd to me. Right. Don't drink and tweet. It was just it, it was just weirdly uh I, I don't know. Especially someone who's in the industry and probably understands more of what the kid's gone through than the yeah. people watching. It was just it was just a, again, probably a great guy. Would never I would he could he could shoot me a message right now and I would not act like I'm all upset and whatnot. But just pretty pretty wild wild take. Wild take. Uh hey, we got your valet guy on three. Your, oh, no way. Julius. Hey, how's it going? What's up? Is your valet guy back? Hey, hey, he's not my valet guy. Yeah, he's, he's your he's personal. Your he's, he's your personal valet guy. That's the thing. How much you've changed? Oh my goodness! <laughs> hey, t- t- hey, tell us what kind of rental car I was rolling in. Julius, yeah, that that Honda Highlander was really nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, yeah, I just I just wanted to call in and uh, say what's up, Chris. You know, hope you're doing good, and uh, you know, love the janky Pulp MX show. So, all right, <sighs> yeah, thanks, Julius. I appreciate it, brother. I, uh, and, and, I hope you're doing good. And Julius called in and vouched that you were a good guy, like tipped him, and you know what I mean, Betsy. He, he, I unfortunately, yeah, he, he, I, he, I heard it, and then you also, I also heard you essentially accuse me of when you initially heard the story. I told you, you just thought I was totally lying. Yes, 
Yes, I did. Like I don't. I think you totally underestimate the uh, unfortunate reach that your show has. <laughs> probably. Yes. Probably. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, have you got any more meat from my dear friend Nick? I I, I have not. But believe it or not, I think he's going to actually officiate our wedding. That, that's how close we are. So I, I think I'm in the running for he's my closest friend. Oh my God! Give me a break. Unbelievable. I mean, hey, how how else am I going to get it supplied with with Wagyu meat yeah. other than letting him officiate the wedding? I guess. Julius, I, I actually okay. believe it or not, I uh, I hit him up to see if he had a connection in, in New York. We were trying to get a client a reservation, and I know he's uh he supplies meat to a lot of like the really 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 nice restaurants in Manhattan. Ended up getting it situated, but uh he but yeah, did he help you? Oh, he was 100% down to help me. He didn't have a connection at the place that oh, I wanted oh, okay. um, a reservation at, but he did end up directing me to, like, three other places that he thought were nicer. So Unbel- nice little flex on his part. Unbelievable. Just just taking advantage of my dear friend Nick's time. I don't know if I've ever had a better friend that I've never met, you know? You stop talking to him. <laughs> uh, Julius, thanks, buddy. Thank you, man. Thanks for calling in. Hey, oh, oh sorry. One, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, so um, I just wanted to shout out uh, to people. Uh, I'm not a valet anymore right now. Uh, and just if you ride a street bike, you know, be careful because sometimes you have uh, unmarked police cars pull uh, U-turns in front of you. So, you know, everybody ride safe out there. Luckily, uh, I'm all right. But Damn. You know, yeah. be safe. Glad to hear. Well, maybe you yeah. maybe get a bunch of money from the cops for doing this. I don't <laughs> Hopefully. know. All uh, right, you guys have thanks, a good night. Thanks, Julius. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, boy. Just, that, that, that got somber. Yeah. Jeez, Julius. Sorry, Julius. Um, all right, Betts. Well, we got to run, but I just I just really want to get your thoughts and feelings on this podium by your guy. Oh, man. Was it just not – it was the best. When JT, JT on the review pod, I was listening to it on the way to the office this morning. When he said it was the best story storyline of the night, I couldn't have agreed more. <laughs> Imagine that. Shocking. Shocking. Weird, weird. JT has a great take. Yeah. Out to lunch normally. Uh, <laughs> he's a felled shill. And last thought, Blue Jays, how we uh, how we looking? Uh, it's gonna. They're going to have to be competing for the wild card, I think, at this point. Do you think the Rays will hold on to this the rest of the way? I mean, it's real so far. No, it's they, not. I mean, it's not real. It's not real. Their starters suck. <laughs> It's been it's been five five weeks. I know, but it's not real. They're gonna come back to Earth. Fuck my ass. I, I, okay. Um. I, <laughs> I I think that they're obviously gonna settle in, but I don't know. The blue the Blue Jays are good. Believe it or not, I have not watched a ton of Major League Baseball this uh, this season. I know. I know. Right. I've been so too busy out there. One of your guys may get called up to the Dodgers this year. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a client in AAA with the Dodgers. I'm oh. not going to name names because the last thing I need is um, <laughs> him asking me why some drunken you know dude with tattoos on his neck is screaming at him in the on deck circle. But okay. yeah, we we got some, one of them. Some, so some, if, you, if you yell at everyone in the lineup, you might nail him. Some guy from <laughs> snowboard, just yeah, who knows? Who knows? Right? So uh, yeah, but look, look, look at you. Okay. Um, just, just trying to, trying to, trying to. Can you be semi-professional? Can you get me tickets to a game if I need them? Yeah. Oh, really? I mean, the worst I could say is no. Right? I know, but but do you have a connection like at every stadium or every buddy to try to get games? Yeah. Because Pookie I would and I, say, I would, Pookie and I are planning a summer trip to watch the Jays somewhere. With enough heads up, mm-hmm. um, I I could give you like an eighty. I could give you like a 92% certainty mm-hmm. that I could get you taken care of. Nice. And and, yeah. and and all my listeners? Um, I think all your listeners can email uh Travis Marks at pulpmx.com okay. and yep. he'll he'll get that taken care of, right? <laughs> Perfect. All or right. Email contests and uh, and we just won't choose one. Uh well, congrats on the podium, Bets. It's been a long time coming uh, for you guys. So Feels good. Happy for the kid. Thanks for calling in with no notice. All right. Thank you. No, yeah, it was great. Anything for you guys. Thank you. See you, buddy. Love you guys. Talk right. to you later. See ya. That's Chris Betts, everybody. He is not on Discord. He is not on <laughs> Snowboard? Snowboard. Um, Snowboard. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks that for the call. So we got a few people on hold, but we got to run. something out really quick? Well, yeah, go ahead. Moran's might have opening ceremonies this weekend. Stop it. Swear to God. Why? No riders. Chiz was the last guy this Chiz week. Chiz was the last guy this week. Now Tomac's out. So unless AP races, which I don't think he's going to. I think to. he is. You no? think? I don't know. 
Why come back for why, the last why one? Why come back yeah, for yeah, one? Yeah, sure. If he doesn't come back, well, good for Morantz. Morantz is ten. <laughs> good for Morantz. I'm sitting here like looking at. It. I text him. I'm like, dude. Yeah. You might have opening ceremony this week, and I'm like, he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm going through the list, and yeah, you're 11. Dude. If AP yeah. races, if AP doesn't show up, dude, you're an opening ceremony. That would be awesome. That's pretty. That'd rad. be good for him. That'd be cool. That's rad. Yeah. I remember how like last year I was super close. I think I was like two points oh, off, right, and yeah, Webb yeah. raced. Yeah. And uh, I was like, dang, I told Webb, I'm like, you should have just like not shown up this weekend because I would have had opening <laughs> ceremonies at least once. Yeah. But like, I remember how cool it was at like the opportunity that yeah. it could be there. Absolutely. Kevin Morant. Yeah. She opening She uh, went out back in the day and told me I could pick his intro music. So I picked some Van Halen. And it was amazing. You can't do that anymore. I know. I heard it, that. That's yeah. kind of ruins a little yeah. bit for me. Yeah. Because like, I, I think it's like, do totally. what's around you. I don't know why they why they wouldn't agree to that. It's, it seems silly. Uh, all right. Best interview tonight. Roxon Betts, AC, Wes Williams. Uh, I'm going to go AC. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think you're yeah. right. Marks, what do you think? Um, AC. Wolfie? I always like Wes. <laughs> yeah, I got Wolfie. Wes. Wolfie would Justin. be with a unique Lamb. tape. Favorite, favorite interview? AC. 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 All right. Wolfie with a unique Wes Williams <laughs> take. Uh, no, thanks, Matt. Justin Starling, thank you. Thanks yeah. for coming in. No, uh, appreciate cool. it. Good luck this weekend. I know I'll see you up in Salt Lake City. Yep. One and, more. And uh, one more. You've had a good season. Uh, riding better now late in the last little bit. Like, even even if everybody was there, you're still riding better. I'm Do riding you know what better. I mean? like, yeah. Like, like, I know your results are better because we have yeah, a thinner field. I'm not looking at the result too much. I, I focus on yeah. the riding aspect yeah. of it. Because um, I have you in fantasy a lot. So I watch you. Yeah. And, yeah, you're riding better. I'm riding month. better. I feel better. My qualifying times are getting better. Yeah. I'm actually, yep. like. So I sound kind of weird, but like I'm crashing in practice, yeah. which I did so this weekend. I'm trying. You're like pushing, there, like yeah. there is, I'm getting back to myself a bit. Sure. Um, just like Justin Hill said to me before the heat race this year or this past weekend, uh, I wish there was like 20 more of these super crosses yeah. just going just, through this, this yeah. Feld series because um, I feel good. Yeah. So, yeah, one more. We're going to give it our all, and then we have the summer to rest. Nice. Perfect. Uh, well, thanks for coming up. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, a really, really good job again. You're always great in studio. We'll try I was to very, very skeptical about coming in after your tweet. I was like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't you, know. You ate out on the street. I so ate on the I, street. I feel like you're fine. <laughs> I think we're okay. Yeah. Get alive. <laughs> uh, thank you to Swiss Core and Roto and, and Pookie as well, Moser. Uh, Marks, thank you. My pleasure. Wolfie, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Appreciate you. it. Uh, appreciate everybody listening. Uh, thanks to our guests. Thanks to our sponsors. Uh, use the codes and save with the folks that sponsor us. That'll be great. Uh, again, I can't say enough to you people. Thank you for buying the raffle tickets. $147,000. Got a lot of those people are on Discord. Snowboard. 100%. Thank you for buying the raffle tickets. Thanks for supporting it. Thank you, Yamaha. Yeah. Thanks to the riders. Uh, look forward to a lot more uh, chaos next year, people, because we're bringing it. And it is going to be doggy dog bloodbath. What if he sponsored a rider for that race on a on a Yamaha? Brought everything, like a Piazza. He needed a bike this weekend. Yeah. Like what if he did something for like, hey? But then what am I doing? With you're the giveaway in. Bike? Well, you don't have to use that giveaway bike, but like. Also, now I got to get another bike. I bet Yamaha will do it. So now I, I now I need another one. Yamaha okay. will do it. Well. Put know. a big Old Yamaha time. logo all across the side of the bike. <laughs> the The original idea was Yamaha told me I could do anything I wanted with this bike. They were going to give me a spare bike to help people out or do something. Yep. That's what the plan was. And I originally was going to do like A-Ray, like give him a practice bike. Yep. Like find a Yamaha privateer and give him this bike as a race bike or practice bike, whatever he wants, yep. and just help out a privateer all year, get it back, and sell it. And yep. then that was the original plan, and we kind of kicked it around. And I thought, no, let's raffle it and give the money away. So yep. the original plan was just I Yamaha. I think that's genius. Yamaha saying, here's a bike. Do whatever you want with it, you know. And but, that's but rad on Yamaha. Absolutely, that they're willing to even do this stuff because no other manufacturer is doing that. No, no, dude, they so give that us, is so cool. They give us uh, five bikes a year, yeah, six bikes a year. Sorry, between fantasy, that is so and, awesome. And, and this thing, yeah, yeah. And then they let me ride a bike all year long. You on know? top of so, it, it's the bike of the year. It's such a great motorcycle too. So from your mouth to God's ears, I tweeted it. Uh, it's a great motorcycle. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks to Justin Lamb for coming in the studio. As well, uh, and yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Next week, it's JT and Cade Clayson in studio. Ooh, so it should be a good show. That's why Cade's been trying to tell me to come to Vegas after Salt Lake. I got it now. Yep. He's coming here. I respect a man who gives another man a lot of meat. There we go. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next week. Love this guy right here. There's something I want to get off my chest, and it's about that summer when you went away to community college. I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine. And I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff, and I was totally nude. And 
it was weird. I, I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Honcho, but I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Honcho. Complete me out.